gains that confidence, uh, plays a few uh, good events, stops looking inwards into his own insecurities. I like the no expectation part. So like that's something that has gotten better because sure, it's like not my full time job. It's definitely good for chess in India. And now there is Olympiad also. So there'll be more people following and mm -hmm. taking up chess as professional sport. Yeah. And it's surprisingly concrete still, no? Like, yeah. he takes d4, good move, this d takes d4, this d takes d5. This line was essential and forced, but uh, also not uh, rocket science to map out. Played to Berlin, which I sort of expected, but I didn't really know what to do against, because in reality, very few people do. When we are playing a, an even game against someone of similar strength to us, usually we need to give something in order to obtain the initiative. Just how shrewd and cunning Ali Reza can be, even with uh, very little time. I want to show you a game just to prove that I play these lines that I played against former world number two and a bit of a superstar, Gata Kamsky. Take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Welcome everybody. My name is Yanni Bomnishi, former world chess champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable, a very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles 
ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses. First of all, I think white goes queen f4. Here the move is still queen f5, right? You are following my games, you will see. I play a lot of games. Finally, guys, so much work for just one pawn. It's so much happiness.
welcome to round two of Tata Steel 2023, the best traditional tournament of, of the year in the world. Whatever superlatives you want to use, they will all be justified. Very happy to be here. I'm Peter Swidler, and with me is my friend Laurent Frissinet. And, uh... Hi, Peter. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I I don't know what to add. I, I really do enjoy this tournament a great deal. And uh, That's uh, an amazing uh, tournament, a long tradition with always a nice field. Uh, this year, less of uh, experienced player, but so many youngsters. And uh, it's very interesting to watch. Yesterday, we had a day with... Uh, Ding Lian, uh, future uh, challenger in the World Championship match, who won a, a great game. And uh, Nordi Bek Abdusatov, just uh, the World Rapid Champion from, from last year. So, um, won his game against uh, Richard Rapport. So, this is just amazing field as every year, and we are very excited to, to, to cover that. Yeah, and... Uh... Talking about, and you know, this is a constant kind of a recurring uh, topic we will have to come back to day, day in, day out. But uh, I thought, you know, this tournament is just fantastic for you as a, as a budding podcast star, right? Because like <laughs> every day you get new data for your, you know, uh, hot ranking of the youngsters, right? The, the, the That's who's... true, but the, the problem is that we have, we have a producer uh, asking us to, to hide uh, the hair of people. So <laughs> we're we getting a bit... You get, you get a lot of material for that as well, I think, yeah, in I this think... tournament. It's not, like, it's not like you don't get any material for that. And uh, I, I did see our, our chat was extremely excited about Fabi's hair yesterday. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, exactly. Saw, yeah. I saw a lot of messages specifically about Fabi's hair. Uh -huh. Almost, de almost deserved a special episode to be to to be. Fair. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the... yeah Fabi's. Uh, yeah, we, we can see uh, Fabi's on camera with uh, generally of. Uh, well, he decided to 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 cut them, which is which is fair enough. Um, and he's facing uh, Abdul Satov. Maybe it's time to to look at the pairings, Peter. And yeah, let's have... uh, let's let's talk about the pairings a little and bit. Um... We will we will probably say that the pairings are great, but they are great just every day because you mm -hmm. have <laughs> so many interesting people there. So Nordi Bek Abdul Satov will be white against Fabiano Kawana, one of the early leader, ending the end also white against Max Udlu. So there is an option to to get uh, a great start for for both of them. Vincent Kamer, uh, the young German, against Magnus Carlsen, Wesley Su against Egezi. Uh, Levon Aonian, the veteran. It feels weird to, to talk. Yeah. To Levon as a veteran who, did, who played a great game yesterday. I checked a bit. And yeah, maybe Magnus had a small chance to, to get an edge. Uh, instead of taking on A5, actually taking on A5 was not good. Mm -hmm. For those who were watching, Knight C5 was maybe a bit better. More white, but nothing, uh, nothing close to to winning, obviously. Uh, then, so he's playing Pagananda, uh, who is not the youngest actually. Uh, it's Gukesh who will face uh, the local hero Anish Giri as black, and uh, the other uh, local hero Jordan Van Forest will get another white against Richie Boy Richard Rapport. So plenty of excitement. What's the game uh, you want to look at uh, first? It's What's the impossible. most exciting? It's impossible to choose, really. Uh, I, I guess maybe uh, Naughty Beck's game uh, uh, against Fabi, but uh, I saw that uh, the poll that uh, our mods on Chess24 were running before the start of the round was concerning uh, the, the game between Keimer and Carlson, which is also, of course, a, a very interesting pairing. They just finished top one and two in the World Rapid. But Seems Magnus like a... is, is generally late. So maybe we should start with... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he has a small habit as uh, as Kasparov used to. But Kasparov was on purpose, I think. He was coming late. Yeah, Gary, Gary was definitely doing this on purpose because he really did not like the, the scrum of photographers he would get every round. And he felt that if he, if he shows up, let's say, three minutes late, they still get their pictures, but... Uh, he gets uh, a bit of a little bit less of being sort of entirely swarmed by uh by uh photographers which is i mean in our in our days of zero tolerance it wouldn't work that well but you can sort of understand uh of the, the, the the feeling of you know sort of preferring to you know minimize the discomfort even though in the opening like we all we all get used to it. It's not really, you know, that much of a problem. But still, if you can, 
if you if you don't care about the three minutes on your clock and you can uh, sort of lessen the impact of that on your on your nervous system, then why not do it? Yeah, uh, and uh, Magnus is not. Uh, it's not something which is planned. He's, he's, he's just late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, with him, with him, I never really got the impression that he cared about. No, no, uh, the, no. He's just late. Uh, mm. <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, that's very simple, and uh, he's not he's not there as far as I can see. And we have Argos in, so maybe we should mm -hmm. switch or how <laughs> does that work? No, <laughs> so I, we I'm we already don't want this. But this might be a very no. f f this might be yeah. a very sharp Ragos in. I, I very much like that the bishop. Is on h4 because I think these days they, you know, some sort of g5, 94, 96 might happen, and those positions are quite yeah, okay. wild very often. And so, of course, he has a main line, uh, which I faced uh, many times uh, as white. I like that line as white castle, uh, castle e3, bishop f5. Or that, and now, yeah. and now you have uh, you can play queen b3, you can start with bishop e2, you have many moves, uh, nine, nine d2 is even a move. Um, many many tries here for for white. We'll see. I'm sure that Abdusat of uh, spent a lot of time on that. Uh, Fabi is thinking, of course, is not uh, really thinking. But Castle Bishop F5 is really really is a main line. It was invented by by Vichy Anand. Mm -hmm. I think it was uh, some prep for for some match. Okay, he played it after after some match. So I guess it was it was a prep for for um, a special occasion. Yeah, absolutely. But there is also, and uh, on on the topic of closed openings, I will be kind of uh, deferring to you in uh, in pretty much every single case. But there, these days, maybe not in this exact position, and maybe here, yeah, the quieter approach is is the more is the more standard. But there's also pretty much always some argument to yeah. be made for doing this, and then perhaps going for like the way they seem to be approaching these positions is to. Actually, develop the knight to c6 very often to limit, I think, uh, bishop five possibilities in particular, uh, and then perhaps h5, h4 is something that you can try. Knight d2 here, I think, is the critical move. Yeah, it gets I... it gets very very uh, sharp. But uh, Fabi decides that to play uh, classical. Yeah, no, no no need no need to be, you know, wild today against Nodibek, who yesterday played a very very nice game against uh, Richard Rapport, beat him with the black pieces. I actually, we were sort of both of us very incredulous about how that game ended, uh, but I did check a little bit uh, after the round finished, and I suspect I, I mean, I still don't like what Richard has done, but I'm my guess is he was actually lost anyway. Ah, okay. okay. I didn't I check didn't... properly. Uh, I didn't check too 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 much in depth, but I have a feeling okay. that uh, in a way he did not believe he could save the game anyway, and he sort of just kind of gave up and decided to, you know, do it do it quicker rather than. Rather than slower, which I don't think is a good idea. I don't think, you know, it was still an endgame he could have tried finding chances in. But my feeling is he assessed the other position, decided it's hopeless, and just decided, okay, I will do something that, you know, might work once by miracle. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And then we all have dinner. Okay, uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, because I already thought that. Just very briefly, okay, but... yeah, because yeah. I, I went on this. Uh, because I went on this rant. Okay. Uh, that was basically yeah. the that was basically the last game of the yeah. round to discuss. And in this position, uh, Richard gave the check on a fate, which basically drives the king to c2. Uh, so the game continued very logically, uh, with the king actually getting to c2 and Richard resigning. But As which you... doesn't ask a question actually. Yeah, doesn't ask the... a question to Black. I mean, that mm -hmm. was very very weird. Yeah. But let's and, have a look uh, at in, instead of that, instead of that, we were arguing for b8. And I think rook d3 might actually be a draw for all we know. But the engine says king e4 probably wins here. Uh -huh. uh, at, least, have... at least the, the evaluation it gives after rook, rook b3, rook, uh, rook d5 is... I, ha I have a feeling that eventually the pawn h3 falls. But that, there is that no I'm, way... I'm, I'm buying uh, very easily, but uh, why, why not d6? Uh, I think... Uh, hang on. Yeah. Uh... I mean, d6 is, uh, I don't know. Uh, my there point was, is running you have yeah, to put... there, I, Yeah, I, I, but... I guess I mean... one, no, rook c1 check and b2 just quins the pawn, Ooh, right? Ooh, that's yeah, nasty. That is, okay, that is the problem, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, but anyway, that was that was yesterday, and uh, yeah. I just wanted to... Uh, perhaps some of our viewers were here yesterday, and I, I, I was curious, because the decision not to do this did seem very strange to both of us. Yeah. But 
my guess is he actually was lost regardless. And what do we think about 95 here? 95 Research. is a move. Uh, I, I was confusing. I was uh, claiming 92. But as far as I remember, and I think I'm correct, uh, it's a game to Paul of Carlson. Um, so where Magnus uh, played c5 as far mm -hmm. uh, as I remember, bishop d3, cd, ed, it's very minimal. Um, you take, uh, I don't know, now you play some... Knight c6 I, looks I, I normal, can't... bishop e7 looks kind of normal-ish, I, I don't know. I can't remember, but it's very, you, you are playing here for... for microscopic uh, mm -hmm. edge uh, as white so he's taking it very very uh on the safe way maybe he has some idea after after c5 c5 is clearly uh the the, the main move probably the mm -hmm. computer move as far as i remember i don't know what's going on after queen f3 actually maybe just bishop b4 actually mm -hmm. uh, now what, what's the move after queen f3 i'm not sure i i'm i'm looking at this for the first time in my life so i'm very confused but yeah, yeah bishop before, because... uh, bishop before bishop f6 like you have to discuss this at least right yeah it's not uh... it's not very obvious to me that this is great for black um, no but can i go queen a5 maybe here or maybe on the just... previous move no the previous move ah here is, is... here also but like <laughs> I, I think i think we're getting mated faster on the other side i don't know this is very kind of strange. if i go g6 yeah i mean who knows maybe i can take now <laughs> you know weirdly maybe i can take now and play rook c1 or something i don't yeah. know yeah, no, this has to be maybe Queen A4 here actually. Okay, it's funny. King E1, Queen C2. I don't know. Okay, yeah, but I, I think I'm getting to G1, yeah, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and then I will give mate on the king side eventually. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh yeah, but yeah, enough. we're getting we're getting very, very far ahead yeah. of uh, of things. I here. think C five is a move uh, someone can can correct me or approve me in the chess twenty four chat. I'm reading the chess twenty four chat, so please wake up and welcome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and uh, and I am obviously a, a huge Twitch uh, Twitch, yeah, Twitch yeah, loyalist. Yeah, so more, you are much more yeah. modern than me. What can yeah, I and uh, uh, in Keimer, uh, Magnus Magnus finally showed up and played the Grunfeld, which is I'm sure something he's done before, but not something he's done too much. Uh, and one of his Grunfelds, I remember, kind of it was. We all thought it was a kind of a joke at the time, but it. I think was a hugely influential game for the development of the opening. And that really is the one Grunfeld that Magnus played with Black that I remember uh, really? weirdly. I'm sure I can remember more if I try really hard, but the one I remember is from London 2013 where Grishuk played H4 against him. Uh -huh, okay. And at the time in 2013, this was, so th it wasn't a novelty, but we all thought, okay, Sasha is just not doing well in the tournament. He clearly feels he has to play uh, sort of sharply for a win in every game, so he is gambling. And these days, this is one of the absolute must-study lines against the Grunfeld. If you don't know what you're doing against H4, you are probably in trouble by move 10. <laughs> so, okay. uh, uh, and uh, Magnus played C6, and it was a kind of a normal, in the end, wasn't a very exciting game because he didn't choose any of the really crazy stuff with like castles or D-takes C4 here, but... Uh, that's the Grunfeld I remember. And Vincent replies with bishop g5. Actually, because... uh, Magnus uh, played a couple of times against Vishanan in his matches, uh, the Grunfeld. Yeah, in of course. Yeah, but, uh... In 2014, uh, yeah, some bishop d2. and uh... Oh, yeah, the, 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 those games, exactly. Uh, I, yeah, they and... would come back to me, but somehow the one that came back to me immediately was the h4. But you're absolutely right, yeah. Yeah, so bishop g5, which is a, a sideline, let's face it. I don't know what's your... Do you remember your chess about recommendation here? <laughs> I sort of do because I, I recently okay. had, an, had an occasion to discuss it with people. Uh, but it's interesting that you call this a sideline because, I mean, five bishop g5 maybe is a little bit of a sideline, but I remember there was a period in my life where it, it at least it felt to me like, I don't know, two out of my three Grunfelds started from this position. Because ah, okay, I think yeah. I think Livon was doing this against yeah. me every single time uh, that I played him with Black, and he was getting positions that were good enough for other people to become excited, you know. And like uh, Vasily Ivanchuk started doing this against me, and other people started doing this against me, and it really felt like everybody and their dog were playing Bishop G5. <laughs> uh, but it's sort of disappeared uh, these days. That's true. Um, and so what was the, the main line is 94 and yeah, you go of course, course yeah. there is some end game possible end game cd 
Uh, yeah, there are some end games here, but also I, I think what Vincent probably wants to do is yeah. to play Bishop Four. And Magnus played this with White actually. Magnus uh -huh. did this. Magnus did this quite a bit with the white pieces because what you normally get here is positions once again like the move order. You can uh, you can definitely discuss uh, move orders here, but let's say uh, sort of this position, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Bishop and f five, queen b three or something. Yeah, bishop queen a four, queen a four. And Magnus, I think uh, there was this game. I think he played against. He definitely had this in Stavanger a couple of times. I want to say against Grishuk, but I'm not sure it was. There was definitely a game where Grishuk defended this with the black pieces, but maybe it was against Levon, not against Magnus. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly how it goes. Like Rook a c8, Rook a c1, Queen a5, takes, Something takes, like knight d2, Rook c1, Rook c1, Rook c8. And somehow ah, exactly. this extremely, extremely kind of weird and seemingly boring endgame uh, became a topic of very serious discussion at the top level, and White were trying to prove that there is something here. And you right. do have to be you do have to be careful, and you also have zero winning chances with Black. Exactly, exactly. I, that's the point. Yeah, but I don't think it's very much. Honestly, I don't think you are claiming you are claiming too much. And Magnus uh, probably trying to avoid. Wanted. I mean, yeah. Gunfeld is a clear indication he, he wants to get a game today, uh, double edged, and it's clear that that line is not... Uh... Yeah. yeah, Magnus would very much like to do something else, because yeah, I, I, if, yeah we, and... if we are correct about what Vincent is trying to achieve here, uh, Magnus will, I mean, he will probably hold that endgame. He probably even knows exactly how to hold it because he played it with White, so he has some analysis. But uh, in terms of the character of the game, <laughs> this is not what, what he is dreaming of today. He would very so much like So what are game. the options, Peter? The options are not many. Is, is DC4 an option? DC4 is not great here. You can you can do it, but it's very risky because uh, I think this position doesn't quite work out. I, I did try making it work at some point, and I don't think I succeeded. Uh, you can go... C I mean, C6 is just not great. Uh, there is a move C5 here, which uh, is a kind of a... A kind of a close relative of my well, I mean, it's not mine. I didn't invent it, but well, I mean, I I invented it, but it existed before me because I was in the <laughs> pre pre internet era, so I did not have access to materials. Like, it's a very close relative of this gambit, mm -hmm. where we play either c six or c five, but it's not as good for uh, a, a number of reasons. First of all, uh, I mean, this is a direct transposition, so this yeah. this now no longer really worries you very much because. Uh, I had this like 30 years ago and I played queen b6, which is not really the best move. But now people realize that actually you can play this position and this position is not bad at all. Uh, but d takes c5 is a bit annoying. And uh, generally, once again, you will you will struggle uh, to play this for a win. Yeah, so Magnus is thinking and uh, tough, tough choice. Excellent opening choice by, by Vincent Kamer. Yeah. Was not very surprised by, by the Gunfeld, which is not a regular guest in, uh, in mm -hmm. Magnus' practice, for sure. Um, uh, yeah. And uh, we're being told that there is some... Hang on a second, let me let me. Fireworks check. again in the Challenger. We had a yeah, me... uh, fantastic game yesterday. Uh, uh, oh, my God. Played by Vamadam. This is... This is... I, I mean... This is what? Well, we resign, no? Uh, wow! So Pehak is trying to to get the game of the day. We, okay, let's have a look. We have it's King's Gambit, have, but this guy we have Pehak. forgotten some theory, I guess, because this is a like a full piece, no? I, I would really think so. This looks like Anand Zapata. Actually, or a little Zapata, bit, yeah. Or Zapata actually, Anand. actually, what it looks like is the you know the Christians, the Queen on two, yeah, Chris, Christians and Karpov game, right? The maybe someone in our chat. I, I will probably bungle the move order, but there is this very very famous game that Anatoly Karpov lost to Larry Christensen in. Uh, how did that go? How did that go? That was the. I will I can somehow check it in if you give me. Oh no, no, that was no, no, that was that wasn't here. That was how did that go? Something like this, right? DC five, maybe castles. A three bishop takes. How did they? I can't remember. Uh, I will Google it. Google is my bow. Um... It was the queen. Yeah, okay. It was it was the key. Uh, the uh, so B six A three. It's just 
somehow the knight got to h5 and then yeah i mean we'll we'll get there it doesn't matter but the point is uh knight f6 knight okay f5. i have the game i have the game okay, knight f3 b6 a3 yeah. bishop a6 queen c2 bishop b7 i wasn't wrong yeah okay. knight c3 c5 e4 cd knight d4 knight c6 bishop yeah c6. that's yeah that's how you get there yeah knight, knight h5, h5 bishop, bishop b3 bishop, bishop d6 queen d1 yeah and it's uh, what, what you mentioned yesterday is these sweet eating moves uh like abdu satov played yesterday knight b8 you know mm -hmm. it's very difficult especially with the knight with the queen as well actually uh queen d1 you don't yeah. want to hit your queen somehow and queen d1 yeah attacking two pieces so this is game over for for tabata bay it's such a disaster. yeah it, it looks like it looks like you just like i don't really like like you can maybe try continuing here but i mean you will know i mean knight takes d4 or something but i mean it's just completely hopeless yeah, that's the best King's Gambit you will ever see. Yeah. Uh, I, I know that Knight F6 is Jan's recommendation. It is just about... No, it's, it's pretty good, yeah, but you're probably supposed to do D6 something else. D6 is okay, here. but Queen E2 probably... Um, yeah, you should do something else. I don't yeah, know. You, yeah you, you should definitely do something else. Yeah, English P7 doesn't, doesn't really seem right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that is sort of very much breaking news here. Uh, that's fun. That's in, fun. in the challengers where yeah but like 10 moves into the round we have more or less have a result yeah ah, it actually gets very sharp because i was wondering if it's the yeah the solution is you you, you go d takes e5 if queen takes we have queen e7 now and if knight e5 you can go queen h4 check and go from there and the engine kind of likes it for black but it becomes it becomes a mess so at least you can sort of guess why pehach wasn't that unhappy because uh like the positions after king d1 bishop p7 and then on knight c3 they look a bit weird yeah. with this queen on h4 yeah yeah, yeah. you can imagine yeah. how this is sort of playable for black but uh sorry for white but yeah bishop p7 he takes d6 is he's on the uh, board yeah queen b5 a, bit five, welcome. A, a bit of a, a bit of a gift yeah you have to say yeah he, he will continue the game uh why not? yeah of course so. he will of course he will but uh, i don't think he will save it And hopefully we're back. Apologies for that. It wasn't uh, it wasn't too long of a too long of a break. But yeah, we're definitely not claiming this was a, a smoke break or a coffee break. Let's not let's not overdo things. Chat. Uh, we I almost made it. I, yeah. I almost made it to the coffee <laughs> machine, but I, I didn't make it. Uh, yeah. So we have D Dingley and here who is staying one e four, which is incredibly rare for for Ding. Can you remember a game where I started with one e four? I I, I think. Online. I think I've seen one or two, but I don't like because I remember this conversation. The only reason I'm saying this is because I think I remember this conversation about how rare it is for him to play one e four. But yeah, he is generally just not a one e four player. So this is just a message to 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 Yanne Pomiachi that he also has to prepare against uh, one e four. Okay, that could be could be interesting, mm -hmm. but uh, of course for today it's uh, regular Spanish, this uh, neo Archangels, and with a very very fashionable line. Uh, well, maybe the main line in the Archangels uh, these days. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, you know probably more I, than me. I, I did. I did a course on the opening, but that was I think 2015, and my knowledge, you know, is somewhat outdated. But yeah, I mean. Uh, uh, a4 followed by uh, c3, uh, d4, and a5 has been, I think, the most the most important try that White has for a number number of years. It very much surpassed the old main line, which basically most games start used to start from this position, That's totally and people either played e d4, c d4, bishop g4, or the immediate bishop g4. Right now, and this still exists. There are still high level games being played from this position. There was a uh, 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 of a re remarkable game, I think uh, Vasily Ivanchuk played against. I want to say Pragananda in one of the one of the online tournaments last year. But uh, mostly people play a five. Uh, for those of you who have never seen this position and are wondering why can't you just take on a five? If you take on, on a five with the bishop, obviously that just loses a piece to d five. But knight takes a five is a bit trickier because here 
the sacrifices continue. Rook a5 is very strong, bishop a5, d, and suddenly you find yourself in a situation where if you recapture, white takes on d8, takes on e5, and all kinds of forks are being threatened, and black is just in a lot of trouble. Uh, and the knight really has no good squares. You can try playing knight g4, but I think after bishop g5, you find yourself very, very unhappy because, let's say, if queen d7, I think the point is this, right? If I remember correctly. I'm learning a lot of stuff here. I think, the, I think the point is this. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, the queen is, yeah. Yeah, okay. and uh, you, you're, you're about to lose a lot of material with black because bishop takes e6 is a massive, massive threat and yeah. also the knight is hanging. Uh, so you, you cannot take at all, which drives the bishop to a7. And this gives white a very important additional uh, tempo in many lines because shockingly that bishop on a7 will, in some variations at least, will actually be hanging. And you will see this in the game because uh, Ding goes h3, stopping bishop g4 is vitally important, in particular now because with the queen side closed, now that we have completely abandoned the idea of a b5, uh, black's pressure against the white center is the, the, the only source of immediate counterplay. So we stop bishop g4, and then we play bishop b3. And in this position, for instance, if you play bishop b7, you have already lost a piece to d5. Yeah, because bishop takes e three, d takes e six, attacking mm -hmm. both bishops, and uh, actually the move play in the game prepares. Yeah, exactly. Uh, b bishop b seven. That's uh, a bit weird, but uh, it just protects the bishop on a seven, and the next move, as we will see in the game, knight b two, bishop b seven, and now you get to, uh, oh, you get all of your pieces out. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how white is supposed to 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 play here. D five looks very early to me. Rookie one should be should be very very normal. Yeah, in, in general, you can you can still play d5 and play uh, for you know these types of structures, but it it has been. I, I don't think I've seen this in this particular position uh, uh, too much at all. Even though not you know now that I look at it, it doesn't look yeah. that stupid. But maybe you play c5 here or something. Yeah, and uh, you just I was close considering c6 down. Uh, or c6. Yeah, which is both more... of them. Both of uh, them uh, look okay. What you normally do is, yeah, you try to play rook e1. You try to uh, sort of using tactical means because the opponent e4 will be sort of hanging in a lot of variations. But you would very much like knight f1, knight g3. Yeah. Bishop on c2. And, yeah, there was uh, also yeah, this, this very, uh, very uh, striking game. If you remember, there was this game between Fabi and Magnus where Fabi just played g4. Ah, yeah. Somewhere. But it, I don't sure. think it was here, right? It was in a I similar position, but not here. I as think H6, I H6 was on the board, uh, almost for sure. Uh, so when exactly H6 came is uh, unclear to me, but uh, yeah, G4 was uh, mm -hmm. was, uh, was uh, another uh, Fabi's uh, great prep. Um, yeah, he got a good, very good position out of the opening, yeah. but that gun got gradually outplayed and uh, uh, lost the game. So yeah, this could be a very, uh, very exciting game. Magnus very understandably uh, did go knight e4 because as I mentioned there really isn't very much choice again in, instead of knight e4 but did not play c5 because c5 does more or less completely force you to play the kinds of positions that we were describing so he got he, he goes c6 here e3 castles so this how exists does that... yeah okay this exists I... and uh, it's not horrible at all but it's not supposed to be as comfortably equalizing you know you are supposed to go c5 in Grunfeld, yeah? yeah. And that's the point. Your bishop on g7 is not great because the pawn structure in the center is very, very solid for white. You don't have a pawn e4, you have a pawn e3. This bishop on g7 is not mm -hmm. playing much. So if you don't go c5, it's hard to believe you are fully equalizing, but he wants uh, just to get the game. So uh, do I take here on d5 or I just go bishop? Yeah, if, if, if we do this, we yeah. are sort of begging to play the same position again, right? But maybe we're down at... If we compare, like if we, if we, I if think, we, I think we are done a tempo. Yeah. Yeah. We're just, we're just done a tempo. Yeah. This is just not an option <laughs> yeah. because, yeah, this will be very, very comfortable yeah. for, uh, for yeah. black. Yeah. Yeah. What comes to mind is a move like queen b3 to make it slightly more difficult for black to develop the queen side and just sort of in particular because I would very much like to be taking on c4 in yeah. one move. So if I develop my bishop to e2, maybe d takes c4 becomes somehow playable or something. And also we are sort of preparing for queen a5 because queen a5 would be one of the things that black can do in these types of positions. So uh, protecting the pawn on... So c3. if I go, let's say, b6 because you, you played your... your, your, your I think now, now I think I will be interested. Okay. 
Okay. To a degree, at least. Because these types of positions, I, I understand I will yeah, probably but... have to lose some time to the Knight A5 threat. But these types of positions, in yeah, my experience, yeah. are not really very pleasant because you just end up... This is such a good barrier against the Bishop on G7 that you end up... You, you're never much worse, but you're always worse, in, in my experience. Yeah. I, I don't uh, like taking on C4 to 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 be fair. Yeah, I, yeah. I want to you know to con to keep on playing these mind games and not mm -hmm. not not give you a free tempo. So let's say yeah. I was like wondering that. about C5 even, but maybe it's not yeah. that much. Yeah, but yeah, it looks it Queen looks B3 on the me. board in the meantime. And Chad tells us that uh, Magnus is following his own game against Nakamura from Build 2012, which is uh -huh. okay. once again yeah more Grunfeld's dead. Uh, and he was he was he, he was black. Ah, as black, yeah. Not I as think white. so. Yeah, I think so. Okay. And a very, very interesting opening, kind of an experiment going on in the game between Wesley and uh, Arjuner Geisi, Grun... yeah. where basically this is a Grunfeld reversed. Yeah. But uh, Arjun has done here something that I don't think I've seen before. Uh, this is a line which starts as a symmetrical English, and then uh, in in this position, Wesley says. Uh, young man, how do you feel about defending a very, very old, very classical endgame, which I think is supposed to be a draw, but nobody really remembers the theory for, right? There's uh, there's this very old line which used, ah, to be, yeah. used to be extremely fashionable, like in the mid-90s. Bishop G2, 95, 93, right, C6, yeah. knight takes C4, bishop A6, bishop B4 check. I'm pretty sure modern engines, engines suggest this is a draw. Like, I would yeah. be shocked if modern engines did not think this is fine for black, if you play precisely. But also, nobody really remembers anymore. And uh, if you're surprised by this, you're probably not very happy to have to defend this. Because yes, you of course, you can imagine how you will be at least a little bit worse with the opponent C6 against the unbroken structure on uh, the queen side. And instead of all that, uh, Arjun just goes E5 and says, no, not interested. Knight C6, BC, Bishop G2. And no, I'm what shocked. We, yeah, who, who yeah and what we have it? here is just straight up. This is a Grunfeld, uh, but this is a Grunfeld because its colors reversed. Just a full tempo down for black. And people used to play it by playing bishop e6, queen a4, queen d7, and then sacrificing this pawn on d5. Uh, how, do, how does the main line go? It's like castles, yeah, rook c8, rook d1. I don't... No, rook now I have d5 here, no? Or, hmm? Ah, no, I'm yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, sorry. CD5, CD5. Uh, takes, takes, rook d1, and they just play bishop c5 here, right? Yeah, exactly. This is this is now a kind of a well-established theoretical pawn sacrifice, which I actually personally had on the white side against Paco in a team event somewhere. Maybe Reykjavik 2015. I don't remember exactly. And the point is that, yes, you win a central pawn, but black is incredibly active. And this... I think turns out that with precise play, this is just fine for Black. Uh, but Arjun d goes sort of one step further. Oh, B8, yeah, yeah I and just says, it. I never saw that move. Yeah, and just says, D5 is hanging, we don't care. Okay, why why, why don't we care? I have no idea. <laughs> so takes, takes, is Bishop before check, I guess. I mean, takes first. Uh, uh, takes. And Bishop before check here or, or one okay. move. And then we keep the Queens, yeah. right? Yeah, we, King of One, I can even castle, you know. Yeah, castle and or, just or, or tell you, please, or something. please yeah. make a move and yeah, mm. this is king on f1. It looks like great compensation actually, and yeah. you cannot play, of course, the very natural bishop d2 because b2 will be hanging. Well, yeah, you, you, uh, you at can, the end but the you're immediately abandoning all pretenses yeah. of, of so you takes, know playing for a win. Yeah, takes, 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 check. Yeah, it's perfectly. I mean, it's probably fine for, for white, but it's also yeah. completely fine for black. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Wesley, after some thought, uh, chose to castle. ignore all this and castled. And now and D4. The, the, yeah, oh. the gambits continue. The gambits continue yeah. because sort of you can still take on C6, but if you take on C6, you will get here. Where you you'll have your to answer, yeah, you <laughs> have to answer a very unfortunate question because yeah. you don't want like, to go to A4. Yeah, like you're supposed to go here and then you will start getting mated. Yeah, I guess. Something like that. Yeah. I'm guessing the point is that you kind of immediately start getting mated. Yeah. Because h5, h4 is very strong. And if you play h4, maybe you actually just get mated with queen h3 and match. Yeah, it says it's no more, no more f3. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, if you do it immediately, white at least has f3. 
But if you include H5 and H4, I think Queen H3 might be borderline winning because there is just no stopping Knight G4. Uh, so once again, Wesley says, thank you, young man, I'm not interested. <laughs> and now we have this position, which looks he very play playable for Black, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, Air Gazi is blitzing out all these moves. Great prep by, by Air Gazi. I'm happy. Uh, I, I I was rating his prep, and I thought it was good uh, during the podcast. Uh, I gave him a three or four out of five. But it's always, you know, um, it's very surprising. It's mi mixing up uh, a lot of different openings, and uh, always with some some very dangerous ideas. So I don't know mm -hmm. how co correct is his pawn sacrifice. Yeah, and uh, we're being told by by Satiris, who is a an absolute fount of ideas that. Uh, Fabi recently did this in this position, ah, just okay. giving up the entire, the entire house. And yeah, I think I saw this game. I think uh, maybe I saw even more than one game starting from here. This does look like very playable compensation for the exchange, right? I mean, ah. of course, you you have fewer rooks, but everything else looks fantastic, you know. <laughs> uh, so D four. Looks like it's it's playable here, yeah. and maybe Wesley was prepared for this, but this is a kind of a new twist, including rook b8 and then playing d4. Of course, it rings a bell because you see this rook b1, bishop e2 in, in regular Gunfeld, so rook b8 mm -hmm. doesn't come out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and how is that position? Probably, yeah, just completely fine for black. Yeah. So let Let's me see. let me just try and figure out, like in comparison, because this is how. For me, it would be easier to orient myself. This what we are watching now, in particular after uh, Rook B8 has been played. We are watching sort of the classical, yeah. the classical Rook B1. Rook B1, yeah. Uh, so you just have uh, Bishop B2 extra. Yeah. So Queen C2, Queen C7. Yeah. This is the position. Uh, uh, this is sort of exactly. This is exactly the position. If you yeah tempo with uh with the. Uh, Bishop already only two in the Grunfeld. So, and this is, but Queen C2 is a very, very non critical move. Okay. Uh, because obviously, this is this is like the old, very, very main line of Rook B1 where everybody goes Queen D2. It is very much That's supposed so. to be much stronger to play Queen D2. I think specifically because of Queen C7, because we absolutely want to play a four next move. And Queen C2, Queen C7, <clears throat> we have to invest more effort into making a four. Uh, a reality because it's currently controlled and you can't even castle because h2 is hanging yeah. which makes me wonder if you if you were not supposed to play queen d7 uh honestly ah. like i'm actually sort of semi-seriously would be asking the question if uh why aren't we supposed to play queen d7 here uh but it's you know it's gone uh Arjun. and it's a tempo it's a tempo so i don't know if you are you going are you really going to do so to play so actively uh, with f5 Tem because you yeah have... tempo down yeah tempo i mean down, you didn't castle yet um i don't know i would be a bit so how but... would you how would you solve the issue of h7 hanging it's i mean it's not hanging now but it will if you castle so and we would like to castle at some point uh so how are we uh dealing with this and uh, yes chat we will take a look at the king's gambit because apparently the king's gambit is now completely unclear that game <laughs> is just wild <laughs> that um... game is is just unbelievable so what should I do? H6? But H6 is very slow. H6 is weird, right? H6 yeah, is yeah. not really but what we want to be doing. But what do you do? I mean, after Bishop is served, let's say Bishop is served. I don't think it's hanging. Uh, what, what, what no, it's not do? hanging yet. E3? No, no. E3? Yeah, I, yeah I, think, I think it's probably E3. But we can just play C5, right? Yeah, and uh, just allow Bishop D5, E4 and just play around it. Is a 4 move instead of E3? It is, yeah. Of course it is. It's a very typical way to... Under and and this is why uh, queen d two in the yeah. in the variation I was describing. Actually. Yeah, yeah. With the queen on d seven, now we can play f five. F yeah. five and d four. Yeah, like yeah. If, once yeah. again, if we go back to this uh, to this Grunfeld, we very much like one of the reasons it's on d two is because we want to be able to meet f five with f four and d five. Always, it's extremely extremely important. Uh, so yeah, f four would be definitely one of the top. I don't know two three moves I would be considering with white. Bishop b seven actually kind of looks slow. And also, interestingly, Arjun is finally thinking, which is a yeah. bit of a weird spot to start thinking because after Queen C7, I think Queen C2 is by far the most obvious move. 
That's probably a mistake, um, a small mistake uh, in his preps that he thought, okay, the computer uh, gives equal, so let's not bother with that. Uh, have more. I guess there's a lot of options for, for why to deviate to take some material. So he was probably busy with, with the rest and he thought, that one I will manage. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's not. It's not easy, actually. No, I when think we start uh, thinking about it. Yeah, I think it's a. It's. It feels like it should be sort of okay for black, but it yeah. also feels like you probably have to play quite well because if you if you autopilot for a couple of moves here, you might be in trouble. Can I go G6? Because of those yeah, but G6, yeah. G6, G6. Yeah, G6 is like, like a four and. Bishop G7, I know, you, I know, you, no, I wanted a five actually. I, ah, yeah, yeah, sorry, I, I'm, I'm losing my, of course, a five, yeah, of course, yeah, a five. five and E4. So, I four, I don't think it's, yeah, probably not a four, but now I guess E3, E3. kind of yeah. gains in strength, right? Uh, I guess we play C5, I don't know, I guess we play C5, but this looks very dangerous to me, yeah, I don't know look, how, yeah, like Bishop G5 and then maybe a four next move, but maybe we're in time to castle, maybe it's not that horrible, I don't know. It's still potentially an extreme, extremely sharp position, which is honestly, I don't know how you feel, but it's a kind of a really strange case because normally, at least in my experience, positions where only four bishops are left on the board mm -hmm. are not very exciting. Like you need That's knights, true. you need knights to uh, to like introduce the degree of randomness Excitement. and mayhem. Yeah, <laughs> but this yeah. one, this one is still quite. Quite sharp, yeah. You didn't castle yet. I mean, that's yeah. that's the only issue. So mm -hmm. if if you manage to to castle in the next uh, three four moves without uh, major damages uh, on your positions, that, that would be fine. But it's not not easy to achieve. That's uh, yeah. That's hundred percent true, and it, it will take some time to to figure out uh, all the details. Maybe some some other games with the NC. Yeah, hey, uh, chat yeah. is saying chat is saying, can we go all to zero and play? Ah. H5? I don't think we're developed enough. I think you, you really are begging to get hit by a four and to kind of really uh, bishop c five maybe bishop c five even h four h g and queen e five queen h five. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe I I like I feel like it shouldn't work, but also my feelings about this position I think are Why very not? colored by how people used to treat the Grunfeld. And yeah. he, when I was looking at all of this, it was like the mid-90s and nobody was playing H4 then. So, so maybe, maybe E3. E3. Yeah, E3. Yeah, E3 the and actually. then you, to, you to open up to, the center. Yeah, you have to answer some questions because... Old I don't classical think, school, you know? Yeah, I, I don't yeah. think you're giving very many mates with the king on E8 yeah. still. I don't know, maybe bishop C5. I don't know. Yeah, it's not it's unplayable, bishop. but it's, it's, I think, even riskier than the position already is. Um, okay, so just briefly, the King's Gambit, because it's uh, remarkable what happened there. Uh, so, I mean, did take on d4. And in this position, the engine just very quietly takes, takes, goes knight c3, castles. And I think it likes bishop d2, but also like even a move like queen d5 here. Mm -hmm. It feels like you will stabilize and you will win, right? Yeah. It likes bishop d2 even more because it just says just I, will castle castle. Queen. I will castle queen side and then I will win just very comfortably. Yeah, and it sees no tactical reason not to go for it. But even if you don't see that, and if you see the move queen d5, I think you should be quite confident that you will be able to come out of the corner here. And once your pieces actually start developing, you're winning. Instead, he went bishop d3, uh, g6. You already have to go to a5, I think, because queen h6, you might actually be regretting very, very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, so he That's went nice. to a5. Uh, Knight of three GF castles, and I mean this you can very easily believe is playable for black. Two pawns for the that's piece. so weird to to yeah. go. I mean, why why not to just keep it simple, a piece up for for a couple of pawns? Uh, yeah, that's uh, practical. At the very least, it's a practical mistake from from Perak. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, I, I'm I'm very surprised by this because I mean it still looks like we should be able to I don't know play knight d two, play king d one if we get a. G if we get checked from h4, yeah, why, eventually why put something on e4 or c4. Like if I had to, if I had to pick a side, I am still picking the side which is up material. That's for sure. But yeah, I mean, like this one looks winning. This one, no, uh, but in, I, I, uh, in particular, this I one. Love. In particular, yeah, this sure. one looks completely. Which winning. is not too difficult. Let's yeah. face it. Uh, and but this he, one, yeah, and this one doesn't. 
Maybe he, he, he played he played very quickly uh, mm-hmm. after uh, Tabatabe uh, blundered, so maybe a bit. Uh, I mean, he, he, took t- he took ten minutes to play bishop d three. Actually, it okay. wasn't instant instantaneous, but still, yeah. I'm, I mean, this is obviously a huge break for Tabatabe to even still sort of be in the game because normally, if you blunder a thing like that, you are just never. So let me let me tie something. If I if I after knight c three uh, takes takes knight c three, if I go g six, your g six. Here I I want I want bishop h4 check. Ah okay. But oh you, yeah, yeah you, okay. You I just understand. have g3. How does that work? You have g3 here. Oh boy. Yeah, but then you you have this ah. right. But okay, I mean, maybe even, maybe like, this was... is the best case scenario. But even this looks kind of lost to me. Okay. Even this and and yeah, I keep on blundering bishop h4 check as I realize. I just keep on blundering it. I didn't oh, see it here, and I didn't see it here. Yeah, it's just. Kind of a blind spot. Bishop h4, g3, of course. You cannot take on g3. It's a pity. It was my first, you know, instinct. Ah. Uh, take on g3, queen d4, g2, but it's too much. Yeah. You make a new queen, but. Uh, yeah, it's a bit too much. We'll keep an eye on this because this is this yeah. might actually become a quite an exciting game, but we, we still have some game we games we completely have. Whoa. Huh. Wow. Yeah. I, I just wanted to. Mass. Yeah, this one, this one is going to be a draw very soon. So it was a Botvinnik. Oh, yeah, God. it was a Botvinnik in which it looks like both players kind of knew what they were doing. And this is, we are 40 minutes into the round. This is move 27 and it's a draw. Uh, so King so, G1, King G1, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so what do we know about this line? Bishop E7, I know absolutely nothing about. I know it's not it's not too easy for 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 my, I, it's an under 80 line. Mm. Yeah, so basically they... They were here like three minutes into the game, and they basically continued blitzing more or less all through the game. This looks it's unbelievable. Like, this is this looks amazing. Yeah, like somehow this is I assume best play, and they both know it's best play. And like somewhere here, if you don't know what you're doing, you might be tempted maybe to to resign. But Queen G5 apparently makes a draw, right? Because you are stopping the castle by attacking G2, and if White takes. This long, long line turns out to be a draw. Wow! That's because beautiful. Queen H three and King E two would be a bit yeah. of a mistake. Yeah, and <laughs> King G one, Queen G four, and it's a draw. Yeah. Wow, that's and fantastic! They have, they but have already need... already agreed a draw here. Okay. So yeah, very nice opening prep by I guess both of them. <laughs> but well, uh, especially Misha. Oh, mm. But okay, you can also praise White for for testing out. Uh, some line if it's not too well known i don't know um i'm not that updated in on that line so i don't know if it was played already or not yeah we, we i wouldn't we, be surprised specialists here yeah and some very very old schooly stuff by the way Ooh, i wanted yeah. to show you this position next yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. i haven't seen this in ages and ages and i don't remember if i ever had an opinion about this line but this is it's sort of extremely old school this is the old classical petrov which has I mean, disappear it would be untrue, but it's ex- very unfashionable because everybody plays uh, the bishop f5, knight 6 lines, or bishop yeah, oh, oh, bishop d6 exactly, yeah, yes. bishop d6, Lippo. or or people play uh, this this oh, type bish- of, this type of stuff. Or, yeah. or, or you start with now this. Or you start with bishop kind of, five. It's a kind of start with bishop f5. Mm-hmm. Uh, so don't, but on six, yeah, almost disappeared. It was a move of, of Vladimir Kamnik, yeah, uh, back in the days. And but now, um, yeah, the rest has uh, just much, much more popular. And uh, yeah, who can and, 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 and here you have choices because obviously there is this extremely large body of theory yeah. starting from this position, which I personally like spent month and month of my life uh, looking at, uh, in particular when. Uh, the the I was helping. Uh, well, <laughs> helping is maybe not not the word to use <laughs> famously. Yeah, but uh, when I was there uh, with Vladimir Kramnik for the Brisago match, <laughs> uh, and uh, this was like uh, what we were planning to do if uh, Leko played one e four. And but we we have we have the same experience. We are both trying to help uh, Vladimir, <laughs> but you you had a happy hand at, at least. Sort of, yeah. Uh, I mean, like the, the match was was a draw, but uh, Vladimir Kamnik in two thousand four kept his title. While uh, my match, <laughs> in which I was trying to help Vladimir, didn't go that well right from the start. It was born two thousand eight. You can find the video series on Chess Twenty Four actually. 
um, about that match with with Peter and Nielsen was was helping Vichy mm -hmm. so uh yeah that was the main line back in the days I remember I had to look at that as well <laughs> later yeah, on. It's, uh... so this is a never-ending story yeah. and you know I remember uh, Bishop is seven and back in the days uh it was very interesting because um Vladimir was saying oh this night BD2 you know uh, it's not that simple to equalize here for black and it became one of the, the main lines I yeah it's all... very serious now and it is uh, very very serious we were discussing with peter peter leko was uh telling me he, he had to check this and say oh it's not much but it's not so easy for black and he felt it and it become uh basically one of the the very main lines uh 10 years later so he was yeah. just he, he was just as usual he was 10 years in advance of, yeah, uh, he he so has amazing. he has very good chess instincts. Yeah, you, <laughs> you you generally like when when he talks about when he talks about chess stuff, you are very well advised to listen and pay attention, and it will it will probably turn out to be true later. Uh, but anyway, uh, rookie one is another move here which has existed forever, but I think these days is not really checked very often because after bishop g four, the idea always has been that. In order to have a chance for anything, you're supposed to enter those extremely weird lines after c3, f5, like knight bg2, castles, queen b3, king h8, or however. Yeah, I think this is like the starting position, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we all had, a, well, I mean, maybe not we all, but some of us had a lot of fun analyzing this with like Fritz 3 in like 1994 or whatever. <laughs> uh, and uh, Obviously, like all of that can be immediately put in a put in a dustbin. Uh, yeah. the engines in those years had no idea how to play positions like this. But uh, this is fun, but it's extremely risky for white because you do uh, get mated uh, occasionally. Yeah. So C4 is a much, but C4 uh, involves a pawn sacrifice, as we'll see in the in the game. Yeah. Uh, knight F6. Yeah, this is all very standard. Uh, yeah, and, and this is the stuff that like Karpov and Kasparov used to play in, in some of their early matches, I think. Yeah, that's true. Maybe the first one even. Yeah, maybe even the, the, the very, very first one. And uh, yeah, another position which uh, I, I definitely looked at at some point in my life, but I remember absolutely nothing, and I don't know what the current engines think about it, but Richard is playing quick enough to suggest that Probably this is supposed to hold if you play precisely, because DC4 and Knight C2 wasn't really. I don't no, think this is I what don't... they were doing, right? No, they, they no, were no, they no. were doing something else. Yeah. After Queen H3, I think I think in this position people were like castling and trying to play C5 and support the Knight on D4 and something like that. And That's equalize true. equalize that way. Uh, but you never but... know with Richie. Uh, let's not over trust uh, that Richie. Is, that is true, those... but very the theoretical uh, lines. But yeah, he seems to know what he's doing. But Jordan also is uh, thinking Jordan. So probably it's not. Uh, if it's not, uh, if Hang he a a escaped, uh, have Jordan's I been have I been adapt? lying to the viewers all this time? Because it says, but this cannot possibly be true. What exactly? Uh, the the chess twenty four database is giving me zero games after Bishop of three nine Queen of three ninety four. This cannot be true. No, this is not possible. No. So the database is broken since today. So there's a small problem. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so you should. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> According to Sotiris, which knows. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, because okay. yeah, like... too late. Too late. Better not to mention. It happens. I mean, sometimes we have some some problems, but we are on it, and uh, I mean, we we uh, people are on it, and we will solve it. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, so. My immediate instinct here would be to try, at least to attempt to play Queen G3, right? We don't really ah, want okay. to play endgames. We want to give mate. We want to try sure. to use the fact that we are much better developed, that the king is still on E8. And, and taking on A1, actually, well, I wouldn't do... I wouldn't rate my chances very high here. Yeah, like it, it, it looks like it should be made of no, some I, sort. I, I don't know exactly how, but it looks like I, it should I, be made. Rookie 1 or Bishop G5 or... Yeah, there's not, a number of, not a number a fun, of things here. Not a fun here. Um, so yes. Queen G3, huh? Uh, Queen G4 exists. Can, can, I, can I castle? And yeah, castle. My, my, my point is that... And uh, now, we have now. G, now we have Queen G4. I think it 
just stronger. Because Queen G4 one move before we can show to the viewers, I think Queen C7 was was bothering me, but maybe I was too optimistic. It's just one check on B5, but yeah, I mean uh, I'm not I... that happy about pushing the king on f8, yeah. Uh Bishop B5, King F8, Rookie One, maybe something very, very I, I should be very fast. Uh also yeah, this, just, uh, I, I missed I missed rookie one at least. But Queen before. Even I mean, Queen still, before, yeah. Still hanging there, Queen D6. Because we want, yeah, we want to come back. And it is a full rook now. We are we're yeah. not talking ah, about yeah. an exchange sacrifice. We've we've given a full rook for this. So Fantastic. Um, what is it? it will be um, Yeah, I, I think I think be... this makes more sense, right? If it doesn't yeah, like you have to continue calculating, but A1 is still hanging, right? So I can we just can, take, we yeah. can probably just afford to take and take either on a one or I mean how clear is this Bishop knight a one? It's coming out because the bishop is hanging right here. Probably just game over, actually. Oh, I'm too enthusiastic about black uh, gate. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I think I can probably develop some counterplay, but yeah, it doesn't look very promising for white. Um. Yeah, we'll see. And also, I think from a purely practical standpoint, it has already been some kind of a success. Uh, For a uh, Because uh, Jordan is down half an hour on the clock. He probably doesn't know very much about what's going on here. And this will not be a very easy position to play entirely unprepared because you, you have committed something. I mean... If you play, I don't know, Queen G3 castles and you just play Rook B1, you're actually probably not doing too poorly unless you, there is no good squares after Bishop D6, which is possible. But even, let's say, some kind of a position like this, there's always compensation. You always have your Bishop pair. You're always going to have some play for the pawn. But you pretty much know you're never going to be better. And yeah, and, yeah. Long and term, maybe you can be slightly worse. Who knows? And um, Richie, um, it I think this is the strongest point of uh, of uh, Jordan's play in general. The opening opening mm. is incredibly good, incredibly uh, tricky and uh, clever in his choices. And Richie, it's a bit the opposite. Uh, it's not really his forte. His main strong point is much much better in some some uh, let's say uh, creative middle games. So it's a, it's a good news for Richie to to get such kind of positions mm -hmm. to be out of the opening uh, without. Uh, Damages, so yeah, we will. We'll yeah, we'll see. see. Uh, and let's, uh, as usual, we you know, we're yeah. one hour into the broadcast, and there are at least three games we haven't even touched. Yeah, let's let's go to to gear, no? Ah, okay, uh, I wanted to yeah, let's start with this. Yeah, this is a okay. an open, open Spanish, Spanish between wow. uh, Levon Aronian and one of the younger players in the tournament, not the youngest, but one of the younger players in the tournament, uh, uh, Pragnanda. And um, Levon did something which is Kind of yeah. very, very offbeat against the open. He took only five with the knight. Uh, and he, if we want to be diligent, let's just show what I mean by the open. This is maybe one of the more, if we don't count the Berlin, it's one of the more kind of fashionable and topical ways of play the Spanish, which avoids uh, all the D3 shenanigans. I think specifically it avoids, uh, you, you don't need to study all of this, which is, because of how popular the marshal is, this has become, yeah. you know, borderline main line of the Spanish if you play bishop uh, seven. Knight takes e four avoids all of that, and the normal move in this position is d takes e five, and there is a tremendous amount of theory starting from here. Yeah. Knight e five, of course, also exists, but generally speaking, uh, it's a much less popular move. And so far, I am not very impressed by how you know this is coming out for Levon. He clearly had some idea. He's playing faster. He is. Uh, he got. I, I'm guessing some version of what he wanted to get. Uh, and G4 here is a kind of an indication that he's not really playing just quietly to trade pieces and make a draw. But I like Prague's reaction. He took some time here and he went Queen D3, which looks a bit weird because the Queen is now a bit vulnerable. Seems like to the move Rook F3, and now he went Knight E4, using the fact that. Sort of attacking the knight on d2 makes it impossible for white to move the bishop away from yeah. d3. Uh, so you have a choice of positions here. Like you can trade queens by playing something like knight f1 or knight b3. And whoops, that, that was a bit of a boo boo on my part. Yeah, some kind of a position like 
I don't know which move to make here. Bishop D6 I'm with not, A8. It's, it's, not, it's not very impressive for 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 White to to be to be honest here. Not at all. No. I, no. Yeah. So, um, yeah. We, if, we it, just need to make sure we don't blunder some kind of uh, yeah, some kind if, of a jump, but. As uh, our, our, I used to play this open Spanish, and it's a bit of a nightmare as black because you have to remember all those lines just to make a door. But mm -hmm. of course, knight takes c5. I remember checking it, and yeah, it was really not supposed to be dangerous at all. But yeah, I think Pug, as you pointed out, uh, reacted very well to the surprise. Yeah, and I, I like I like what he's done. I still feel like, let's say specifically in this end game, you maybe need one more precise decision to be completely fine because. Knight d4 with the idea of putting it on e6, supporting with a supporting it with, with a five kind of bugs me a little bit. But first of all, like maybe this is useful because in order not to make an immediate actually, I, to... I saw that, but I can go rook f1 actually. Ah, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, of course you can. Sorry, yeah, you can go rook f1 and knight h3, king g2 yeah. is a blunder. Yeah, okay. But we're getting a little bit. Ah, and the one yeah. played a five. Yeah, the one decided oh, not to uh, not to do any of that. Played Thanks five. so fast. So I do think it's. Uh... To, have you ever decided before to amend, okay, I'm going to play fast, and you actually do it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, uh, I I tend to play quite fast when I'm in decent yeah. shape, but I've never done it as a kind of a specific experiment I wanted to I wanted to try for the entire tournament. It's always, like when my game is in good working order, I generally am not in too many time troubles, but... okay. Um, because uh, I tried that actually because I have some some time table issue at times and uh, well I never really managed actually but Levon seems to have uh, I mean at actually if I can judge for the first uh, couple of games now he's on one hour twenty six I mean he's playing f five in two three minutes yeah there's plenty to think about I mean it's clearly a decision to 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 play fast absolutely right? even though like you can sort of understand the point because. You can't really avoid all of these end games, or at least not very easily. And a five is a move you generally want to make because it gains space, it gives you additional squares. And on on the topic of additional squares, Black maybe would like to make some kind of a general improving move like Rook yeah. A8, but you you may have lost because suddenly there is this square which wasn't available earlier. And the queen, yes, you have the check, but the queen That's is still the, the queen is still completely completely caught. Okay. Uh, so, so by playing a five, he is. I think bishop f4. Simply. Yeah, more or less, I think committing black to something immediate. Maybe knight takes d2 is like borderline forced, even because. And why not, actually? Yeah, it's not a bad move or anything. I'm just. Are you take with the queen? Yeah? Okay. I think I do. Yeah, I, I don't believe in bishop takes d2. I think, yeah, queen e4. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like I think this is a way. This is a way to, to fail to, to us, equalize. Yeah. 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 You can very easily fail to equalize like this. Rook a8 coming in, h5 coming in. Like this is just not great. If you if you can't immediately trade this queen away, like. But without knights, do, do do we believe in uh, in the end game? Hmm? I mean, without knights, let's say takes takes check, hook e8. What, what well, this I... should this should be completely fine. For yeah, well, there is I'm no way this that. is a problem. Yeah, there, there is just no way this is a problem unless, I mean, you can misplay. Like, <laughs> if you put your mind to it, you can misplay any position. But, <laughs> hmm. uh, but yeah, normally speaking, this should be completely completely fine. I'm even wondering about the move like g6, just yeah, to try, exactly. just to try and undermine. I'm I'm a little bit worried about this page six. Otherwise, I would be very happy with this. Okay, that's uh, yeah. I'm expecting Pug to to do well here. I mean, what I else? think he'll be okay. Yeah, I yeah. think he'll be okay. Uh, then Giri, yeah. Giri, some Giri some is prep. doing something Ooh, weird, but some prep here. Giri, yeah, Giri is showing some out. very high level prep here, which I don't okay. understand at all. Like, okay, I, I'm very confused. Hook C1, uh, I was trying to make. Let's go, let's uh, go from the beginning. So we have a Ragozin, yeah. uh, and Giri goes bishop g5, which for years and years had the reputation of sort of the way to play the Ragozin mm -hmm. uh safely, right? Because the positions become like compared to cd5, ed5, bishop g5, this is much uh calmer. But also it doesn't really give you very much normally. Uh, but, yeah. the, but the line he's playing, uh, this has been uh, discussed for ages. And this apart, is supposed to be ages. Yeah, apart from the, you know, all the immediate draws that people make in this position, yeah. like there is this famous, uh, famous line which has been seen at the top level for mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of times by this point, right? This, this stuff. 
we have yeah. seen we have seen this done more than once let's put it like this this is a a kind of a famous way to not play a game of chess if you don't want to play a game of chess <laughs> um but obviously anish is not going to do this against against Gukesh in round two this is not why uh, why he came to to the board he goes 94 which is a way to avoid this and to actually have have a game of chess uh queen e7 and they used to they used to do this stuff like they, they used to take on d4 with the knight with the idea of putting the queen on h5 and then maybe going f4 or f5 and things of that nature yeah, but that's what's not really okay. Yeah, but it's I, still ninety six yeah. or something yeah. like that. I think people realize how to deal yeah. with it, and it doesn't really do very much anymore. So instead, Anish goes a three, which pay five, and now he goes e takes d four, which is already a bit of a surprise. Rook d eight, and then this move rook c two, which when I saw this on my screen, I thought, "What on earth is that?" Okay, wants to get some, yeah, to 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 get the the, the hook to it to uh, well, which is very, of course, very deep, uh, because you cannot play rook e one, which would be very natural. Yeah, it's taken, and if you play b four, then bishop b six, and your pawn on d four becomes weak. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. So... Yeah. You, so yeah, you can definitely explain it by saying that we want a rook on the e file. Thanks very much for the raid once again, uh, Ivan, and Thank you. welcome to welcome to the viewers. You want a rook on the e file and currently e1 square is being attacked so you can do it naively by something like this but first of all b6 is a very good square for the bishop because knight c6 can be used to put pressure against the default pawn and also a5 will immediately use the fact that there is a pawn on b4 to start count to play against your queen side uh, so instead we're burning two tempi here to bring this rook over to the e2 uh, square uh, and I'm also a bit curious about Gukesh's reaction, to be honest, because why aren't we just playing knight c6 here? Okay, I guess hook e2. I'm blundering the pawn on d4? No, or? I don't think you're blundering anything, but I mean, at least not yet. But like, why aren't we just attacking <laughs> it yet. with everything? <laughs> Thank you. Um, and now if, rook d2. Yeah. Okay. But isn't this what we want? It's weird, I agree. Isn't isn't this what we would just bishop d7 here, rook c8, and put the bishop on e8 as we always do in these types of positions? And well, you can also go bishop d7 c6 as he did, but knight c6 must be okay. Let, yeah. let me let me think after knight c6. Just mm -hmm. one minute. Uh, I was thinking about yeah, but it looks too artificial. Too artificial. Bishop b5, bishop d7, knight c5, but just go bishop e8. And, yeah. yeah, I think what I think this I, is sort of exactly what I want. I'm yeah, just yeah, developing yeah, my yeah, pieces. Yeah, yeah, I'm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, yes, I understand good. that maybe you can sort of support this knight with before, yeah, and it's not still. a poor piece. But black is just so healthy in terms of structure. It's just such a solid position. Uh, it's not that I really <sighs> dislike the idea of having the bishop on c6, but now I guess you play knight, like normally you would play knight d7. That's d5, huh? Yeah, but maybe you have to worry about all of this crap. Wow. I, mean, I would be mega worried here. Yeah, it's lost, maybe, no? Maybe, I think this looks lost, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if you get here and then you somehow cannot play knight d7, then you're stuck a little bit because you're like, how are you developing these guys? White maybe doesn't have an immediate threat yet, but I will play rook d1 and then d5 will become a threat, right? Like, let's yeah, no, it's not funny. It's not funny here. Yeah. And now you, I don't think you can pass anymore. I think d5 next move is very much happening and also i think it's too late to go back to these types of ideas because or maybe maybe not not too late but it's risky i'm not even sure I'm, like maybe taking with the rook is even stronger to specifically yeah. have the access to d4 d5 here no, it looks tricky now now for gukesh i fully agree 96 was a critical move i'm uh, i'm sure uh gear had some idea I no of course it's yeah it's it's it's, uh, it's a niche we're talking about and Anish yeah. always has ideas in the opening yeah. but um, and that one is, um, yeah, it looks. Oof, yeah, and it's... and and also just if you if you look Bishop at the displayed. if you if you look at the clock, yeah, of course, uh, the, the clock tells tells the entire story here. Anish has gained two and a half minutes, and Gukesh is basically giving a full hour handicap here. He is down a full hour by move sixteen, where 
you know, the first 12 moves are extremely well-known theory. Uh, so this is obviously a, a, an unqualified success for an issue already. I, I'm and assuming... I'm sure, I'm sure you, you will know some more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You will, I mean, hook the one, what else? Really, huh? yeah. It's hard to imagine. It's, uh, unless we already have some tactics, but I don't think with Rook on F1, we are ready to immediately start giving mate. <laughs> Even though, like, I'm, I'm curious. Can we, since you know, famously these are not our pieces. You know, can we, <laughs> like, do something uh-huh, okay. stupid? So one IG five, yeah. Yeah, just like for three seconds. Can we discuss this? Yeah. Okay. G six. Have to stop. Yeah, I, I wanted to sort of really go in, right? But uh, it, this is never enough, though, right? Because the bishop is also connected to the good squares. Yeah, so I can is, go. Can yeah, this just... is just never enough. And just king of oh, king five, seven. sure. Well, G7 is protected, so... Yeah, Queen okay. F5, still King E7, Hockey okay, 1, I don't know. I mean, I'm not 100% yeah, sure, but yeah. also exists, I don't know. Yeah. We're probably giving up a little bit too much material, but... Yeah, no, I... The fact, the fact that you can actually discuss a line like yeah. this is, is sort of telling in itself, because... Bishop B3 here, actually. Bishop B3 to take 96. Ah, yeah. <laughs> game, I mean... Game very much continues, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I have some nasty tricks, uh... At least, but yeah, rook d1 is so natural and yeah, so... but why why not just play rook d1? Yeah, yeah just play rook d1. Uh, it's o- what obviously no reason, no reason to do any of that. Let's see if he's at the board or if he's walking around if we have the, the camera. Uh because well, we can I'm... only see we can only see the pieces uh yeah. right now, but yeah. I was hoping we, we could see uh if gear is there or not. Uh we can't see. Okay, and one Another game we didn't see, or we no? Oh, I think now thinking. we now we're caught up with, with the so bishop uh, b6 probably not the, the line of the computer uh, as you as we see on your screen, um, as I see on, on your screen, not uh, not not so the evaluation bar uh, from equality is now showing uh, um, quite a large edge for, yeah, for some, white. some advantage, some advantage for white. So uh, it's probably maybe it was not in gear's note, but he, he will go. I mean, you really think for five minutes to, uh, you know, to enter the game because it's a bit weird when 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 your opponent is thinking for one hour and you are just walking around the, the playing hall, you you still didn't play a move by yourself. You have to, you know, uh, warm up and uh, calculate some lines. And I think it's what will do uh, Anish, but no doubt uh, he's a classical player. I won't go for it. Oh, maybe. No, no, no. I, Rook D, but Rook D, unless, uh, unless somehow we manage to, you know, guess what the extreme geniuses over at Stockfish are saying here. <laughs> like, if the solution actually is H4, he will play H4. But normally, of course, you just go Rook D1 here in about 30 seconds. And Yeah, because 97 D5 is such a uh, s- simple And we're, we're to... being told this line actually works for white. The one the one we were showing. H4, yeah? This is H4, it's amazing. Yeah. Okay. It's amazing. I'm so proud. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, wow. Yeah, but it creates some <laughs> some threat. Yeah, it's uh, so H4. Yeah? H4 is the best move here. I don't know if it's the best move, but yeah, our chat is saying that the, the whole line with Rook takes E6 actually works. Yeah, I don't know how. Um, also, like in this position, Knight E6 exists, or Bishop E6 exists, but you, the one you want to play is, of course, this one. And then this one, this looks like the only move. And now we need to think. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, H4 is a top move on chess 24. And oh, Rook D1, Rook D1, Rook E4, 97. Ah. What? No, if if you go instead of H4, Rook D1, uh-huh. I just. Uh, so now I saw the computer line. So Bishop ah, takes, takes 97 and then Knight F6. D5, yeah. D5, Knight F6, anyway. Uh, Rook E1, Knight G4. Ah, okay. So we we get some counterplay. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, okay. So in this position, we need to think. So H four is the best move, but there is no way Gia is playing H four. <laughs> I mean, if he knows, if he knows, he plays it. But he, he doesn't know. He's on no, one. No. He's on one forty two prior to this position. I would be very impressed. Uh, very impressed uh, if uh, if Gay uh, just plays H four because Rook D one looks so natural and so good. Um, uh, but yeah, so people are saying Bishop E six instead of Rook E six. Okay, that yeah. I mean, this is obviously a kind of a saner choice to to not give up all the material immediately. And I mean, my 
my instant reaction was this, but this actually just loses to rookie six because black still has this whole bunch of pieces doing absolutely nothing on the other side of the board. And if you have to take, I'm guessing here as well, like the queen has no good squares and rook G6 the attack just, con- yeah, rook six is coming. The attack just continues. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. We'll find out. I- I'm predicting. What do you think? I think he the will fact, the fact that he is thinking is confusing me because yeah. uh like bishop b6 is definitely a move you have to be discussing here like bishop b6 is one of the i don't know top two moves that come to mind immediately so yeah but sometimes you are checking with computer and you don't realize that i know mm. yeah <laughs> i know something about it so um absolutely yeah maybe maybe h4 anyway is uh one of the main ideas in that line, yeah, H4 and H5. Yeah. So maybe and and chat chat has a suggestion actually. Uh, uh, chat is telling me uh, tell Laurent that if Giri plays H4 here, we want him to be granted immunity from being called chicken. Yeah, uh, okay. chicken of the week for one I, year. I I, I, I almost uh, wanted to offer that, but yeah, we do that. <laughs> we do that. We have a deal. Oh, go on, H4, and you are no. I think I think, again, I, I, I think a, full, of a full year is a little bit too much, but you definitely should be. He should be granted immunity for a while. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So what? Okay. Yeah, no, so I would what, be very impressed. No, what I do we do after H four? If Bishop D four, <laughs> as as people are suggesting, Bishop D four is a, is an actual losing blunder, but which actually, is really you know, really impressive, by the way. You know, Peter, I don't feel I'm taking too many risks here. <laughs> I, I don't see H four happening in. Uh, <laughs> really, I mean, like, I'm, I'm completely sure, but. Of course, I, I could be wrong. So Bishop D four ninety five, yeah. How yeah. does that work? Yeah, this this apparently works. Yeah, amazing. And then let me ah ninety seven D five, yeah, and it's game over. And if I take on E four, why why is yeah, it? Yeah, I think guy? I think this is what you're supposed to do. Yeah, I think I think this. Somebody in chat suggested King F eight in this position, which Oof. is weird, but has some point because yeah, I think it weakens our N ninety five ideas. Yeah, because now you can take and uh here queen h7 is not not a check so you get the tempo to play i'm not quite sure what maybe bishop d5 or something just to just to stabilize and uh yeah i can i can see that being being clever but but i think i think the suggestion from the machine is to go here yeah but let me let me understand the difference between 97 with the hook on d1 and the pawn on h4 why is it so good now 97 if i play instead of queen f6 I mean now because our line after yeah, the no one idea, it was. Yeah. Ah, so I, I, I think I know. Yeah, I think maybe this is very dangerous because there is no rook takes d one and knight takes e four, so it's just an exchange. It's not a whole so, rook. Right? No, no, no. But I take I take on e four and you take queen. Yeah, oh, yeah. I just take on e four. Yeah, I take on e four. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think we never do now. Um, okay. Uh, no, I don't buy it. But yeah, what, and uh, uh, and somebody in chat said Anish is in trying to remember pose. He really does look like somebody who is trying to remember. Yeah, or possibly he is trying to, you know, psych himself into playing H4. Like he he knows it's the answer, but it's kind of he is fighting his instincts, which tell him that Rook D1 is a very good move and why why bother, you know? <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh I, I don't know. Um um yeah, um I would be yeah, maybe he knows actually, and maybe he's just trying to remember or he's faking it. Uh yeah, I mean, many, many, uh, many versions of this are possible. Of Our course, blaming, blaming is is second to to not have checked uh, um, that precise bishop b six. Are, are we outing it second for for Wake or not? Or we are just uh, waiting for that? Yeah, I, I don't know if we should. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if we, I like. Once I'm again, a chicken. I, I'm a chicken, so I, I cannot do it. You you should do yeah. it. Oh, you will be my chicken of the week, maybe, for not outing the. <laughs> ah, and, uh, and, and, and Chad also told us told us that in this position, apart, from, yeah, and after queen f six, you can go rook e one, knight c six, rook takes e six. But black actually is not losing here because you have knight takes d four, and maybe you actually survive. Okay, but this is not this is not winning, but it's threatening. Okay, Matematic on the chess 24 chat with making an educated guess. I cannot say much more than that. <laughs> but uh, Anish... Uh, yeah, I, I, like I, I feel like I'm maybe some episodes of the podcast behind and 
I no, it, it, it was not outed on the, on the podcast. Mm, okay, I guess next then time. then then we shouldn't. Yeah, I thought yeah. maybe maybe the podcast was no at let's some say, point. Let's have a look at. Uh, so we are waiting for for Anish <laughs> now. He looks he looks yeah really devastated, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. He, he's doing well. <laughs> he has a good position. Uh, so um, oh, our ding against Max Zudlu. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you will love it. I'm sure. Yeah, and uh, there, somebody actually paid two hundred channel po- two thousand channel points to do, uh, to say that we are uh, making fun of you, Anish's character and and his second. You're definitely wrong about <laughs> the second part of this. We we are actually like lifelong fans of his second. We are yeah, definitely. But- we're definitely not making fun of his second. Or no, of we are, course we do. Yeah, or if we are, we're doing it lovingly. <laughs> yeah. We're doing it. Yeah. We're doing it very lovingly. It's really not. It's really not, not what you think. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, H four is just a very committal move. And we we we, we love everything about uh, his second except his hair. <laughs> but I would. I, I'm just going to say that. Yeah. Okay. So H six. What's the point? Uh, yeah, do- I don't know. It's very weird because, like, somehow we have committed hugely to yeah to night f seven to night f seven. Uh, or I mean, I maybe know. maybe it takes c five still allows us to bail out. No. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, but it will be night f seven at some point. No, if I go d, uh, I don't know. Like, okay, hook d eight. No, but this probably loses, right? Ah, because if I was hanging, so yeah, no, oh, that's just, a very nice just point. completely lost. Oh, I missed that. If I was hanging at the end, yeah, okay. So D five is the, is the idea. Yeah, I'm pretty sure D five. The, the big question is, can we start with knight f seven? I think this is like the, the the massive, massive question that Ding is pondering now. That's I cannot calculate at all. Yeah, can we can uh, we do it in this order? Animation. I mean, it looks very good to me. D the queen d eight, and it's game over. Yeah. Ah, the, I can go Queen D8, Knight D8, maybe, but probably it looks terrible. But it still looks kind of terrible, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I some kind of a position like this, Rook D1 King coming F8. in. But I can go Rook D1 Rook anyway. D1, like, yeah, I, I well. think I'm winning. You're just winning. I think okay. I'm straight up winning here with White. Yeah, yeah. because Rook A8 is uh, Rook D8, yeah? Yeah, Rook that King position D8. is actually maybe not as clear as I hoped, because I will have Rook really? D2, yeah. But this is hanging, points, this no. is hanging, but... Yeah, still... Probably still lost, yeah. But yeah. no, I, but the, the the bigger issue is, I think this is completely winning. Oh, okay. yeah, I don't have a good because I, for my yeah, like, as long as you don't uh-huh. have the d5 square, as long as you have to go backwards here, I think you can resign. And like, hook d7, hook d7, I think you can resign basically. This never, this never holds. So hang on a second, is is Ding just winning here or? Uh, I, I wouldn't think so because I see your evaluation. Now. It's, yeah. you, you were right before the show. You said it was annoying, and it's slightly annoying. This, this I guess bishop e three, right? This this times. has to be the solution. Bishop e three, so that white never has bishop takes a seven. And my point was e f six, but and I guess bishop the bishop back, just yeah. goes back. Yeah, the bishop just goes back, and we can give some checks, but there is no mate. Like I can go bishop f seven, king f seven, queen d five, check. This actually looks like mate. Even though, I mean, you can maybe try to survive even here, but this looks very risky. It is. But my, but my issue is king of eight, I think. Fg, king, g7. And it looks dangerous for now, but if you give black like two tempi to play, I don't know, queen, g8, rook of eight, I think black will be giving mate on the king side, not white. <laughs> these, bishops not... Are, these bishops are extremely ah, dangerous. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... It's a gamble, wow. yeah. That's incredibly sharp. Um, and if I take first on on e five, so what what was your solution there? We had no solution, no, 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 no solution, not really, no. Because because bishop is now. I guess maybe it's just hang on, over, hang on, yeah. Hang on. Ah, maybe we do it. Hang on. Uh, do we agree? No, on this that? loses. That bishop is three. Ef is over. No, yeah. I, I mean, will, this yeah? this is completely completely yeah, busted. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, it's completely busted. Just resignable. So, what's the what are we? How is this not bad for black? Ah, uh, maybe they can G five. Ah, we go. Ah, uh, we go D. Queen uh, eight. And if you go knight of seven, I have queen D one. 
and queen takes b3, so but the knight cannot. Yeah, but let me, let me go queen takes d8. Yeah, now I take with a knight, right? I and think you are not ah! getting your sacrifice. You're not getting your sacrifice. Wow. The so bishop a7, rook a7, rook a g1, I guess rook a8. Same, same. Hook d8, hook d8, knight f7. I don't have to take on f7, is your point. Yeah, but I now rook go. f7 is not forced. I can go. Ah, I know. And maybe you can. S How does this work? This is all very, very confusing. It's incredibly sharp. Let's see how Ding. Um, I mean, ah, he's, Ding got, he's got knight of seven. Machine, yeah? He's got knight of seven immediately. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, rook f7 is obviously the only move. Otherwise, you, yeah, d5 already played. In our understanding, at least, bishop takes e3 is the only move here. Everything else looked like it was more or less completely losing. I agree. Um, so what is the plan? Rook e3, knight e5 doesn't work because you are just not getting anywhere. So the plan has to be ef6. And now I think we don't even have to put it on c5 because that gives white maybe some additional tempi with b4 later. Maybe, I would maybe even go all the way back to a7. Yeah. yeah. There's also bishop f4. I don't know if it's a good square. I feel like keeping it on, on, on this diagonal is better, but bishop f4 does exist. Uh, yeah, bishop e3 played by Parham very, very quickly, and uh, yeah, it's all forced. It's all yeah, pretty much, pretty much forced. Yeah, take on f6 will come. It yeah, came. f6 already played. Yeah, and now the big choice because Black has three moves, which all have, I think, something to to recommend them for. I, yeah, I like bishop a7 the most currently, but I'm not. 100% yeah, sure of my conclusions. I agree with you. Bishop a7, why not? Uh, bishops should go far from the center. You don't get attacked. Yeah, just, just so that it, it never gets it never yeah. gets hit by, by anything. Yeah, okay, let's see what, what Param will, will choose. It will be very exciting. Maybe uh, let's have a quick look at uh, Abdul Sato of uh, Kawana, yeah. which is very dull. Sure. Um, <laughs> but... It's actually... I mean, how, how dull is this? Because... Like See, the engine thinks it's not very much, but yeah, yeah Fabi's Fabi's choice here was really quite interesting after Bishop two, and he did it. I thought quite quickly. Let me check the timings because I thought he did it. I think this is a game to part of Carson actually, but Bishop D three or Bishop E two did he play? I cannot remember. This is terrible. Um, oh no, no, C D four he took him twenty one minutes. So after Bishop two, he actually spent a. Okay, long, so, long time deliberating. So he knew he, he knew Bishop D three. Yeah. yeah, and he. Went with a line I really wouldn't have guessed because, like, voluntarily doing this to your structure, yeah, is quite unusual. And uh, I mean, knight of three also definitely deserves some attention. It probably will cost you uh, a pawn on the queen side, but you do get yeah, but a very nice blockading. But but, but I guess it gets yeah. traded. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's... maybe bishop g six just to prevent hook. Yeah, bishop g six even. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, to prevent rook b1, it's hard to see. Uh, how yeah, and the counterplay against the a2 pawn. Knight c6 is next. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. difficult. Hard to believe. Yep. So he's got knight g3, uh, forcing, well, or at least provoking bishop d3 and knight c6. And <clears throat> yeah, and this is just such a weird position. Yeah, such a weird position. Look at this pawn structure. It's a disaster. Look at this pawn structure. As bad as it gets. Um, yeah. So I should unpin one way or another. So mm. castle king e two. Uh, yeah, I think options. I think I'm team I'm team king e two. Yeah, I knew generally king, speaking, king e two. What do we do with black though? Because I, like this looks wrong, right? Agreed. This doesn't look correct. So the choice is we either take. Or we play rook fd8 and we try to play g4 in such a way that doesn't allow the knight to land on d5. Yeah, and now I play some clever, clever move with my, my hook, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, or a3, maybe, is, I yeah, or a3. I, yeah, but in general, it's some, some suffering uh, coming up yeah. for, for Fabi. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not a huge fan of his position. The engine doesn't think it's that bad, but like it's a free roll for, for Nadia back here. Because, like, unsurprisingly, when, when this is your pawn structure, you aren't going to be too optimistic. Yeah, but, 
but it's also some some you know this double points. Let's say this we have we have a Hawken game and we have four against three. This e three f two g two h two against f seven f six h six is very easy to defend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If if we actually uh, get to some kind of a rook ending, uh, this is good. It's not yeah. a problem. It's not mm -hmm. a problem. So. Um, uh, it's also good, very good defensive uh, mm -hmm. chances for 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 Fabi, and and maybe maybe Magnus Carlsen as well. Um, I think he managed to somehow to get. Maybe we should have a look at at Magnus, and yeah, I think he managed sure. to, and, to get uh, uh, to get a game simply. Yeah, and this is what I sort of expected: just some kind of queen a five, and then you go for this plan of uh, ninety seven, and then. If you really have a lot of time, you would maybe even like to play b5, knight b6, bishop b6 to really get a grip on the c4 square. But you normally don't get this much time, so you play knight b6, bishop b6. And uh, another thing that white needs to pay attention to is you would like to preserve the bishop pair, but then you might have to sacrifice on c3, ah. which is probably not something that Vincent would. Uh, That's what he's considering. Okay, okay, yeah. I get it now. Mm -hmm. uh, and... So he has, to, he has to deal with this somehow. Because like if you give if you if you give white one more tempo here to play c three c four white is just massively better, yeah. But you don't have the tempo, yeah. And there is there is some discussion in the Twitch chat uh, on sort of the economics of of white and Zay. I don't know exactly how it works now, but I did play the tournament quite a bit in uh, you know a decade and a half ago. I I played in a bunch so. Uh, uh, the mention of uh, the prizes, which are shared equally on the website, I saw a mention of this. This is just the prize money. And Vike is, I'm guessing, maybe the one final tournament on the circuit where uh, there is more money in appearance fees than, yeah. there is, than there is in prize fund. Yeah, yeah, I fully... Okay, as far and those, as I know... And, and th those never get published. Yeah. Yeah, it's just um, ex except for Ali Aiza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except for for Ali Aiza, um, asking uh, <laughs> some 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 fee. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's very it's very old fashioned and it's very traditional. So they don't they keep the they keep the tradition. Uh, yeah, they like to keep the tradition. It's, it's nice as well to. Um, to of course uh, keep that, um, but yeah, I think I was trying to think about um, another tournament where the Japan's fee is uh, the main uh, prize money, but doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, Gunches Two is uh, clearly uh, only giving prices, and uh, yeah, no, maybe maybe the last one. Yeah. No way chess, maybe. Oh, it's all in the prize fund. Mm -hmm. Maybe no way chess is the same actually. Uh, no, it's uh, different. Like it's all in the price fund. I think all the money is. Uh... Yeah, and uh, on the subject of uh, avoiding all of those night jumps, uh, Winston starts with Bishop G five, which I like quite a quite a, uh, a lot because attacking the pawn on E seven when the queen uh, ventures away from D eight yeah. is a very very standard thing, which is extremely annoying in all kinds of Greenfield positions. And Magnus now has to be. Um, very careful because you you can very very easily drift into positions you will hate quite a bit uh like knight of six already you have to calculate what happens after knight of five yeah that's and and maybe you have to go for some sacrifices like maybe you actually have to play knight d5 bishop d5 queen d5 and just hope that and this somehow forward, works yeah. out yeah and maybe it does maybe it's a draw but like how happy are you to just basically be offering a draw here with like i I don't know, I just go all the way back, I force you to take, I put the bishop on d4. Probably nobody is better, but yeah, I wanted to say if somebody is better, it's white. That's not true. Nobody is better. It's just a very, very level position. So how we do it uh, to protect that um, stupid pawn, I would say, on this effort. I don't know. Actually, it's a very important I pawn. Um, I was looking at some uh, attempts to play kind of a gambit style, but why I not B five? Let's go. Yeah. Let's go B five. Yeah, I B5. think I think the way to do it is to play B five. You should. We are and then good and then do something. I keep on looking at knight C five, yeah, but the too. problem is, I think the, the biggest problem is this move, which is a very very kind of a yeah because E seven is ending at the end. Yeah, sad thing because you you end up just losing the pawn on E seven. Okay, so Bishop B two, and and if I go just E five. Yeah, but you're you just, just castle, worse, yeah. I think. Yeah, the issue is you, you, you can definitely do those things, but like the, the, the outcome is not going to be 
satisfactory because you still have this idiot and your structure yeah. on the queen side is about to come under severe pressure and the bishop on g7 is also not very yeah. alive against this structure so i go in, ah but knight f6 you will get knight e5 and so i like e5, bishop g5 i don't know i don't know what like i i honestly don't know what i like against this maybe you have to but that's just so ugly like i was about to mention oh. the move bishop f6 but it's just so ugly no, we don't I like don't that. Uh, B5, I B5, they, they tell me in the chess and sport chat that uh, B5 is a move according to the computer, which is not a surprise. Uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah because everything else is just less pleasant. But yeah, I still, yeah. you know, for me, I would be worried quite a bit here. I would feel that I need to be very, very quick because otherwise uh, white will just have a free roll. Yeah, P people are saying... Rook e8. Now, I guess if you play a4 here, you do run into knight c5. Okay, so, Gary so played, to... played rook f1. Just an update on the chicken okay. of the week. Okay. Rook f1 is actually the... I thought it was the second best move on my, on my screen after h4. And it's interesting that it's actually e1 and not d1. Actually, because, your computer yeah, doesn't like it at all. I think it's... No, no, it's recovered since then. Ah, okay. Yeah, E1 makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. No, we, we like, I still need to be explained. It needs to be explained. I guess we... I t yeah. Now we go in, yeah? That looks safer than the other one, yeah. Oh, boy. It looks like we are forcing queen takes E6 here. Yeah, but it's game over, no? Yeah, but then, yeah, it's completely game over because, yeah, we, we just take on T4 and go queen C5 check. Oh, that's the simplest. <laughs> yeah, that's just just by far the simplest. Yeah. Okay. Um, interesting. So let's see what it does after OK if you want. What's uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. good. ID seven still. It's the same uh, same story. D five D five is coming. So maybe it takes, but woof. yeah. The, the the only move apparently to sort of get a semi playable position is Bishop D five. Okay, I thought about that. And but this is takes... a. But Place yeah, you're, 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 you're not going to be enjoying this very much because white just gets this. And you have to play some kind of a position like this, which is, I mean, not lost or anything, but clearly quite annoying. No, it's not funny, no. Yeah, just like... 95 is the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. um, and I get this. Uh, it's expawn uh, as a big weakness, of course. Ah, it's, you can defend it, but... Wow, so tough times for, for Gukesh because how to it's difficult to 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 play bishop d5 actually. Yeah, I think it's, it's very simple for white and it's without risk and you are uh, and by the way, I, I want I I want you to really enjoy the answer, by the way. I will give you I will give you three guesses as to what my screen, the other screen, I'm I'm not running it here, but because we keep on discussing this position. Okay, after I will bishop give you d5. three guesses about the best move here. Currently on my screen. <laughs> it's so H4. funny. H4. It is H4. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it yeah. is H4. <laughs> this is this is just like <laughs> comedy. Brilliant <Yeah>. comedy. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. We just give like we just give like a full tempo. Yeah, but when you just... see it actually, oh, no, no knight d7, knight f5 because uh, bishop on yeah. d4 is hanging. And how do you stop this <laughs> stupid knight g5? <yeah? laughs> this is great. I, I'm really enjoying this. And what's I bet knight e g5 is not no knight g5 knight g5 is not knight g5 maybe is even stronger. Yeah, knight yeah. g5 is ah, just okay. straight up winning. But, okay. Okay. Yeah. It was just the engine kind of having fun with me, but. <laughs> yeah. And no, how... I, 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 I think maybe you can actually uh correctly play bishop d5 here just because you you spend a lot of time and you realize just how much trouble you're in. Mm -hmm. And uh you start looking for ways to just straight up not lose immediately. Yeah. Uh yeah. but that would require Gukesh. I mean you would need to invest a lot of time, I think, into all of this to uh, to see just how dangerous the position is because it doesn't look like you're losing yet, maybe. Although... I 
I mean, all of your normal moves actually yeah. do look like yeah. they're losing. So maybe maybe you can actually get there. Let's see. Uh, let's see. And uh, Wesley, it's been a while did, yeah. since we, we didn't see Wesley. Ah, uh, Eric he didn't castle yet. So yeah. Uh, Wesley, Wesley is going to be a bit better. It's not going to be too horrible. But because you still cannot castle yet, we, let's show what happened. Uh, Arjun played bishop e6. F4, as expected, did come. Takes, takes, bishop d6. So the development is being uh, completed by, by black. Finally, c5 takes, takes. And yeah, if you could already castle here, you would be, I think, more or less completely okay. But you still have to invest the tempo in somehow solving the issue of h7 hanging. Mm -hmm. And then so, white probably wants to do something like, I don't know, b3, rook d1, bishop f3, and try to round up this guy on uh, d4. Because if we imagine white just sort of doing nothing for a bit, like if you play... Let's just ignore the fact that bishop b3 exists. Yeah, like we get here, and black gets rook to play, I don't know, rook bg8, rook fa8, rook fe8, bishop d5. Yeah, the king is weak. Yeah, the, with, with, this king king. On, with this king on g1 uh, being as weak as it is, you're never going to have you know, very much of anything at all. But the pawn on d4 is kind of weak, and black has to still spend time, some time solving the development issues. So... So how do you, uh, how you do it uh, exactly? Let's say I go at I, I'm not sure about h6 g6, but yeah, it's always yeah. Uh, Pe uh, yeah, not... chat is saying bishop f3 is a big threat. Just straight ooh, up immediately, ooh, yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Bishop because... f3, rook g8, rook g1, I guess. Yeah, there's no queen e5, of course, because c6 is hanging, which I was yeah, counting yeah. on on queen mm -hmm. e5, queen e3, but no. And we can never really take on a2 because, like, maybe my the, the fact that I was always spending a tempo on b3 just to make sure a2 is not hanging. Actually, it was hanging the previous move. It was, yeah, it was hanging in those positions. That's... But once the rook is on g8, it really isn't hanging yeah. anymore. So yeah, bishop f3 is a very significant, uh, significant idea here. And if you play rook before, oof, that looks very no, but that looks sure. bad. Yeah, like queen d2 or b3 and queen d2. Yeah, it looks like you're not going to be improving your position very much by this. Mm. So you have to be very careful, I guess, with with black here. Whatever solution exists here. <clears throat> is not not going to be immediately obvious. How? Um, yeah, that would be a tough tough defense, especially against Wesley. Was such a good technique. Yeah, tough test for for Egezi. I was doing our, our King's Gambit boy. Oh yeah, let's take a look. Oh, at this, because yeah. as that was so random. Uh, is it still? Oh boy, what what did they do? Okay. Yeah, that, that's that's really weird. So he played knight c3 here instead <laughs> of uh, knight d2. I guess trying to get it over to e2. Uh, Black went in with uh, the counterplay on the side. Oh boy. And now... But once again, it looks like white is sort of one tempo away from completely stabilizing. Like, give me time to play rook hf1, rook hd1, put the king on c1, and we'll be completely winning. So maybe Black had to do... Something faster, right? So you want bishop h3, which looks reasonable. Bishop h3, bishop g3, and yeah, it looks still, it looks completely winning to my eyes for white. Yeah, it's uh, it's not great. Yeah, it's so uh, you don't have bishop g5, which is a big issue. Yeah, it's a very important uh, fact that we control the g5 square. So maybe try to kick the queen away from the fifth rank. Let me try to exchange something. Queen e5. Oh, yeah, you okay to play the... queen f4, yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I hope so. But I was not 100% sure. Yeah, like you have to calculate take, take, all of this take. stuff. Yeah, but I don't yeah. see the follow-up. Or maybe we can continue here, yeah? It's still a bit weird. It's incredibly weird. Bishop c4, maybe bishop here. Wow, b5. Rook d4. Wow, rook d4. Oh. Rook d4, queen c7. <laughs> this is such a strange position. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I wouldn't, if I had this, if this was my game, I really wouldn't know how to, how to assess any of it. Like, I have a, I have a bailout with bishop f7, queen c7, but I don't think I'm better. 
with this king on like i i would actually feel like maybe i'm losing because it's just still king a, king a3 is rook d4 even rook c8 like or rook d4 or like, yeah even rook c8 rook takes c2 like it's just gonna be not a lot of fun um yeah and interestingly i i took a brief look and uh uh, the way the engine was playing this position, it was going actually b6, queen a4, bishop b7. Which is, if you actually manage to spot that this exists, it makes a ton of sense. Because yeah, you, you play it, yeah? Yeah, you attack f3 and you connect rooks. And like if, if, if white continues playing greedily, I think you probably just lose. Because mm -hmm. everything comes out and you never castle either side and f3. Like some position like this, you start feeling like maybe you've lost with white. Amazing. Yeah, but I think it's very difficult just to, you know, to to, to spend the full, the full tempo on b6, bishop, b7. It's hard to criticize uh, Tabatabai for not for not doing this because it feels like you're actually driving pieces to good squares. Like, why is a4 such a poor square? No, queen e4 is a threat. f4 is still hanging. This is not obvious, but it's, you know, the engines do play these positions quite well. And I just I just wanted to point out this one moment because I think what he did is extremely understandable. Like this is, this does look like the counterplay you should be playing for. Uh, but yeah, the the other line was stronger. Let's just briefly maybe take a look at all seven positions in the yeah, in challenges yeah, and take a bit of a break. Yeah, yeah. that's a very good idea. Okay, let's have a look at Supi. We missed a win yesterday against. Uh, I mean, he had a winning position. He missed many wins, but uh, in mm -hmm. winning position against Erwin Lamy. And I think the game ended as we predicted. I think so, yeah. He um, just uh, blundered something, and then it became very risky to play for a win for him. So mm -hmm. he wisely uh, took the draw. Yeah, and, and this today... is not a very exciting position, but, but I do want to, to show something he did on move six here, which or seven, which I don't think I've ever seen. So they got to this position, and he played bishop d5 here. Okay. Which is such a weird move. And also the reaction from Max Farmadam is quite quite interesting because I would just play d6 here. I would I would say I don't really understand what you want from me. And if I don't understand what you want from me, I will just make the most natural move and go from there. But he went through key eight, and then this gives White this tactical opportunity, which is not very much, but also it makes the position so kind of quiet and boring and a little bit better for white that yeah exactly it's very unpleasant actually yeah it's it, it, it's not it's not a lot of fun like the bishop maybe goes to d4 rook e1 rook e3 and you always have to pay attention that you somehow don't blunder your queen side because like if you just miss queen a5 in some moment and you have nobody to protect the a7 pawn could be a big deal. I, I remember yeah there was a uh the structure wasn't exactly like this but there was a kind of a uh, an important game, even in my personal career, even though I was neither of the players playing it. I don't know if you, you probably don't remember, right? Uh, in I think it was the first round of the Baku Grand Prix in 2015. Oof, okay, and uh, game one, uh, Alexander Onishuk beat Karekin with white. Uh huh. And then with black, uh, Karekin did something very strange in the opening, and Onishuk had an immediate equality. And instead, he went for ah, he went for that. some structure where I think maybe this pawn was on b7, like exactly. Yeah, this, I remember exactly yeah, you, this you, structure. You but won, yeah. d5 was maybe on b7, and c7 was always weak. And slowly, 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 he lost that endgame, and then lost the tie break, <laughs> and uh, that kind of started the chain of events, which resulted in the. In it, the it, 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 it was the World Cup, not the Grand Prix. Yeah, the, yeah, 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 the World Cup. Yeah, yeah. The World Cup, yeah, yeah. This yeah, famous. So that was uh, that was round one, yeah, which uh which eventually one, resulted yeah. one month later we played that final, which <laughs> okay. I remember quite quite distinctly. Uh anyway, so Grunfeld in the game between uh Ivic and Sindarov. Uh a kind of a topical Grunfeld, the one we discussed yesterday, but instead of Pin D2, which is what Prague played yesterday against uh Erigaisi, Bishop b5 was chosen by Ivich, which is also a very, very serious move here. And we have a kind of a sharp position on the board now where Ivich played bishop c6. It looks like a blunder of a pawn, but in fact, if you take twice, there's always bishop d6, which will win the exchange. So black has to be careful. Don't know what I think about it. It doesn't look horrible, but often these types of positions are much more dangerous than they look. Kind of a classical uh, Scheveningen. 
on the board. <laughs> in, uh, very, very nice pronunciation. Congratulations. Yes, I'm, I'm sure it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in Vaishali against Donchenko, like a really kind of old school, old school. Yeah. Here. Uh, E5. Yeah, E5 here, which is not something that they do very much, yeah. but I don't think. I have a feeling it's not because of uh, what uh, Vaishali did, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, a very slow Catalan in the game between Adiban and No B3 Berzen. for the Cowboy. Adiban yeah. is going 1B3. It's also he just betrayed everyone. Yeah. Um, okay, so Queen D3, yeah. Yeah, nice. and, and one final game is this game between uh, Elin Roberts and uh, Irvin Lamy, where... Ooh, Erwin has done something really strange because yeah. uh, generally in this types of, uh, I mean, this started as a briar, but by this point, it's a kind of a mix between the briar and just like a classical chigurin with the knight on a good square. You generally do at some point need to start some counter play on the queen side. You play yeah. five and then you normally actually push for uh, b4 and you aim to distract white from whatever white is doing on the king side. And Irvin instead just played a five a four. This is just which means that White is completely free to do whatever she wants to do on the king side. Obviously, it's not going to be very easy to give mate, and black's position remains extremely solid. But like uh, thematically, I don't know what the what the word to use. Like, ideologically, to me, this looks strange because I think. No, I mean, I would never do that ever. I mean, I would try not. I'm... I would try to avoid that. I mean, sometimes you have no choices, but it seems to, to have a choice. Also, the rating difference, if you look at, at the numbers. Is that as well, I mean, yeah. I mean, you have winning chances if your opponent uh, is going to, to overpress or blunder something mm -hmm. when he's trying to mate you. Or she, uh, or mm -hmm. she uh, exactly, she is trying to mate you. But yeah, I mean, that's so sad for Black. Yeah, it's it's a bit of, it's a bit of a curious choice by by yeah. Irving, who also like we we have to also make sure that our viewers understand that Irving knows all this. Yeah, it's not it's not like we're like we're explaining to you things which aren't immediately obvious to him as well. So yeah, I'm 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 curious as to why why he is doing this to himself, but I'm I'm guessing he sort of knows what he's doing. Maybe he understands that uh, Eline is a very ambitious player and it's likely that she will actually press very hard on the king side and this will become uh, a sharp game eventually. And then it doesn't really matter that the queen side is closed. Anyway, people were asking for us to show the Geary position. Ooh, so we'll, we'll just briefly, briefly yeah, show that king and then H8. go on a break. Yeah, so he's gone king h8, which... And let me guess, let me guess. H4. <laughs> H4 is kind of very strong, but knight g5 is already winning, apparently. So how he was, I work? think I think he was trying to stop knight g5, but it actually doesn't stop knight g5. <laughs> amazingly. Because amazingly, this is somehow made. I don't wow. know how easy it is to work out. Like you, you have to realize that this is lost for black. Wow. I and realized said, uh, uh, the way I realized it is because I can read my screen. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> like uh, the um, I don't want to be. To, to be for, for there to be any misunderstanding, I'm only showing these lines because I will switch it off. I mean, it's annoying me. I have I have the engine running on my third screen somewhere. Look at the influence of his second immediately, Anish. After yeah. two games, he's playing for for mate. You know, like sacrificing. Not yet, but he will. He will go ig five. He will go h four. No, why not h four? No, H4 is also very, very strong. Yeah, I mean, H4 but I, I guess, so I guess good. the point, I, I guess the point ah, is that he's trying to make takes and uh, takes and ninety seven and yeah, and now rook six is no longer winning. Yeah, okay. but but yeah, but you probably you're probably kind of busted here anyway, right? Yeah, because F E is just ninety five and bishop d three and poof. yeah, like you you're probably busted anyway. It's uh, so easy. Yeah, but no, so, not so easy, but um, so good, so good. So yeah, if, he, if he finds if he finds knight g five here, he gets I mean, I, sort of additional style points, of course. But uh, yeah, everything is now he'll play h four. Probably, yeah. I think I think it's easier to play h four here than it is to play knight g five, because yeah. as I said, like it's very very easy for you to just stop here and think to yourself, yes, it looks dangerous for black, but I only have two pieces left. Like my yeah. attackers are extremely limited. And if you give black like one tempo to connect stuff to play knight c6, like there is never going to be any mate. 
Oh. No, no, trust me, people. In the chess, chess 24 chat is getting excited. Trust me, people is not going to play knight g5. He's going to play h4, which is also <laughs> a very logical move and uh, in a way safer. I mean, mm. in a way, you don't see what uh, what black is doing because if you miscalculate something in knight e g5, okay, you you gave yeah, you will, gave you away. Will look, <laughs> yeah. You look stupid. Yeah. Yeah, and that's not what uh, Anish uh, exactly likes. Mm -hmm. Um. So we should take um, yeah. Let's I take mean, let's take like, a bit of a break and, and come back and see who is who's guest mark here. Is many correct. many exciting games. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. We will come back shortly. the that confidence uh, plays a few uh, good events stops looking inwards into his own insecurities i like the no expectation part so like that's something that has gotten better because sure it's like not my full-time job it's definitely good for chess in india and now there is olympiad also so there'll be more people following and mm -hmm. taking up chess as professional sport yeah and it's surprisingly Concrete still, no? Like, yeah. he takes d4, good move. This d takes d4, this d takes d5. This line was essential and forced, but uh, also not uh, rocket science to map out. Played the Berlin, which I sort of expected, but I didn't really know what to do against, because in reality, very few people do. When we are playing a, an even game against someone of similar strength to us, usually we need to give something in order to obtain the initiative. Just how shrewd and cunning Ali Reza can be, even with. Uh, very little time. I want to show you a game just to prove that I play these lines that I played against former world number two and a bit of a superstar, Gata Kamsky. take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Silecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Welcome everybody. My name is Jan Pomnishi, former world chess champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable, a very special chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. the
the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses. First of all, I think white goes queen f4, here the move is still queen f5, right? You are following my games, you will see. I play a lot of games. Finally, guys, so much work for just one point. And so much happiness.
Welcome back. And we have breaking news, which are, I think, extremely, extremely bad breaking news for Iran because his nomination, <laughs> his nomination for the foreseeable future is going up in smoke. Yeah. Yeah. This is the current position in the game between uh, Anish Giri and uh, Gukesh. And Gukesh is in a lot of trouble. Yeah, let's face it. Uh, Anish uh, found all the, the, the line, it seems. And yeah, it's uh, dead lost, apparently. So he took only six now. So sacrificing. Yeah, Queen E6 only move seems like because you, allowing that takes G5 just loses you the game faster. There are no good squares for this queen. I guess maybe the most picturesque variation he could have lost by is queen f7. And now we go 9g5, queen h5, and, and we go rook h6. Wow, yeah. that's good, <laughs> And it is, pretty, it is pretty cute, yeah. And uh, and then we just collect everything with checks and and black resigns. So he took on e6 and he took on f3 as expected. And I think, yeah, what you can miss here is the move queen f5. Because I think if you go gf, maybe you can find some way for black to... 97, uh, maybe, yeah. Huh? 97, you, you actually still, no, still yeah. sort of lose, right? Because there's bishop f5 in the end. And you, you can't actually protect this, this knight at all. Even in this position, you still yeah. don't have rook d7. So this, this still loses. But maybe there is some way to stop queen of 5 h3. I don't know if it exists, but I've actually been wondering this myself because I thought gf is a mistake, but I, I can't actually figure out why it's a mistake. You know, like maybe it is, but I don't know why. Yeah, I don't see it. Uh well but queen, and, but, but queen of five, queen of five uh, is just yeah, design. Yeah, it just says rookie eight, but my, my issue with rookie eight is that I really like this might also be lost. Okay, no, no, this with is a, with a pawn to the seven. But maybe really? not, yeah. Maybe, maybe with rook d8. Mm -hmm. Rook d8. I have good combination yeah, yeah. here. Yeah, so rookie eight, and we start chasing this bishop. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So but yeah, but queen, queen f5, f5, queen f5 is very, very strong. And uh, the point is, we're threatening queen h3. I think the engine was showing me the move queen bishop b4 to at least lure the, the queen away from the immediate mating squares. So bishop h5 is just queen takes g5. As simple as yeah, that. I think I think so. Yeah, I think this is just game over because it's hanging and you can't protect it and you cannot move it away. Uh, that's nice, actually. That's very nice. So you, 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 I think you have to play bishop before, but after queen takes e4, your problem is you still don't have good moves. The threat is queen g6, h5. And I guess you can try the same. Yeah, you can try maybe playing rook e8 here. Let me, let me, let, show me how you made me after uh, rook takes d4. Um, I thought just queen f3 is game over. No, not here, maybe. Um, instead of uh, queen f5, rook takes d4. Ah. Ah, no, you have queen f8, bishop f5. Queen f8, bishop f5, queen f7, queen f6. This has to be made, right, eventually. Yeah, this is this is made. Bishop b6, queen f7, queen f8. And eventually it gets to h8 and it's made. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I get my answer here. Uh, uh, yeah. So you, you have to play bishop b4, and I guess you, once again, you have to play rook e8, and you have to try to give it up for, for the bishop. So it's not completely over, actually. Edge four. Yeah, you still, I, you still maybe have to play very precisely. Yeah? H four. Takes takes ninety six. Yeah, but I, I guess ah, edgy, now, yeah. you, you, uh -huh. you, I think you get mated. Uh -huh. Well, not uh -huh. mated, but like I continue trying to attack the king more than anything else. Yeah. But like Mission honestly, takes yeah, yeah, this is not that clear. Yeah, like some position like this. Yeah, everything is under is protected. Try to set up some kind of a defensive perimeter. The game is still not not over by, no. by any stretch. Yeah. So and first yeah. he has to find. Okay, so he saw Queen F five exist because uh, yeah, of course, he started yeah. to think. Um. But not that easy. Yeah. So let no. let uh, one more time. Uh, Queen F five, Bishop E four. Yeah, this thing no longer works because we have a, yeah. we have a knight on b8. Yeah, in this position, we, we actually do have rook d7. Very, very importantly. So it's pretty much forced, yeah? Yeah, you queen have takes, to take. Uh, and here eight. you have a choice. Yeah, that you can try queen takes b7, but I'm very worried I will blunder something like queen c6, rook c, knight 6, rook c8. Yeah, ooh, and, ooh. and, you know, you might have to resign with white suddenly. 
No, no, Queen's eight, Queen's eight. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Uh, Queen takes eight. I, I'm not sure. I was okay. So knight a six maybe. But is that a draw? Queen c eight. I was wondering. You know, I have different. Uh... <laughs> uh... Yeah, good, good point. Yeah, this might be a draw. This might be a draw. Yeah, this is a the, yeah. Yeah, this might be. A draw. Maybe we will have to go before, but yeah, still. Instead of B3, I guess. Oh, yeah, you have but... to go. Of course, you have to go before. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, um, yeah, this is maybe less of a draw now. Yeah. Because the other one I thought was just a dead draw. This might not be such an easy draw, but we're getting very simple. carried away. Let's, let's wait yeah. for, for Anish to, uh, to settle on something. Let's take a look at some other positions. Okay. Let's, let's have a look at what yeah. champion. So uh, here, okay. uh, yeah, White obviously has a bit of an advantage, but, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to switch. Um, so what happened was he did play king e2, uh, five e2, played rook a3, and they traded b6 for a2. So if we just continue giving checks, I'm guessing the king goes here, and then we go bishop c2, right? And after knight a5, we will figure out some way not to offer a draw. And uh, one one question: uh, if mm -hmm. if you go rook a1, rook b1, uh, I'll show. Oh yeah, yeah, that is yeah. I'm sorry, is yeah, it a uh, I mean, I'm blanking takes, on this. Takes, takes, is it yeah. a draw? Oh, how is it? After? I think if I could, actually, yeah, I'm not sure how, how comfortable this is because. Because king f8, bishop a2 is a bit of mm -hmm. a problem. Yeah, exactly. You cannot, yeah, yeah. You, cannot, you cannot bring the king immediately and now I'm first to reach d4, but still. Yeah, how? But e4, what maybe. Is this? Yeah, e4 somewhere. Yeah, I would, I would not. Like I would try not to play this with black because I think it's one of those positions where you know if it turns out it's lost, it's just completely lost, mm -hmm. and uh, y y there is no turning back. Like if if this is your choice, and it turns out you're wrong about this this being salvageable, you just lose very boringly. It will might take a long time, but you just lose. Like you four here, yeah. and this is not you know, present. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Uh, like this is your one choice. Which looks horrible, and the other choice is maybe even worse, which is king d6, e d5. Actually, maybe king 6 and d5, and you don't take. Yeah, maybe this is how you try but to hold it. Like I, I had the funny, funny idea of uh, fortress. Let's say I go, I go, I take on e4, you go king e4, and I put, I go king e8, you go king d4, I go b6. And you know, it's, it's, it's the king oh, yeah. cannot, cannot, ah, it can. Yeah, the weaknesses on, like in particular, the weakness on f7 yeah, is just yeah, so yeah. annoying in every single position. Yeah. But in general, this is not the most exciting game of the round. So no. let's, we've updated the viewers. So let's take a look at Ding's game. I really don't like what he's done. And also, I, I was going to say that even before I saw what the engine is showing, but this is very strange. So after Bishop a7, he's, but maybe there is just nothing better by this point. He's gone f takes g7, queen f6, queen d5. Which I assume means that he is planning to just take on f7 twice here. But you are worse if you do that. The question is how much worse? Yeah, because the bishops are fantastic. Yeah, the bishop okay. are the bishops are just so strong. Like this endgame is extremely, extremely dangerous for white. Okay. That's quite a turnaround, actually. Oh, Ding is spent a lot of time on on the previous moves and couldn't find a way mm -hmm. to really get uh, an edge or even get a decent position. Yeah, and King G7 is a minimum, I guess. Uh, does does Knight D8 makes? Yeah, you can you can go Knight D8. I guess he wants to put it on H5, I suppose, right? Is that a good idea to keep the queens on the board? It's hard to say. Let's yeah, this is King seven, seven take with the knight. Yeah, I actually like this quite a bit as well. Yeah, we're also opening this bishop. We're bringing the knight closer to the action. Yeah, I, I don't hate this at all. Yeah, are we missing something clever here? Like maybe five? Because I have this kind of wow, funny, funny trick. Yeah, this is beautiful. This is cute. I have, but the, the my problem is like it's cute, but it does nothing, right? Like d five is still completely safe. I think queen e five and five can use king g seven and just. What have yeah. I achieved with white? Like, no, no, not I've just opened opened the bishops some more. They're they're even more scary now. So apparently, Max Zulu has a pleasant choice now. Mm -hmm. Simply, 
Okay. Looks like it, yeah. Uh, in the meantime, yeah, Magnus got fantastic. A very, uh, yeah, I mean, very nice Grunfeld. Uh, yeah, just a very nice Grunfeld. So he did play B5, he did play Rook E8, as we were sort of expecting, and, and like B6. B6 yeah. Ah, yeah, I'm eight, not four. sure how I feel about the movie four here, but I also don't know what else to do because we're not in time to play a four, as far as I can see. And then, yeah, it's it's unclear where our pieces are supposed to go. Yeah, if four just bishop e six, right? Mm -hmm. And then probably with the yeah, and take yeah. And uh, Winston has just played d five, which is a very committal choice as well. The bishop will. I was going to say drop back, but actually, bishop yeah. d4 is not stupid. Because one way white definitely wants to play these types of positions is to get, like, somehow go like rook d1 and put the pawn on e5. And with respect to those plans, having an additional way to control the e5 square That's by good. keeping an eye on the f3 bishop is often not stupid. But I don't know if bishop d7 is a mistake. Bishop d7 also looks very playable. Like rook a c1, and then I don't know, knight a4, or queen a4, or just a waiting move, or even e6 and, maybe in some position. And bishop g4 is played. It looks... yeah, bishop g4 played very quickly, yeah. No, I thought it was uh, a decent idea. So rook a c1, and now. Do we go c4? Yeah, or exactly. There's a very ambitious way of playing these positions, which is c5. But c4. you give you give the, the d4 square. That's... Mm -hmm. Well, you, you, can, you can do it this way. Yeah, but that's. Um, but this is very sharp, yeah, because yeah, I don't uh, think it. White will play something like Bishop G4 yeah. and then start pushing for uh, his own play. No, I don't like giving up that Bishop so so easily. Uh, and what Knight A4 is a move. Knight A4, you yeah, absolutely, yeah. Move? I'm Sif. guessing you have to drop this back. And now we can play c4, I guess. Yeah. yeah, now we can play c4. Knight d4 takes, takes. Oh, h3? I don't know. Yeah, yeah h3. We, I think we're just quite happy to going into this. And then e6. Mm -hmm. Bishop d2 played by mm -hmm. Vincent Kamer, some prophylactic uh, move. Okay. But now I'm curious, maybe even the immediately e6 is quite strong. Yeah, this is shaping up to be a very, very nice position for my yeah. hands. So e6, uh, if I go. D6, but yeah, it feels that's I mean, you might just lost. lose it, like maybe even sort of immediately. Yeah, knight c4 is good here, no? Knight, yeah, knight c4 is even uh, stronger, yeah. maybe. Knight c4, e5, and just rook a d8 and start collecting. I mean, you kind of have to pay attention to bishop g5, but and bishop c6 as well. And yeah. bishop c6, yeah, which is why I wanted to start. Yeah, this. yeah, uh, this is more clever, yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, very often this pawn just falls. If it's not immediately supported by five, very, very often it just gets picked up. And then black is sort of fully in control. So Magnus is doing well. Uh, Wesley against uh, Arjun. Apparently white is much better. So I, I guess there is some kind of a clever solution here. To take the, the pawn for free, yeah? Yeah, black obviously wants to play rook c4, but... I mean, if we really need to, we can start with b3. And you, we still can't castle as black, which is... But also, uh, yeah, can we just go bishop f3 here and kind of calculate for a bit? Rook c4, I don't know, queen d2. But I guess now you castle. You wait for me to take with the yeah. rook, and then you take on c5. My idea was that if you take with the, if you take on c5 immediately after queen takes d4, you're probably kind of lost because everything is hanging. Mm -hmm. But you can, of course, start with castling. Yeah, and I don't like Bishop Bishop F three because you still have to spare a tempo mm -hmm. on uh, to spend a tempo on on castling. So I, I would B3, favor I guess, yeah B three yeah B three B three is nice. And the, an important detail here is that if you play A four, first of all, even B A is not that yeah. stupid, but also Queen D two is just going to be very very painful in every single position here because there is no way to support it. So you start to. losing material immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you do after B three? You have to spend the. I don't know. Yeah, it's G6, looks... H6, whatever. Yeah, and then now we can maybe. And now Bishop F3. Yeah? Just go Bishop F3 and just win this pawn for, for free. It seems. Okay. Nice position for for. Yeah, oh, and uh... in our Petrov, uh, yeah, Jordan actually kind of decided to not gamble. Played Queen takes C8 on move 15, and this is what I was talking about. He's going to be fine. 
there is always, I think, enough compensation to not really worry not, not too much. But yeah, but you cannot be better with white. Like there is no way you're ever better. Black has like takes takes ninety six. You still have to be a little bit careful with white, I suspect. But yeah, you also yeah yeah. Gen generally, this always kind of comes out to, to yeah, some kind yeah, of a draw. Yeah, it's some a kind it's of a draw. draw. Maybe you don't even put it on a six because rookie seven is a bit annoying. Maybe you choose a smart like, square of some sort. I'm not maybe seven. Yeah, but not maybe seven rook d seven is also not very not ideal, pleasant. Yeah, yeah not very uh -huh. pleasant. That's all. So yeah, I mean Jordan is completely fine, but yeah, it will be a draw. I be, guess mo most likely will be a draw. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you go c six and then knight a four or something, or c six and b five. Or maybe yeah, maybe this is the way to like immediately solve all of our issues. Yeah, c six like rook d somewhere. As long as we don't blunder rook b5, but I don't think we are blundering anything here. Mm -hmm. So rook somewhere, and we just go b5 here. We, we claim that white has to take on c5, and then win the pawn on c4, and then somebody will offer yeah. a draw. Not the most exciting position ever. That's uh, absolutely uh, true. Um, let's So the most exciting, talking about excitement, uh, Anish. Yeah. Wow. As usual. Thank for, for, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, you are a hater as well. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, he has no, he has a style. I mean, like, I, I've, I'm not complaining about about his style. I have the same style, so except that, <laughs> yes. Uh, no, and he, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of. Uh, I like his style actually. It's pretty. I didn't style. address it seriously when this this comment uh, uh, appeared in our in our chat, but like, if if we have to talk to talk seriously about this for. Like three seconds. I've been a fan of Anishis for for a, a very very long time. I think he gets uh, a lot of very by this point very unfair criticism. I don't think he is you know in any way more boring than any of the top chess players, and maybe actually less. I think he is playing very fighting chess, and uh, uh, he is his like earlier reputation. It seems no, like he's just. I think he's will will have to live with it forever, and it feels it feels unfair because really there is for many years now there is just no call for for any of the you know uh, draw jokes that he still gets in abundance. Well, uh, okay, <laughs> I, will, I will disagree a little. Uh, let's say it, it doesn't have the style. First of all, it doesn't have a style where he's trying to mate people in general. He's trying to. Guy in some end games, he has a very classical style, but okay, anyone can play. Uh, how I mean, it doesn't have the style of Nepo or Mamedyaov, but of course, no, no, not a lot of people can claim that. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a difficult, difficult thing to do to play. Like. I, I would say that sometimes he has this, he's very, he's, tight, he's fighting, that's for sure, but sometimes he, he adds this habit, maybe a bit less now, to take the, the less, uh, the less uh, risky decision at some point in the game. And um, when but you don't again, take risk uh, against such people, uh, it's difficult to win. But that's uh... yeah. But you know, I in particular feel like you like if I if I were to support you in this direction, I would feel incredibly hypocritical because like you are describing me. Only he is nowhere near as bad as me in this respect. Like you, like he, this is just a portrait of me for a vast majority ah. of my career. And uh, I think he is doing much better than I was when this was a like a very very large problem in my play. So yeah, like I feel like it, at least for me, it's impossible to participate in this in this conversation from this direction okay, because I would just... I would feel wow. it's unfair. No, it's also um, with with Wesley. I think Wesley uh, is, is a top player, amazing player. But sometimes you know uh, you feel that. Is not uh, is not taking enough uh, risk. Let's say uh, that uh, he, yeah, he, he, he wants it to be too safe, and it's really a pity because I think Wesley, mm -hmm. if he would just forget about that, sometimes it would be it would be much. Uh, it would be maybe fifty points. Yeah, I, I think in a way it's it's sort of more justifiable to talk in those you know in those terms about Wesley than it is to uh, about Anish. Yeah, I, I would agree with that because yeah, Wesley. Uh, like there was this period, which is by this point some time ago, right? It was like maybe 2016 ish, 2017 maybe, where he was just winning tournaments 
left, yeah. right, and center, and like cruising and crushing. Uh, and then he just became, I don't know exactly what happened. I don't know. Maybe the, like the Berlin cannabis experience kind of scarred him or something. I, I have no idea. Wesley is a very difficult person for me to, to read. Uh, but he's become this extremely pragmatic, extremely kind of risk averse player. And in, in, in recent years, he still has very good results. Like he keeps on either winning or coming second in the Grand Chess Tour, for instance, uh, which is a, an unbelievable field of players where of course. Like, like it's basically like the top 10 minus maybe one person every year. And he like he wins every second one. And like if he finishes second, he finishes second behind Magnus or something. <laughs> and uh, he is still an unbelievably strong player. And it's yeah. in a oh, way, yes. it's just, it's actually kind of sad, yeah. How okay. how he limits his own he limits his own chess, I think. Yeah, by playing. Yeah, no, it's, playing. yeah it's weird. To, it's weird to talk. Uh, I mean, I fully agree. And he's twenty seven sixty still, mm -hmm. and he was twenty eight hundred. And uh, we feel that he has this potential to become, uh, let's say, a world championship challenger. I think absolutely. If he, yeah. if, he, if he wouldn't get a match in his career. I mean, that would be a pity. I would feel it would, it would very and, much be, yeah. And it's, it's not it's, taking that direction actually. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, so far he didn't get the chance, and I don't know if he will get it because, uh, uh, well, time is uh, ticking. So yeah, and, and yeah, and we, people are saying please stop bullying Anish, and maybe somebody will now say please stop bullying bullying Wesley. But we're we're saying these things, yeah, exactly we, uh, from from a position of a yeah. chess fan. It just feels like we're not getting we're not getting the most and they're not getting the most out of their talent. And like Wesley exactly. is, Wesley is an exactly. unbelievably gifted chess player. Yeah. When, when Wesley is playing well, it's, it's scary to watch. No. And I think at some point he just decided that not losing is more important for him than winning. And he kind of geared his game towards making sure that he doesn't lose very many games. And that I think, resulted in him winning much less than uh than he otherwise would have done yeah so let's let's get back i fully mm -hmm. agree with you and uh yeah it's more that we we are just um let's say what we were hoping for more as chess fans mm -hmm. simply because this guy is yeah. so good e6 played by uh so anish is still thinking yeah he's still thinking Welcome. he actually Caught up almost exactly with Gukesh uh, on on the clock. There's only a five minute difference, so that sequence, like until he started thinking after Bishop B6, he was one hour ahead, and that was uh, five moves ago. So in those five moves, he basically spent an hour more than than Gukesh. So Gukesh has been thinking almost exclusively on Anisha's on Anisha's time for. Uh, for a while now. What, his what, position what, is his position what is, was the line? Huh? Just, just one minute. Uh, queen if Queen F five Bishop B four takes takes Rook D four Queen F three, right? Yeah, I think Rook D four Queen F three were dead. Yeah, because we can't really stop either this or this. G four. But we've 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 ah, gone queen through B this, right? We've this ah. You have no, to six King G five now. No, it's not it's a bit different. Ah, it's yeah, a... it is different. Yeah, yeah. Hang on. But maybe you can just go G three, and I'm screwed. Um, oh, because now, yeah, nothing moves. Yeah, I can just spend yeah. some time. Yeah, oh, the eight, though, but queen f7. Poof. I don't know. Hang weak. on a second. So, are there better squares? I guess I'm not. The three, the three does look what like I a... like. <laughs> three g4. Pod change. I, I have a threat. Um, yeah, I think check is correct. I think this check is correct, and we have to think here. Yeah. King f1 but, or g3 or something. Yeah. And probably it's... Yeah, because g3, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about this. Because if we don't have immediate mate, I don't think we have immediate mate, this is a bit of a threat. Yeah. Which is why I'm suggesting king f1. Yeah, that's why Anish is thinking. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. not, uh, it's not that easy. Uh, that's for sure. King f1, can yeah, I go... And, uh, I, I think chat actually has the right solution. Okay, f4. Uh, okay. The, okay, the, okay. the right okay. solution here is this. Yeah, but this is very difficult. Yeah, because we are freeing up space to play queen f5, and we're also stopping rook d2 because now it loses the rook. 
Jánor, szó kunyát sejt kunyzek, és szóval melyés ott hát. Bishop C2 is the right solution, but it's not easy to see from, from, from a long far. way away. <clears throat> yeah, from a long way away, this is not obvious at all. Um, yeah, and it looks, yeah. okay, it looks completely winning actually. Yeah, so thanks it to is... Half Dinosaur for, for this, because yeah, we were missing it. Okay, Ooh. we'll see what uh, it comes up with, but... Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I've, yeah, and this has been suggested a bunch of times in chat, and I was also sort of half seriously thinking about it all the time, this move G5, because it solves the problem, at least the immediate problem, of not losing the pawn on G4. Yeah, but... But it does such things to your structure, yeah? Like, we go rook f2, I suppose, yeah? What's next, h5? And then we... Uh, h5 or h6, I don't know. How, how all in do you want to go? Well, I think we are all in already, no? Okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah. But mm. yeah, it 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 adds some queen d2 ideas with g5 mm -hmm. banging, so I'm not sure h5 is a good... Uh, is a, um... Yeah, I thought basically that what will happen is I will play bishop f5, I will get the bishops off the board, and then I will give mate to this king on e8, because the, like there will be so many weaknesses around it that it just is over. But now I think about it, I, I can't figure out how to refute bishop d5. Just trying to find one tempo to play queen e5 somewhere. And then the position will not look so hard. Like if the queen actually lands on e5, it will yeah, not look true. it will not look completely lost. And he played rook f3, was that? Okay. Okay. What does he want? I, this yeah, I wonder what I guess yeah. maybe he wants to switch to as winning, simple winning as it from that. the other direction. Ah, yeah. You know, a3 is also a threat, right? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very protecting clever. Protecting b3. He's, he's protecting b3. Yeah, this is very clever by Wesley. If you play something like this, we can just go a3 and just take on d4 next move. And then, yeah, like if, if this pawn gets taken off the board, <clears throat> everything collapses because rook lands on d6. So there will be never any counterplay on the king's side to compensate for that. This is clever. This is very clever. Okay. Um, and what do you do here as black? You're just, yeah. I don't know. I think you're just in a lot of trouble. I keep on returning to the idea of playing queen e5, just giving up on c6 and trying to play rook c8 next. But yeah, I have zero belief in this. Yeah, I understand. It might be the best choice. I, like, I, It wouldn't be a complete shock to me if this turned out to be maybe the best practical choice. But even let's say something very simple, just play, play it back with the pawn on c6. Why should this be enough for a pawn? No, it's not. Yeah, it just doesn't doesn't really look like it's anywhere near enough. Eventually, Bishop five will happen, and the, the whole thing will collapse. Uh, people are asking about this end game and asking if Ding, is Ding practically better in this position. So he played um, e five and uh, he, he yeah. played e five, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's actually opening up so the bishops, but mm -hmm. opening up your hooks as well, mm -hmm. uh, which which is uh, obviously very nice, and the bishops. Uh, yeah, if you play g4, actually, they can be a bit out. You can't go yeah, to a fate and, uh, with uh, king Parham is on reacted, Yeah, Parham reacted in the most natural fashion, which is just go rook g4, rook g8, provoke g4, but g4 is really not that horrible. And now we want to go rook, like rook e1, rook f5, check, maybe bring the king up to g3. If, uh, if a pair of rooks comes off the board, I think white is better. But obviously black has but no... How? No oh, desire. So bishop on a7, actually. Yeah, like exactly. If, if it was on d6, yeah. If it was on d6, I would be picking black. But it's on a7, and we're controlling the c5 square all the time. So it's difficult to. So how do you do it? To include it in the game. I thought rook d8, d2, but the problem is, I think we can do this. And rook d2, we can give a check from a5, and we have at least a perpetual and probably more. Mm hmm. Yeah, because protecting f2 and protecting f2, and there. then we can activate the second rook. Yeah, so it does not. Actually, you lose. You lose here. No? You probably just lose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I not immediately because I don't think you can take on c7, yeah. right? Why not? Ah, okay, 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 okay. Render that. Oof. Yeah, that would be that would be painful. But yeah, I mean, it's a it's a free roll again for white. Like you can you can find a good move here. You know, just just play before here. Ask for a move. Um, yeah, the so checks are nothing. Yeah, yeah, the checks are only improving White's case because, like, I, yeah. I would very much like to have my king on h4 here. To be honest, uh -huh. it's doing quite well there. Um, 
So yeah, maybe maybe like the answer sort of surprised me a little bit when I saw it in chat. But the more I look at this position, the more I think that it's probably yeah. just easier to play with white. Why? Because your your ideas with white here are sort of extremely transparent and extremely kind of easy to understand. You want to connect the rooks. You want probably one of them on a five, the other one on the e file, and eventually you want to start pushing your majority on the king side. Yeah, it's black. Like for black, you yeah, you you are solving some immediate problems. Breaking news: Zanish Gay played Queen F5 in the game of the day. Obviously, the game of the day today. Mm -hmm. Bishop E4 came instantly. By instantly, uh, yeah. Gukesh has worked all of this out. So the big yeah, test will come. The big the test board. will come next move, I think. Yeah. So Queen first of all, first of all, does Gukesh take one D4 or does he go Rook E8? Uh, and we think that rook d4 loses specifically to this sequence, ending, I think, specifically in the move bishop c2. And I, I think after rook e8, the best move is h4. But I don't think it's very difficult. I think but we didn't... sort of solving, solving your back rank issues while also creating additional threats on the king side is logical. Did we decide that it was no, winning for no, white? No, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. We didn't. Let's have a look. It's the most exciting game, that's for sure. And here we thought, okay, um, it's not that easy. It's not no, that over. No, no, no. I mean, white is, of course, never in like running any risks at all. But let's say before a6, you go. Maybe you can go gif. But maybe not. Yeah, I was wondering about rook f8 as well. Yeah. But the problem is, I am very worried I might have to resign in some position like this, right? Mm -hmm. Because the moment these pieces lose coordination, you probably drop some of them. I don't see how, but this is how it feels to me. Like some position like this, and suddenly the mating threats just become, ah, I've blundered the queen. Yeah. <laughs> but why not to G3? Ah, oh, no, no, G3. Yeah, G3 exists. G3 exists. Ah, after bishop D4, yeah, this is very, ah, this is extremely important. Chat is once again being very much on point. Ah. Oh boy! That's, yeah, thank you, uh, thank you for that, uh, guys. Uh, yeah, I completely yeah. missed it. Wow, your guy on Twitch have good. Mm. Ah, really good. And by the way, I want to sort of pat myself on the back here. Ah, okay. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. it's bad. It, it, it's bad. I'm not saying it's going to save him the game or anything, but. <laughs> He did That's go the best for practical it. Chance, yeah. He did go for it. And by the way, I think we have one result. I think uh, Prague has yeah. drawn his game against. Yeah, of Le course. Bon yeah, that was. Let's his show this Spanish. for a second. Yeah. And it's interesting because honestly, I wasn't very happy with uh, the final move that Prague made there. So we left it somewhere here. Prague instead of my move G six just played Rook F E eight, Bishop H four, A four H six, and in this position. Uh, <clears throat> He made a very, very good decision. I guess he prepared it by playing h6. He just entered this endgame, which might look like it could be a bit risky. But he saw correctly that in this position, he can play, I guess, both b4 and d4 are playable. And he chose d4. And this is where uh, we kind of left off. And I became a bit worried about the position after c takes d4. I wasn't sure what the plan was. I thought maybe rook b3. Ah. And then something ah. like king e2, king g3, right? And we try to, to push with our much more active king. But I guess there is something wrong with this calculation. I don't know. Maybe rook d3 first or rook g3 I, first. Yeah, I thought about rook g3, but takes on b5. Rook g4, yeah, rook, d5. Rook d5. What? Like oh, yeah, how, rook d5. How easy yeah. of a draw is this? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, just uh, so it's very, very curious to me that Levon, instead of all of that, just went King G2 and offered a draw. So Levon clearly did not see a single winning chance for, for himself in any of those lines, but I kind of wonder why. Because, like, none of those lines look like okay. I see B, I go, I, I, I go B3. Yeah, but okay. I think you're right about the, the risk part. King, King E2, no. I, I take and I will bring I will go G2 and bring the king, yeah. King F7. I don't know if I should start with King F7. When you go D5, I go King F7. Just King E8, yeah. 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 Um, no, it, 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 but it probably, probably uh, 
quite safe, but also like why why not ask a, an additional question somewhere? That's true. But anyway, this this game was drawn, so a very nice uh, kind of comfortable draw with Black in the open Spanish for for Prague. Uh, solid start to the tournament for for the young man. Indeed, and for Levon as well. Yeah, um, for sure. How is doing Magnus Carlsen? Uh, triple world champion think, uh, Magnus yeah, I Carlsen. I think he's doing. I think he's doing really well. I think oh, this boy. is. Yeah, this is a dream Grunfeld by this point, like an absolute dream Grunfeld. Uh, you generally like there's this really quirky line in uh, that I think Ruslan Ponomaryev maybe was one of the earliest people who did this. There's this line. Uh, no, I think uh, this is the move order, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where basically at least one of the ways to play it would be to castle, play g5, queen d6. Knight and then after knight of three, the idea is to play bishop g4. Let's say bishop b2, knight d7. And very often you are actually trying to do this. And then b5, knight c5, and then e6. Uh, but what Magnus is getting in the game is like a this but on steroids. Like very, very, very far advanced in terms of tempi. Because white is not going to get... Uh, white is not going to get uh, anything going. Yeah. Uh, on the king side, like eventually, I guess you have to take on e6. We take with the rook, I suppose. And we want exactly. to play knight a4. We want to play rook a8. There is already we dealt with the pawn pair in the center, which is never going to move forward. There is actually pressure against the e4 pawn. There is always pressure against the c3 pawn. Yeah, this yeah, is going to be. Yeah, this is going to go quite poorly, I think, for for Winston. Yeah, and it can be as well very fast. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you have to be very careful here as 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 well. Yeah, I think yeah. I think you have, to, you have to go ninety four. You have to go ninety four, bishop two ninety two, and try to get some kind of f three knight of four. But even that, like rook d eight here, I think you're you're just much worse. Okay. Yeah, he's also a bit behind. I mean, not a lot, but a bit behind on the clock. And yeah, Magnus Magnus will be okay here. Enjoying precisely here, I maybe have knight d four. But yeah. Oh, yeah, so, I, yeah, I, I did, I did that... blunder this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we to... play slightly more precisely. Yeah. yeah, but should be should be possible to find the move. Yeah. yeah. So he took on e6, obviously. Yeah, what else can you do? What else can you do? I don't think there is much of an argument for this because it allows knight d4 and he... I mean, even this position, I probably if I have to pick, I pick black, but it feels like we're giving white a little bit too much. F4, E5, yeah. yeah. F4. I mean, you do have Maybe some B4 tactics, but they become very uh -huh. unclear. Actually, it doesn't work. Yeah, I can take it through. Yeah, good point. Yeah, and I mean, if, if White actually gets a 4 and E5 in, it becomes extremely unclear. So, yeah, I don't think this is happening. I think Rook takes happens. Knight E4? What else? Yeah, and I, I think you actually prefer having a Knight to having the Bishop there. Like, I, I, I would generally prefer a Knight E4 to this position. I think this position might just straight up be lost. Because let's say you go, I don't know, rook bc1, I go knight c5, I go rook a8. Yeah. Oh, you this type go... of position just collapses, I think, because yeah. the pawn on e4 is just so weak and everything is weak. Ah, you want to take. Ah, it's funny because I wanted to take c3. Let's say I wanted to play rook d8. And or rook d8, d8 or rook d8 g3 as well. Yeah. yeah. Rook d8, or rook that. d3, maybe, or rook e d6. I didn't mm -hmm. see rook d3. Yeah. I yeah, took for sure. so good. So good for black. But yeah, so knight d4, bishop e2, uh, rook e6 is played. Knight d4 will be played. I yeah, think. I think you have to play knight d4. I think it should be 292, and now it's you have to be precise here. It's yeah, you have to stop knight d4 from coming back. Yeah. How about queen a4? Let's be let's be chicken. <laughs> yeah, I saw that, but it it's feels like you're much. kind of you're giving a little bit of hope here to white, right? Like, whoops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Rookie one, king of one, and then maybe I can get I double. Three. Yeah, but like, how one. are you winning? Ah, okay. How are you winning? No, I didn't see King of One. And now I, you know, give me a tempo, and I will, I will feel like I have very decent drawing chances, right? Like, I don't give you a tempo. No, I should have played King uh, Rookie Eight. King of One was was stupid. Rook D Eight, maybe. Mm -hmm. And where do you go? And C three is hanging, but of course, maybe it's not. Yeah. No, this is this I, is still very very unpleasant for sure. But yeah. I give you, I give you better chances. Yeah, to save the day. Yeah, that's mm. for sure. 
I guess he would find something uh, more, let's say, more challenging for for um, for Vincent Kamer, who is in trouble mm-hmm. against world champion Magnus Carlsen. Um, ah, Anish, thinking after Bishop E4. Uh-huh. What is the other choice? Uh, yeah, that's I was about to to ask. Yeah, him. like the like, what exactly is your other choice here, Anish? I really don't understand. Like, if you allow Bishop H7, you're not going to be able to win the material back. This is very weird. Yeah, chat says Queen H3 only other move. Ah, I guess. Ah, this is kind of clever. Yeah, you can you can continue this line, <laughs> which is something I did not realize. Because I have uh-huh. queen c8 check, and queen takes b7, and queen takes a8. But, you know, some kind of a position like this, you might not win, right? Yeah, it's funny. How many pawns? It's, it's four pawns, but still. You will you will drop some. I think the d pawn basically never it's, survives. Yeah. And Everything then else probably survives. Okay. But yeah, the d pawn the never survives. Yeah, look Let's at see. Magnus. Yeah, I like this. Magnus says, you have a threat. I will respect your threat. <laughs> knight so d4, knight d4, I will just anyway. put it back. And then I will oh. play queen a4. Okay. That's... And I will win this endgame. Yeah, uh, what this... can I say? It's yeah. well played. <laughs> yeah, this is nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is you, nice. You have a threat. It's a legitimate yeah, yeah, threat. Yeah. I, will, yeah. I will treat it with the respect it deserves. And fast. You know, quickly mm. just yeah, yeah. yeah, protect the pawn and preparing for the end game, which I guess let's say you play f3, I go queen a4, you take take. No, I think just... you have to play f3 and you have to play like queen c1 or queen. Yeah, but you take take the end game is just lost or yeah, end game is end game is completely lost, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. 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 End game is okay. completely lost. So you have yeah. to keep the queens on. And honestly, specifically yeah. this position, it's not that clear. Like I want to play rook f2, maybe bishop h6. Uh, this is a very nice piece. So maybe Queen A4 is a bit uh, too too hasty, actually. Mm-hmm. Let's start with I don't know Rook. Can we even go Rook A G8? Knight A4 is a move. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I don't know. Maybe to it hits a Queen. You know, let's say if I play Queen B6, ah, Queen B6 will be a bad blunder because of Queen A4. Ah, yeah, that's true. It does not. Um... But let's say Queen Rook eighty eight. Ah no, Queen C seven. There is always there is always the yeah, yeah. this. Yeah, I mean choice, Black is yeah. better, but maybe Black isn't as winning as we thought. But Black is always going to be a bit better, at least a little bit better, and maybe a lot better because eventually this yeah. knight comes over to D three. Actually, it could come right away. Mm-hmm. Maybe instead of yeah. Queen C seven, and, maybe uh, it was a bit stupid. Yeah, Anisha's game. He finally took on e4, and Gukesh instantly played rook takes d4. And now I think that line that we already showed like, okay, a okay, is just okay. winning. So okay, but it's... one final trick for Anisha is to find bishop c2. I think queen f3 is very very obvious because if you give black time to play knight c6, you might regret it dearly. So you have to create two threats, not one. Now g4 looks like absolutely the only move because in this position you need to have the g5 square for the king. I'm disappointed by Gukesh. Um, Rook e8. It's a pity. Rook e8 was a much better tie. I think so. But maybe after h4, you're still kind of losing, right? Because even yeah, that, the even that, is... if in that position you can't play bishop takes d4, then you. Why, why not? Why? Before a6. Before a6. No, the, no, nobody plays before. Once again, yeah, this just wins, right? And if I go Rook d8 instead? Instead of taking on d4, you just go d5, yeah? Yeah, now now I combine, like, d pawn survives, and if you play knight d4, then, whoops, sorry, okay. I mean, yeah. yeah, like, check and check and g6. And... I, have, I don't have the, 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 the bishop. Yeah, it's very important to have the Yeah, it's very important to have the bishop. Of course, so I, I, I apologize to, to Mr. Gukesh. Uh, okay, who takes d4? Uh, okay, anyway, in a bad position, in a lost position, mm-hmm. uh, it's difficult to come up with good moves. Yeah, so they will get here, and Anish will have to find bishop c2, but I think he will. I think he will. Uh, because he will... I mean, Gukesh is sort of doing the right thing in trying to sort of, quote-unquote, pressure him on the clock. Yeah. But he still has 20 minutes. So I assume he will play queen, queen of three quickly, because once again, there really isn't any choice. Rook d1 is a threat, and queen e2 is just strictly worse than queen of three, because you're not threatening queen yeah. of eight, mate. So you always play queen of three. 
in this position, I think you pretty much always play queen f8 check because if you take on g4 and allow once again knight c6 on knight g7, it just looks ridiculous to do this. Like nobody does that. Um, ah, because 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 we should show that uh, yeah, king g8, bishop b6, queen h8, it's made on d1 at the end. Yeah, unfortunately so the bishop, for you. Yeah, yeah unfortunately the bishop for you. Hanging, yeah, so anyway. they are basically blitzing all of this out. Queen f3, g4 played. He'll give a check. He'll give a check on f5. Uh, g6, queen f7 is always horrible, so nobody does that. So you always play king h6, and then your equation is pretty simple. Mate is being threatened. You have to defend against it, and the second idea Black has here is to play rook d2, either immediately or check first and then rook d2 in case of g3. I think this is a bit stronger because rook takes f2 is a, is a, is a check. Uh, so you look at this position, and I think you normally you just go through every single move that stops rook d1 being made. Mm -hmm. And eventually it should occur to you that the bishop shouldn't be on a fight. It's basically in the way. It's hanging at times. It's hanging well. in some lines as well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, people are saying h4, gh, queen f7 wins too. Okay. Oh, boy. Which I can believe, yeah. I mean... Which I can believe. <laughs> but, yeah, why Why do you want to even calculate all of this? I guess queen takes b7 wins, but... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So they're already here. Difficult to imagine not playing bishop f5 check, although... I mean, maybe there is some argument for playing g3 here. G3 didn't like some... We, we checked already, yeah? Um... No, no, but with the bishop only 6, we haven't. And my, my point is, if you do the same, I think you lose to queen f5, because I will because, eventually yeah, yeah, I will yeah, give yeah. a check from f4. Yeah, king h8 is not possible. Yeah. So maybe, maybe there is also an additional option not to give a check on f5 at all, using the fact that black is completely pinned on the back rank. Yeah, so... Yeah, and chat says that basically everything wins here. Uh -huh. Which is not okay. difficult to believe, to be honest. No, like, yeah. it's, it's not difficult to believe. Yeah, no, of course, of course, Gukesh is a, is a great talent, even if he starts with zero out of two. I mean, <laughs> of course, he fully deserves his spot in the, in the Masters. He's mm -hmm. 16 years old, one of the best talents. Uh, yeah. But yeah, this these is... tournaments, and we remember Magnus Carlsen in his first, first tournament in Wyk. Uh, he did minus four without winning a game. So um, he was yeah, I think I may have played in that win? one. I think I beat him with black in the tournament. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was that was when you you could still play against the boy. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> he was still a little bit young. But and, uh, but and, he, and he, green, he, yeah. I think he learned very quickly. He won the, yeah. the next the, 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 the year after. So yeah. might be might, might be same same kind of story with with Gukesh. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's a, yeah. it's a great running experience, and of course, um, okay, the out of two is of course a tough start mm -hmm. if he's losing today. But uh, I mean, the experience yeah. you are winning is just uh, amazing. Yeah, uh, and uh, in a kind of a light relief, let's go back to our King's Gambit because that continues yeah. swinging. <laughs> that continues being an extremely swingy game because. Uh, we okay, left it I somewhere wanted, here. I wanted to say that now I'm putting my money on Tabatabai. And you're, yeah, yeah. Game. and uh, like, why didn't play Queen E5? I don't know if Queen E5 was much stronger, but what uh, what Jergus played, I think, was still fine. This is still fine. This is still fine. And in this position, for some strange reason, he chose not to include Rook G3. He played Rook A1, and now he is worse because after B5, basically, eventually he will have to give up control over the bishop on f4, and rook takes e2 will come. So he took on c7. Oh, boy. And now after rook a c8, I guess queen d6, rook e6. And sooner rather than later, like you you can play queen before, I will play a5, and then I will take on e2, and I will take on f4, and the attack continues. And yeah, I think in practical terms, I think the Batabai is now uh, probably a favorite to win this game. And apparently, after queen d6, you can even spend a tempo on bishop takes b2, as I can see uh, uh, the engine suggesting, with like, I don't know, queen of two, bishop c3 ideas. And things are kind of getting completely out of control for white. And it's honestly, it's a bit of a weird idea not to include rook g3, because pushing the queen away to h5 looks like it's, it, you know, it should be something that you welcome. And now, I don't know, we go rook h1, rook g1, we go king c1 next move. We go from there. So it's a pity. It feels it feels uh it feels sad for for mm -hmm. the hack because 
Yeah, I mean, if he it's ends up losing up. this game, it's just going to yeah. be it's just going to be heartbreaking. He lost that very very printable game yeah. yesterday to to Max uh, Varmadam. To, to, to Max Varmadam, yeah. And today, you know, he is a piece up by move eight. In and if he game. ends up if if he ends up not even making a draw, this will be a very very difficult thing to uh, to come back from, I think, because yeah. Like, and the problem in this uh, Vikings tournament is that when you start poorly. There's still uh, <laughs> plenty of games to go. I mean, how, how many? Yeah. There are 14 players in the big group, so there's still mm -hmm. 11 rounds to go. So basically, this is one one full tournament. Uh, yeah. So that could that can end up very very long. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. For, for some for some people, I know I know because I lost. Uh, I when I played in the big group at some point in the middle of the tournament, it was the first time in my Gunmaster practice. That I I made like uh, one draw out of five games. You know, I was in the middle of the tournament. You just go to the playing hall. You expect to lose. You lose. You go back to the hotel next day. <laughs> exactly the same. You can lose a lot of games. Uh, that can just go. Yeah, uh, and and, and yeah, the, these tournaments they they become unbelievably long if you're not doing well. And that's also my experience because uh, I think my best result in I think maybe six tries was plus one. And I, I generally like I I was in good years. I was around fifty percent the entire tournament. It's incredibly really difficult. And yeah. even that, like you're not really doing all that poorly, but like it's just interminable. Yeah. And you, you feel like you would very much like for something to happen, but nothing good really is happening, <laughs> and the tournament is still like two weeks two weeks to go. And yeah, yeah it, it's not it's not uh, very easy to handle for sure. No, and that's why many people, you will see many people uh, winning many games, you know, uh, losing many games, you know, that's that's very normal because you 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 have a lot of ups and downs uh, in such a long tournament. So that makes it also very, very, very special uh, because you have to, um, let's say, uh, I mean, you have to adapt to the new new situation, to the to the length of the, of the tournament, and it's really difficult. So let's... Uh, Let's switch to, I don't know. Let's say let's have a quick look at uh, Ervin with yeah, suffering sure. uh, against Elin uh, Roberts. Yeah, uh, no, I'm not sure. It. I'm not sure. I like everything that she's doing. I mean, Queen H1 yeah. looks a little bit too fancy, but I in like general, it. I think I think she's doing things correctly by yeah. pushing as fast as possible on the king side and and just creating threats. Uh, um. I'm guessing her idea is uh, that uh, she maybe wants to go HG and make sure HG doesn't happen. I, like I'm, I'm not entirely certain why she chose H1 and not let's say G2 here. But in more in more general terms, I very much like how she how she is approaching this game. You often uh, even just play F to F4, quite simply. Yeah. You can go more or less entirely all in on the king side when the queen side is completely closed. And if we discuss the structure changes, like a four, it's very difficult to ignore because allowing a five normally just loses you the game. And if you take white now has uh, are you access sure? I mean, to... I mean, I mean, bishop d4 is very, very tempting. Yeah, well, also, so yeah, also of, just bishop d4, f6, and you then force f6. Cal calculate some variations. Yeah, like... Which is not too difficult, no? Yeah, and, and, and we've won, just... yeah. Yeah. So uh, after F four, I don't know what's. No, it's difficult, tough, tough spot for for Erwin for sure. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work with virtual background, but I'm yeah. I'm I'm doing some kind of ghost ghost dog feeding. Yeah, the 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 famous uh, Jim Jarmusch, Jim Jarmusch mm -hmm. movie. Yeah, the yeah. the ghost dog. Watch it. Yeah, you, you you need more more food uh, to get him. <laughs> <laughs> you need constant. You need food on your yeah, face. Yeah, once once you start once you start giving him giving yeah. him food, he is yeah, he becomes but... very demanding. Yeah. So uh, give me a sec. So yeah, so just just to prove that it's it's an actual dog and and not yeah because it's not some kind of a apparition. Yeah. Hello, boyo. Yeah, he wants one more now. <laughs> he always no, wants I, one I, more. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, that's. He always normal. wants one more. What? 
Warte, ist das sein? Down? Down, boy? Okay. And uh, Anish played Queen F3, according to Sotiris, who is always mm -hmm. uh, height. And now Bishop F5 on the board with 12 minutes, but tw move 26 already. So let's have a look. Bishop F5 here. Shot, King H6 shot. is absolutely the only move because G6 is made. Yeah, G6 has to be made. Here, Black has slightly more squares, so maybe it's not immediate made, but uh, like we will find something in this position, right? Mm. I would guess so. Yeah. How do we how do we yeah. actually win this? I can give check check and it runs in this direction then. Which is not a, a good uh, good thing, right? Yeah, normally you wouldn't you you don't want it to, to you don't want to allow it to run in this direction. So how do we actually refute G6? Hang on. At the end of the day, after King E8, you can go Bishop takes G4. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure. it's many pawns. Um... Ah, yeah. and <laughs> half dinosaur who already uh, had a, a bit of a star turn with Bishop C2 earlier says once again Bishop C2 is just winning. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. Hook D6, <laughs> Queen F8. Yeah, nothing moves. Yeah, and we are threatening like to to start taking stuff with checks. Yeah, this is very sadistic. Yeah, like Rook D2, we go. Uh, check and then check and then check and pick it up. Yeah, this is it's kind of funny how it's basically the solution is always to play bishop c2 somewhere. That's nice, actually. And and then black just has no moves suddenly. Rooker's thinking uh, probably he understands it's busted, but pff, what can you do? Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think you play King H6. I think King yeah. H6 looks like it gives you a better chance of not not losing on the spot, but you don't have right. very much hopes. Uh, by the way, uh, Richard actually managed to... Like, it should still be a draw, right? But uh -huh. it's a little bit more pleasant for Black with this knight being definitely stronger than this bishop. So he chose to play knight e4 here, which is not a move that we discussed very seriously because it looks like... You're putting your pieces on weird squares, but he correctly estimated that he can play 96, takes, takes bishop f4. And in this position, he made just a very, very uh, nice decision. C7 is hanging, but he says, it's much more important for me to get rid of your active pieces and just goes f7, f6, preparing to play rook f7. And we get this endgame where... Uh, yeah, bishop f5 rooks, looks normal. But, yeah, but like what I want to say... Yeah, I don't honestly. see how black trades rooks, but if you imagine the rooks actually coming off the board, it might be lost for white. Mm -hmm. like for if, sure. you if you imagine the same end game, but the king, the, the king is on d5, the king is on d3, this is the black king, this is the white king, and there are no rooks on the board. And in particular, if I get to play like g5, g4 somewhere, yeah, I think it might just be lost. Yeah, I agree. The, the, I mean, the problem with this entirely theoretical scenario is that, that you, know, you don't take change Jor rooks. yeah your Jordan also knows this <laughs> so he will not be trading rooks at all but um sort of there is no way black is ever worse and you can definitely imagine some scenarios where white is getting into trouble yeah he will play g4 I guess something yeah. like that g4 king g6 h5 yeah um, uh, you mean you mean immediately yeah just yeah I would, on it, so. I would really consider it, it, that. it allows white to trade a lot of stuff right we get a, we uh -huh. play h3 we play takes takes we play f3 and yes i mean in general we've achieved something positionally maybe with but, black, but so many pawns have come off the board that this is just not very difficult anymore it's too, it's it's too much yeah he's gone any bit wow oh, that's a uh, move yeah trying to actually ask a question uh in the meantime things have uh, i i want to say about... improved for arjun because arjun after queen e5 yeah wow. the, the machine actually agrees yeah after queen e5 bishop takes e6 check king king e7 i don't particularly like the idea of doing this to, um, to our bishop wesley chose to put it on a4 where now it's sort of completely out of play for it's going to be for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. So h5, a3, rook b8, and h5 also is a very, very clever move, reminding 
reminding Wesley that his king is on seven. Yeah, now 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 there's a king on his seven and black as is as is often the case in positions like this, like you have this weakness on uh this one and this one. Mm-hmm. And your pieces are completely tied to the protection of the weakness. And then you just, say, just give it. <laughs> yeah, you just say screw it, I don't want uh, it. Yeah. yeah. And suddenly your position starts to breathe, right? You you have some freedom. You, you your your pieces make a lot more sense immediately. And h5 is a very good reminder that this is not very safe either. So Wesley went uh a3 and e3. I guess the intention is after d takes, takes you want to play rookie one or rookie one, something like that. Yeah, I guess rookie one, yeah. To keep that pawn on c5 and, and, uh, control. and uh, Arjun very cleverly says, I don't want to win it so as much as I want to activate, this is not a very active rook. So I will just trade it away. And rook and why play. is it okay? Because well, this is just such a, yeah, this is just such a weird like we just go h4 here. I think just, sorry, excuse me, queen f2 and stuff. Yeah, f2 why rook f2? I, to... Yeah, I have no idea why rook f2 and not queen f2. No, but I think queen d1. Ah. Ah, it just immediately it equalizes. Bishop d5 yeah. and queen f1, queen d4 again. Yeah, it's just immediately. And equalizing. c5 is hanging, so you, mm-hmm. have to, you have to you have to come back. So that's why rook f2. Yeah, okay. Rook f2, but now we go h4, I guess. Bishop c6, maybe, but then rook c8. It's even honestly, now, honestly, it's... I would start becoming a bit worried with white here. I can imagine. Like you, you play c6 and like you got mated, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you probably just got mated already. How are you protecting against rook h1? You can yeah, you can go gh, but then after gh, like this is coming, you might once again not be able to go back. Like it, the, you you might already be worse. So yeah, like for me, and also chat is asking why is white why is white is even better. I don't think white is. Yeah, no, no. I think yeah, in practical terms, four was such a weird move. We placed yeah. too much, uh, Wesley. And then yeah. he played, played, we jinxed him uh, with his bishop. A little, bit, yeah. a little bit. That's that's a really pity. How is doing Magnus? That's how Magnus is much better, yeah. Magnus, In, uh, this Magnus is like actually kind of huh? aimed, aimed his knight at the d3 square straight away. And once it's there, you can even, in some cases, just sacrifice an exchange for this guy. Like some line, I mean, understand that this is just a very sample type line, but like something like this. And next move, I will just take on d5. And then it will be impossible to stop the the invasion uh, along the e-file. I mean, f5 also wins. It's You don't have to. <laughs> you can play f5 here and win like this. Even if, let's say, the knight on d5 demands an exchange sacrifice here, it's still much, much better. Just a and dream, just a dream, Grunfeld. Breaking news, sorry, Peter, Bishop mm-hmm. C2 played by Anish Giri yeah, yeah, after yeah. King h6. Oh, boy. No, this is legitimately game just over. a very, very nice game by yeah. Anish. Yeah, game of the day. Game of the day for, for Anish Gay, clearly. Mm. Just, it's resignable? Seems like it, yeah. And uh, returning for a second to the game between uh, uh, Wesley and Arjun, I just want to say that uh, the solution, at least... I don't know if the very strong machines agree with this, but the solution I see on my screen right now is very much a complement to the idea of playing queen 5 and giving up on c6 because white is much better here, unsurprisingly, but apparently you have to play e4. It's not the only thing that gives an advantage, but it's the only thing that gives a large advantage. Everything else is kind of playable for black. So what's the idea if I take en passant? Yeah, and then just rook e1. one. Rook e1. And yeah. you will eventually have to give up the pawn on c5. But like the line goes, the line I can see goes like rook c8. We include a3. And we take on e3. Uh, queen d4. We, ha- we also can include queen f2 here. Oh, nice. Because there's the threat. And, and then eventually, and like in, in some position like this, black actually yeah. wins the pawn on c5 and doesn't resign immediately. But now you have this really, really weak king on d8. Like mm-hmm. you can give a check and play bishop d5 or something once it goes back to e7. It it does look like it's kind of bad. I don't know if it's immediately winning or not, but it looks kind of bad. But if this is the best solution, then yeah, bishop this, is, this was, is actually was a, a, very, move, yeah. a very difficult practical practical problem for white. And uh, bishop a4 already white is almost not better at all. And uh, E3, basically, final mistake. 
engine still gives white some advantage after rook bb8, but not a lot. And after e3, black is just fine. And currently, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering, yeah, h4. Ah, okay, okay. This explains what's, things. What, what's the move of such for? Sure, we have queen beats. Uh, this is what oh. he's playing. Yeah, this is what we're missing. Okay, that's nice. It's easy to miss, actually. Yeah, but it's still actually, a draw. Queens, it's, it's still, still a, draw, a draw, because we can, we can actually play queen takes c5 and give a perpetual. So let's show takes queen yeah, you can, you can even You can even start with queen f6, put the king on d6, but because this is pinned, you cannot actually use it. So eventually you take on h8, and this is just, just a comfortable perpetual. Okay. Funny. Yeah, and h4 is not even the only thing that equalizes here. Rook d8 is also fine, apparently, according to the machine. Black is just completely fine. No risk. Okay, so what's... No risk uh, involved. What, what about ding? Oh, boy. Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. King is coming. Yeah, the king The king is making a lot of, a lot of progress. And black actually solved... The, the, the problem we were talking about, the problem of the bishop on a7 having no squares, he, he sort of solved it, but he solved it by giving white all this time to bring the king up from g1 to h2, uh, h4. And I did say at the time that I would very much like my king on h4 because it actually supports the attack. And now rook e6 is an indication of that because he wants to play king h5 and then rook g6 check will become a threat. And it's difficult to stop. I don't know how you stop it. I think yeah, he's in trouble. The, the, the light square bishop cannot really uh, participate. Mm -hmm. Let's say if you go bishop d5 trying to regroup, or oh, first of all, a6 is hanging, but you also yeah. have rook But even, even this, yeah, even yeah. this is completely winning as well. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is the easiest. So you mm -hmm. cannot bring back this... Uh, oh, hang on, hang on. No, no, this doesn't light work. square yeah. bishop. This doesn't work. Oh, boy, always a way to, to blunder something in chess. Yeah. This is amazing. But yeah, but we can take on a6. It doesn't really matter all that much. And now after bishop d8 check... King G3 I suspect even one. king h5 is winning, but we can also go back and play f4. Uh -huh. I think this is easier. Just, just do this. Yeah. And now we have passers on both flanks, and eventually it will be. And by the way, you are an absolute Cassandra today. Oh, can... boy. Look at that's... this. <laughs> that's... Look at this. <laughs> yeah. About two hours ago, Laurent told our viewers that this structure Fine. is horrible. But if somehow this ends up being four <laughs> against three on one side, this is exactly how you want your pawns to be. I think that was maybe two and a half hours ago. Yeah, that was something like that. But <laughs> I, I couldn't predict that uh, Anish Gye would win a crushing attacking game today. <laughs> that was uh, unpredictable, at least for me. But congratulations to Anish Gye. Who, yeah, uh, I guess Gugge just resigned there, yeah? Yeah, yeah, he just resigned. And uh, brilliant win by, by uh, Gye. Almost a perfect game. Yeah. Um, I mean, H4, you could argue, make some argument for H4 instead of who can one, but that would be really, really uh, trying to, to find something wrong uh, with Anish, and we won't do that. So congratulations yeah, to him. Yeah, excellent, excellent game, very nicely prepared, uh, because yeah. uh, he only really started thinking of yeah. move 17 when he had a large advantage by that point. And this really novel concept of uh, taking on G4 uh, with the pawn, which probably isn't a novelty in itself, but this idea of spending two tempi to go rook c2, rook e2 here, is a very, very nice bit of prep. It doesn't really look very threatening, but suddenly here already, black has a lot more problems than is maybe visually uh, obvious. And two moves later, white was just completely winning. Exactly. Uh, so fantastic game by Anish. Congrats to congrats to him. Congrats to Team Anish. We yeah, we send our <laughs> regards to. To the guide, uh, to, Pat? To, to, to Team Anish and uh, Rook C2 was a novelty, we're being, we're being told. Yeah, so okay, very, very nicely, uh, nicely done by Anish in a line which I think has a, has a reputation of really being yeah. nothing at all. Yeah, so uh, uh, winning a game like this against somebody who works on chess very, very uh, seriously is sort of you know, beating a 27 25 player in this style. In a very theoretical line, I think is a is a very pleasant feeling. So, for sure.
nicely done. Uh, I, I don't know, but <laughs> it should be good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't have I don't have very many experiences like this either. Uh, Magnus, uh, in the meantime, converted one type of an advantage into a different one. Uh, in the position after knight d5, uh, he played queen c6 instead of queen b7, and after bishop g5, he just took on e4, uh, oh, yeah. undermining ah, the knight and C3, allowing C3 this. Hanging, yeah? yeah, allowing this and. Yeah, this should be completely winning for black. Yeah, I would be saying them. that. I would be saying that even without the the engine saying that as well, because this is a massive, massive knight which cannot be shifted. And I guess maybe there is also. Although I wanted to ask you, uh, would you go for this? I didn't. No. 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 Yeah, we just never go for this, right? No. No. I I wouldn't, but. Doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, pro it's probably still winning in a very, very long game, but you just never do it, right? Yeah. You you find some way to get before in without allowing, like you go to B eight or something. I, I would, and you just um, win. You just win like this. Yeah. I would really think so. Okay, it was also, but rook B eight, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, yeah so like rook eight is also fine. You, you just want to go B four, B three, and. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very really hard to stop it. Okay. It's yeah, it's almost impossible to stop. But I just wanted to show, like, specifically to the viewers, that this might be a kind of a thing that uh, tempts you for a second because you do win. Uh, you do win a queen for uh, for a rook and, uh, and a light piece, and it seems like you you should be happy with this. But this is going to be a very just, very difficult uh, technical. I think task. it doesn't work actually. I can go bishop c three instead of queen c three. Uh ah yeah yeah that as well yeah sorry yeah I yeah doggo know. wants I... doggo wants more food doggo is really unhappy with me <laughs> it's just like a fresh shake a little bit ah yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah no but you started giving some food and now yeah yeah like okay, no now... but really he he just realized that when I have this setup with the lights on and I'm seemingly sitting in this empty room talking to nobody <laughs> this means that there is food on offer okay he is and it, it took him like a, a day and a half of me streaming the world rapid and blitz to realize this and now he is just full on like he never leaves this room <laughs> he's always here hoping hoping for for handouts bishop g5 played by uh, vincent kamer uh, he wants to play bishop d2, I guess. What? What? He has the same problems on Gukers. That's in bad position. It's difficult to to find. Yeah, I mean, he wants. Uh, yeah, he wants to, to do, drop most. it back to d2. Maybe trade the trade the knight, but not going to help much. Not, I guess. not going to. Yeah. So what's the cleanest solution? Yeah, we go before and after bishop d2. We need to. Uh, to find some kind of a clean. I guess you just go rook d8 and you yes. just continue improving. Yeah. Exactly. I was about to to say actually. Yeah, people saying walk the dog. It's way too early. It's like it. He he's not asking for a walk. He's specifically asking for food. Like the walk time has not has not come yet. Don't get the dog fat! Exclamation mark question mark. He, yeah, he is not. Yeah, he is a he is a very trim, trim beast. Don't worry. Yeah, no, it's it's depressing for for Kamer. Really rich. Yeah, I, uh, hang on a second. But maybe like we take take and we go this rook to d one. I guess yeah. Even if I take bishop f six. Yeah, I mean, yeah. This is the problem. Like, this is an improvement. The most, for white. the most stupid way. Yeah, yeah. A four b three. Com yeah, compared to the previous position, I think it's an improvement, but it's still completely lost. Yeah. yeah how, how do you long term? How do you stop that from happening? You, you can try. You can try short term, but yeah. eventually it will happen. That's for sure. That's a disaster for for the young Vincent Kamer. Let's let's have a look maybe at this. So Fabi is still a draw. Yeah, that would be that would be a bit annoying if he's losing that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think but, he loses this. Yeah, it's no, a, that's actually the easiest to defend. Uh, four against three uh, with his double pawns mm. uh, because you cannot create if you go f4 e5 then I still have one pawn on f7 to cover uh, at some point you will have to create uh, something on the on the king side and uh, it's a very good de defensive setup mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, obviously you can lose any position. So you can still imagine some scenarios where you misplay it and you give, you become passive and you and you're in trouble. But even let's say if you give white the absolute maximum, let's let's just like be extremely helpful. Oh, that's a... okay. I, I have a feeling I'm not losing even this one, right? Really? I would be a bit worried. <laughs> I know, I know, but like I, I have a feeling even this one is probably just okay. Maybe. Because it's it's just going to be very difficult to make progress from here. That's true. It looks scary. Like I, I really would like not to have this position. Definitely. Like from here, I would like yeah. to probably play something like rook a4 and not allow you all of this freedom. I think this is this is like you you just cut the king off and uh, of, if course, the rook, of course if the rook vacates the g file, we finally get the king back to g7 and so on. But I think even I even if I allow all of this, it might not be enough because without the rook, I don't see how you're winning. And if you if you do something like this, I will play king g7. And the, the moment the king is on g7, I feel a lot safer about about everything. No, I was a bit afraid that I, I would manage some some e5 uh, takes takes uh, take with the king. And I'm talking king f6, but you have rook a6. I think. Yeah, I have rook a6, and I will. Yeah. So, but if I have, I mean, if I had played maybe f5 first, actually, I would have f6 winning probably. Yeah, yeah. This is what I was scared of. Like f5 yeah, first. F5. Yeah, f5. F5 first, and then you have f5. To wait. And then, yeah, allowing king f6 is impossible. And if I play rook b6, maybe I've lost the game to f6. Yeah. Although, honestly, have I? <laughs> have I? Maybe yes. I'm king h8, king f5. Yeah, I chill. No, no stalemate so well, far. Well, not yet, right? <laughs> King G4, H5, yeah? Oh. Oh, I just no. chill. I just chill and then I give you a check. Let's <laughs> show to the viewers. King H6. King H5, yeah. and now. We we'll have to change that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe somewhere along the way, I have actually lost the game. I wouldn't be surprised. But even yeah. this like requires a lot of precision. Uh, and obviously, black is not obliged to like give you a lift all the yeah. way to d6. You know, f4 is on the board. I assume he'll just look a4 here. Yeah, but it's impressive by Abu Satov with putting pressure on, on Fabiano mm -hmm. Kawana. Uh, it's a very good start, probably a draw, but uh, yeah. still amazing. Um, and, what uh, else we have was... to and didn't ding collect it uh, a6 actually? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we, we have this position here, and uh, there, there's a discussion here. People are discussing the the, the chess skills of my dog and somebody mentioned this is actually a kind of a sad ish story from uh some years back there was this uh uh this guy from i want to say he was from samara but i'm not entirely sure and i'm not sure if it matters but there was this guy who very famously said uh that if he wanted to he could make his his cat a grandmaster and he himself i think briefly became a grandmaster before scandal and like publicity made them you know made them the reverse decision yeah and satiris knows even all of that yeah satiris immediately correctly names the player there was this guy uh, called aframeev who uh yeah was uh, very publicly uh stay staking a claim that you know he can he can find enough tournaments to to make his cat a grandmaster or a dog. I think it was a cat, yeah. Okay. I know the name, but I don't know the story, actually. So himself yeah. played or, or himself uh, was involved in some weird stuff, yeah? As far yeah, as that, was, that was not, not very, not very yeah, good. Okay. And uh, this one uh, this one kind of progressed to... Towards the uh, door, huh? Toward... He would six? assume so, but it's a bit tricky, right? Because uh, he, six, he six, went from d8 instead of h4. Uh, Wesley still played queen b2. Now queen queen d4, queen, queen c5, queen f6 probably just loses. You so you have to take. Yeah, yeah, you have to take. And in this position, I think wow. I saw the engine play rook d3, which I very much like. Mm -hmm. Just putting the queen, rook on c3. And if you play before, you always get mad by rook takes yeah. c3. But instead, he went for the more direct way by going after the a3 pawn. And now it's sort of tricky, no? Like rook... Ah, no, he's in time with rook a1 specifically. Yeah? Why not? Rook c2? Ah, because rook, a, rook c5 now? 
I'm attacking a lot of bunch of pawns on this uh, fifth hunk. Are Actually, you... g5, take one pawn. No, no I want to go. I want to go f6. Yeah, but I take that anyway. And now I want to go rook c1. I understand. That's... And I want to claim that this is probably a draw. <laughs> I probably agree. Okay. I mean, uh, but you, you can still sort of play this, right? But I mean, it's King not. Is three. Yeah, yeah, it's enough. not very much. Yeah, I, I think even this bishop ending is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it's saying, a draw. You yeah, you will yeah. go h four. I think it's a draw. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a draw. Okay. Okay. Interesting. And he he, he played. Yeah. yeah, bishop c eight is on the board, and like you have to play rook c five, otherwise you really have nothing at all, I guess. And black will just quietly come out of like you. you I want to play f6, and then maybe I want to play rook d1 or something. And you don't really have other threats. Rook e2 let's, check, king, king d6 does nothing. Let's have a look uh, at the king's gambit. I'm missing yeah, my, yeah, let's, my, let's doors, back. my doors of king's gambit uh, for now. What <laughs> was Let, let's count pieces? Uh, it's bishop <laughs> and knight against hook and three, three pawns. and three. Yeah, that's too many, no? Yeah, so he played. After queen d6, he did play the move rook e6, which I was mm -hmm. suggesting. I think the engine preferred bishop takes b2 immediately, but this is also fine. Rook g3, queen f2. Uh, kind of a clever move, rook g3 here, using uh, an intermediate move. But after queen f2, you can't really... Uh, like, bishop takes b2 now is a huge threat. Like, if, if the queen goes somewhere uh, that doesn't protect b2, like, if you play, I don't know, queen... I guess, rook, yeah, it's just tricky. Queen b4... A5, Why didn't he play queen? Yeah, just a5 as usual, yeah. But anyway, he played bishop e3 here, and black took on e1, took on d6, took on b2, and then played a5. And this is such a... I don't know, he... It still is very, very tactical, because white played a4, and if you could actually get to these pawns, maybe white would do fine, but bishop f6, rook b4, and now a very clever move, bishop e7. Creating mm -hmm, a threat of rook takes d3. Uh -huh. And Pehaj actually had to play rook b1. Oh my. And uh, rook a1. Yeah, he's fighting for survival now. I don't know if it's very bad for white. Maybe it's still kind of manageable, but so sad he's definitely him. fighting for survival. How, how good is a, a3? What do you do? After? A3, rook a3, rook e6? Ah, rook e6, yeah. I was hoping that's. Oh, that works, I think. I have. Yeah, I think that works. I don't know. Yeah, a three played in the meantime. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you if if we really absolutely have to take this pawn off the board, we can play bishop c one, but it's a huge achievement for black to actually get the bishop pair uh, traded away. Like I will play, I don't know, some some move, rook somewhere, b six maybe. Yeah, and if I'm let's say take takes and the hook before, let's say. Uh, ah, you want to hook before or catch four? I wanted. Oh, yeah, that, that is also to get strong. to to get your pawn. No, yeah, I mean uh, clearly black is better. The question is maybe white can still defend. Yeah, and the yeah. the evaluation doesn't seem to be too disastrous for Pehaj. But how how is doing uh, Elin? Yeah, uh, this has become ah, wow. Whoa, she's just according to the engine, she's just straight up winning. It's F six queen F four, huh? Yeah, f6, queen f4, and she, she hasn't even sacrificed anything. All of this is happening with, with, with equal material. It's a pawn, gh5, but... Knight d7, maybe trying to get it over to e5, but I guess an additional problem is you, you also have this queen completely yeah. stuck on h3. So. You can take first on g6, maybe, and play hook, hook somewhere, hook e3, maybe. I don't know. That's the best. Knight e5, but... queen of knight f5 or something, yeah. Yeah, something like this could just be winning for white very, very easily. And it would be quite a quite a performance by by mm. Elin to, to win against such a strong and experienced grandmaster as as Evelyn Lamy. Yeah, if she does win, she has eight minutes. It's gonna be a very uh, kind of a nerve-wracking yeah. time trouble for both of them. But it looks like her position is fantastic and yeah, it I feels think... like there should be something here that just wins on the spot, but I don't see it. Which is a bit annoying to me because, like, it really feels like you should have some kind of a solution which ends the game on the spot. But I'm struggling, struggling to find it. I like Hook three. Why not? Yeah. What, what song did we? Oh, it looks completely winning. Yeah, well, you have to remove the. Where, where can you go? With well, it? yeah, but like you have to, you have to continue the line, right? Maybe. Knight f five. Queen h five. 
take on e7. As simple as that. Take. You I mean it's not that clear? Yeah, f7. And then some kind of bishop d1. Yeah, and everything I, I, collapses. Yeah. F7 was completely winning as well. Yeah, f7 was also completely winning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's not surprising. It, it looks like things have gone really, really poorly for for Irvin, but. Yeah, and also the bar, as 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 our viewers can see on on their screens, the bar is you know very much in agreement. Let's have a look at Magnus Carlsen. Maybe he was finishing the game. Yeah, against, people were uh, saying that he is completely winning as well. Yeah. Yeah, hope it is three now. Yeah, there was a mention of the move queen d five specifically in chat, but I don't think you need to. I think basically it's it's a kind of a position which is going to be very very difficult not to win. Because it's, even if you even if you like don't find the immediate things which end the game on the spot, your position remains winning. It's just going to take you longer. Yeah, and Magnus, of course, as such, he doesn't miss such chances. Mm. Uh, very long time, I can't remember last time he, he missed uh, a chance like that. Yeah, very, very, very hard to believe he doesn't convert here. Yeah, uh, that's a disaster. What's the most inter uh, interesting uh, time travel? Ding? Oh, Ding is just. Yeah, I think, he's just I think he's just winning. The engine weirdly doesn't give it as much as I would have assumed, but. Like, it feels to me that, like, the solution I sort of like the most in all of these positions is something like CB4, CB4, and now I want to play King H5. After bishop is seven, you want to take. And I want to take on f7. And mm -hmm. if you take with the rook, I want to play rook a7. Mm -hmm. And I want to claim that eventually you will have to play that bishop somewhere. That and you will win bishop it. somewhere, which which has to be completely lost. Which is hard to believe it's not completely lost. Yeah. Yeah. Like it is. this would be this would be my preferred solution. I don't know if it because there are some some issues with it, maybe. But actually, no. I thought rook d seven, rook d five check, but I can play h four, g five, and this check never does anything. So, and I mean, after king h five, you have to play with f seven check. You can't possibly allow me to continue picking up stuff with checks. So you, you we get here. If you take with the king, I can take on h six and continue threatening rook h seven check. And once again, my assumption is this end game is dead lost mm -hmm. because i will play king g6 and then i will just start pushing and like i don't believe there's ever enough time for black to launch any kind of counterplay and i think my setup with the king on g6 specifically it's perfect should yeah. should be uh efficient enough to queen one of those pawns if you don't do anything at all so yeah this is this is how and he has five plays he's gone yeah. to h5 so he, he's doing the same thing but without the inclusion of cb cb which maybe is stronger i don't know shouldn't really matter a great deal yeah exactly strong. <laughs> um yeah so bishop f7 just hook f7 is, he, is a point I yeah was. of course yeah he's not going to go back to h4 yeah of course he's not. and bishop f7 played by max Zudu. okay interesting well what else can he do yeah? and I mean, he, has to, he has to he has to go for it yeah yeah rook f7 already played so now a kind of an unfortunate choice there for for parham which which one he thinks gives him the uh, the best chance. It's lost simply. But why is the computer? The computer. Ah, no, the evaluation bad. I think it's, it's catching, catching up, up. Yeah, I think it's catching up. And I also think that probably, if you give it longer, it will start liking it even more. Hmm. What? So yeah, I mean, stylistically, this is exactly how I would approach it. If 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 it somehow ends up being a draw, you know, uh, it's regrettable. But I still am very much on board with this method of converting. One thing I will I want to say about Magnus's game, I'm a yeah. little bit surprised he allowed h5. Yeah, but I guess he just goes maybe maybe he just goes gh, because honestly, I I see absolutely no reason not to play h5 here. So that you never even have to, you know, have this debate. Yeah, because you know, allowing allowing h five h six here is a way to for the position to become a little bit trickier. He's taking. I think he is just snapping on h five. Yeah, yeah, I think he is. Yeah. That's so much. Ah, that's so typical. Um, just give me that pawn, mm. and uh, yeah, who cares actually? 
So could I mean, maybe I can go at Schwartz three actually mm-hmm. later. Yeah. Could, could be and by the plan. way, yeah, yeah, he he's gone GH, yeah, unsurprising. Yeah, 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 GH, yeah. Bishop C3, Bishop C3 on the board. And uh look at this. Uh-huh. Progress is definitely being made by by really? the herd. Rook C3 now, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Oxy I guess C3. if night before we have rook b1, right? This is no, it's not rook d7, rook b7, no. Our, ah, yeah, yeah, this is even faster. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very crazy. Clever. Yeah, and he's gone rook c3. He wants to put the rook on b3, he wants to play king g6, you know, make all of the preparatory moves, and that's, then just snap on. Let's go. Um, I don't know. Who k1? You just go rook b3. Yeah, I don't I think it does very much. Yeah, I, th- I don't think it does very much. Bishop c5? Uh, I don't uh, think. Take? That was Brendan. Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, you have some bishop f8, but you know, I can even just play h5, king f5. It just doesn't do anything. No, Richard is it's, yeah, okay, it's okay. very, very cleverly done by him because he yeah. he found a way somewhere around here. He found a way to return return a pawn, but keep the game going in an end game where he has just a very clear positive free roll. And uh, yeah, I I don't know how. How easy it will be in practical terms for for Jordan not to lose this. I I would assume this is still a position you draw with precise play, but it's really no longer very fun. Uh, king f one played. I assume we go rook b three because if you go king g six, I think this allows this setup, and this setup we want to avoid because eventually bishop d two will happen and. Even here, like Bishop D two is probably a blunder. Ah, you know, I, I, have a nice, take, yeah. I have a nice. Uh, I wanted ninety five after your rook B one. Uh, Chipolito. Ah, very Chipolito, nice. Chipolito, uh, you know, very also, nice, just, very nice. Chipolito, the... yeah. Uh, it's probably probably working, I guess. But yeah, um, I still not so night before. What's a, what's a, what's a big deal? Maybe just Bishop D two, you know. Uh, no, ah. and ninety-five ah, no. again. First of all, yeah. We, if we want to, okay, to not play the rook ending. I assume your 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 point is you want you want actually to play this rook ending. No, no, I don't. I know. I'm. Just... But even even that is not as because the pawn is not on h four. Even that is not that much fun. Like this is not how you want your king side pawns to no. be in this end game. No, you might still save it, but this is not. You, you want them. Much more advanced. Uh, Since I, I saw you, you brilliant <laughs> win against Akopian. Yeah, you know, yeah, we're. I know you don't have to, <laughs> don't have yeah. to worry about anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just go with the king and win. Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> you that taught was, uh, us. <laughs> that was that was amazing. Yeah, because I, yeah. Uh, I was, I think, of all the people who were watching that game, I believed in my own victory the least. You know, but when the, <laughs> when, ga- when the end game started, I would I would have been. The person who would be saying this is a draw the most, like I, your, I your, your teammates, I... and I was part of them were yeah. believing. Well, yeah. sure, <laughs> yeah. convinced, you know. Yeah, no, but that was that was this magical. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about. Uh, I played for now or for a few seasons uh, together yeah. with Laurent, and uh, that game specifically was played in two thousand two, yeah. which was a kind of a magical year because two things happened in two thousand two. Uh, my kids were born, uh, and then. Shortly afterwards, I managed to tear my uh, cruciate ligaments, uh, yeah. and I was playing on crutches. Yeah, and basically the moment I started playing on crutches, I just started winning everything <laughs> because it 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 forced me to sit at the board and think about <laughs> things. You know, <laughs> yeah. it turned out it turned out that if you absolutely force me to. <laughs> To, to actually actually concentrate well, yeah? concentrate on the chess, it it might be it might be yeah a, I remember you you played very well yeah 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 so yeah that was the Parisian uh, club uh, now which doesn't exist anymore yeah that was hmm. good old days and you won a uh, Oaken game it was the A pawn against uh, Akopian but it was not very favorable but I don't know what he did but you you punished him. Um, in a in a very effective way, just marching <laughs> with the king, collecting the hook. <laughs> that was yeah. that was surprisingly easy. 
Um, yeah, and people people are saying Ding's game is a draw, but he he did it differently to what I expected. But like I, I really thought you were supposed to play okay, Rook so, Seven yeah. to not allow uh, Black to to unpin, but he didn't do it. He just took on H6, takes takes Bishop B5. Yeah, and this is you know Black gets a lot of activity here, so it wouldn't shock me if this turned out to be okay ish. So I mean, it's we... still it's still risky for Black, of course, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, Oxy Six looks completely winning, no? To me, to yeah, my eyes, Oxy Six still, still looks winning. Yeah, I don't know. I would think I'm I'm doing. If I don't get mated, huh? but no. oh, maybe Rook D three. Yeah, actually, maybe Rook D three. Because here you do so, get uh, ah yeah, okay. no you don't get actually get mated because you have to that's seven. it's very unpleasant yeah it takes, but you're also not ah, winning it ah hang on ah, you got five ah, uh -huh, uh -huh. if you take on h five g h have four pawns that'll be weird but that's so far for me to <laughs> yeah. I don't with your your bishop you will manage to to control all of them but yeah, um, yeah even that is tricky so. Um, Let's see, but I liked your. Uh, I'm I'm puzzled that uh, Ding didn't go for Rook A7. Can you show uh, again? Because he took with the king. We consider only Rook. Yeah, takes and uh, uh, Chad is saying Rook A7 is the the top engine choice as well, which wow. is interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah. So okay. let's say King. I don't know BC BC King E6 maybe. But then we go A6, right? We just preserve this guy and. Like in order to unpin yourself, you will have to expend so much more energy here with black, right? Like you have to but give so a check. I will take. You give a check. I go to ah. H seven, and you still haven't even won the C pawn. Maybe king. You know, no, I go king G six first because I want the rook on G five. Yeah, the rook on G five is horrible. So I will, I go king G six, and then and I want to. And the A pawn is K. No, yeah, I mean, like maybe you can go rook D three and somehow pretend, but. Actually, no, like rook eight, a seven is just winning, right? But why, why rook f seven as well? I mean, everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, winning, anything. Yeah, rook f seven also very strong, followed by a seven. Yeah. yeah, it's a bit of a strange one for me because it really looked like uh, preventing black from easily freeing themselves should be priority number one here, but Ding disagreed. Okay, let's and... let's have a look at Magnus Carlsen, maybe. Um, oh, one second, I, I want to I want to watch because this is very. Very cute. Ah, yeah, of course, uh, of course. Actually, this entire line happened on the board without HG. HG. Oh, okay. She played. She played rook a three immediately, okay. and then she played knight f five, and gf g five, and she has basically two winning moves here. Uh, one I think is easy, and one is kind of surprising. And okay, let me let me let me let me try to uh, find. Mm, I don't know. Takes takes. I want to make bishop e5 work. Yeah, bishop e5 is the one that is sort of easy. Yeah, because d5, ah, queen e5 is like obviously winning for white because you have everything extra. Like now g6, you put the queen on d4. Yeah, but I didn't it. understand why gf4 was winning. No, g4 is you just collect everything. You go a fee. King g8? Simply. Yeah, you just take and take on a four. You ah, okay. You have more, okay. you have more, have more pieces. pieces. You just have more pieces. I it's completely I, are you yeah. But the but the, the, the interesting thing is you are also winning with this. Oh, apparently boy. and then six, this six. and then this and then this and this is also apparently good enough but you okay. have to take on e5 wow. because if you if you play something indifferent like queen g3 and she has she has taken on e5 yeah, well played well played aline well played okay yeah. don't jinx it yeah it's yeah. a good move it's a good move but she, she didn't win it yet but yeah that's amazing yeah, and so he just goes. Uh, he he goes GF, but yeah, this is. I think this is completely lost. I, How I about think... collecting D six before collecting F four? <laughs> yeah, also That's also good. not bad. Yeah, just take take the, the this one first, uh, and it's then just... and then take this one. And it's a game actually. King no, G8. but we yeah we just have more of everything. Yeah. Okay. That's Sens uh, sensational result uh, in that game. Yeah, and yeah, this is this is just very very good for uh for her because uh you know Irvin is you know such a respected figure in in the Dutch chess scene and if she beats him in what I assume is their first ever encounter it it, it will do it will do such wonders for for her confidence going forward 
Uh, yeah. She had a bit of a different, di- difficult sure. game yesterday, but yeah, she, if she wins today, which I, which we have to assume she will, uh, yeah, because is... it looks so unmissable. No, but you, like you can't even you can you can try giving some kind of a check from the G file, but even if you do manage to give one check here, like who who is going to care? Like, eventually, these pawns will start crawling. Yeah, it's completely winning. Yeah, and and also you you can probably just stop it. Like you you can play rook g three, and there will never be a check. Rook g three, then rook f one, yeah. and then we. I thought I thought king h one, but yeah, well, okay. king h one, yeah. But like it's, it's a matter of taste. You, you you're just completely yeah. and utterly winning here with white. Yeah, it's just very difficult to. From here, I think it's very difficult to spoil because you 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 have material advantage, better structure, more active pieces, and so on and so forth. Um, so let's 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 see the last minute of the time scumble. Uh I think uh, Kmart just played it move 40. Um yeah, the, they got he here. He made it. He made it to the move 40, but yeah, the question is how to win this in the cleanest possible fashion with black. If you take only four key for C4 is hanging and uh, Yeah, you can do this, but once again, I don't think we won this with black, right? No. Maybe it's winning, maybe it's not. Yeah, but because you're you're not sure this is winning, despite the fact that we have an extra we, on the king side. It's not you are not sure. We, we, I mean, we are not sure. Magnus might be sure. Yeah, Magnus might know. Yeah, Magnus <laughs> might, might know. I, he knows such uh, such end games. But so... I think I think if there is any choice, you probably choose like anything else. That's what. Uh, takes takes b three maybe. I think probably this is cleaner. Rook c4? Just b8. Rook a4? Ah, it's the same. I, have, I missed rook a4. It's the same enemy. Mm-hmm. Um, and b2 yeah, could be important. Could be important. Actually. It could be important, yeah. <laughs> it could be important to know sometimes in life. It's uh, it's important to know things. So mm, yeah, I don't know if he will or not, but he's thinking, okay, 15 minutes. Ah, and this is, yeah, he has 15 minutes. It's more 40, but he has plenty of time. Uh, for this decision, also, oh, hang on, I have I have no good squares. Yeah, I was going to make an argument that some position like this is winning, but the problem is there is queen takes c4, so you're not getting this position. But if I pass, what ah, do yeah. Play? yeah, 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 we play. I don't know, a4 or yeah, a4. No. Why not? Why not? Mm. Okay, I gave you some a3. It's what you meant, yeah. Yeah, we, sh- we should find a good pass. Which is weirdly not accent. that easy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's he's going for some. Let's see what he goes with because I I have a feeling if he took only four yeah. with fifteen minutes still left on the clock, he probably settled on something because he definitely did not have to take. He 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 certainly had some waiting moves he could have still chosen. Taking so, Vincent came and will obviously. Oh, he did probably. Oh, he take back. He took back. And now move forty one. So Magnus, okay, Magnus staying at the board. You see some people sometimes going to the bathroom after after the time control. Mm-hmm. You have fifteen minutes extra. We didn't remind the time control, but this is the longest time control you can ever uh, see. Uh, and we see, uh, we see, of course, the, the schedule first. Um, first four rounds and a free day on January eighteen. Three free days. Uh, you will be joined uh, starting from tomorrow by uh, David Howell, the Norwegian boy. Was busy playing the Norwegian league this weekend, I heard. Uh, and the time control is 100 minutes for the first 40 moves, 50 minutes for the next 20, and 15 minutes for the rest of the game, with, of course, the famous 30 second increment from move one. So that can be seven hours game. Easily. Ah. I think I know what he wants, and I think this is the right solution. Yeah, he's gone B3, and it's not the same endgame. The difference being that in this position, I will get my rook to the side, ah. and you will not get your rook behind the After rook D5, oh, so. there is no way for you to get the rook to A7, because I always have A4, rook A5. No, but okay, that's amazing. Yeah, okay. and this, is, mean, this knows. is just winning. Yeah, he knows, this is yeah? just winning. You just come with a king now, yeah? Yeah, you just run. You just run to, towards the B-pawn, and the fact that you have a security of an extra extra H pawn here is always going to be uh, quite useful. Amazing. Uh, so let's maybe do a bit of a roundup of results yeah, and yeah. then go go on a break. Uh, yeah. Some games uh, in 
in the challengers have already finished. Uh, Max Farmadam, in the end, made a very comfortable draw in this rather, I would say, dry game between uh, uh, Luis Paulo Schuppi and and uh, Max. We covered the theoretical draw in Ilmaz versus Mishra, uh, and uh, this is this is the weird one because yes, Black is better by this point, but it's by no means obvious that you're going to win, and. I, I saw the question in chat and I, I looked it up and I thought, okay, maybe the, the engine suggests some kind of a miraculous combination, but no. Machine says King of Eight, minus one or thereabouts. So we it's difficult for me to, to figure out why. According to Sotire, she flagged. Ah, okay, because the, the website says she has 50 minutes here. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, okay. If, if she lost on time she, here, it, it obviously explains why the game is finished. I just couldn't really understand, once again, judging by what I saw, uh, how she could flag with 50 minutes. Um, Atiban is playing some kind of a very sharp position against Thomas Berritsen, where uh, we actually we showed this Catalan mm -hmm. and then never returned to it. And yeah, they played a kind of a very slow game where nothing was happening for a while, and then it became quite tactical. Um, because Adiban uh, achieved something in the center and is now trying to uh, use the fact that he has this very, very nice bishop knight on d6, uh, and the bishop on a6 was out of play for much of the game, but now it's sort of returning, and he is trying to, I guess, create a passer on the c file somehow. And he took and on win. c5 actually. He yeah, took takes, on c5. Takes, yeah, takes takes uh, knight takes c5. Seems like the engine disagrees with this for some reason. I guess just dc. Yeah. You have to still, do. still not obvious to me that this, yeah. this has to be so good for white after let's say rook c7. But uh, the engine does like it for for what? Maybe maybe this is the point. Yeah, bishop d7, knight d7, knight b5. Yeah? Wow, <laughs> which is yeah. uh, I think very missable. Rook c7 is not forced, but maybe this is you know, but this part of the reason why this is good for white because we basically we want to play bishop d7. In every position, like if you play bishop g6 here, once again, bishop g7, knight g7, c7 now is strong, and so on. yes, pawn c6 is very, 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 mm -hmm. very strong. We have Ivich against uh Sindalf. We didn't see at all Ivich. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how did which we... is not over? We missed it completely. Ah, no, oh, no, no, no. We, we, we showed, yeah, we showed this yeah. position and then kind of ignored it. And uh, yeah, the c pawn is uh still alive, which probably means that white is better, but the question is. Uh, if you can actually use it, yeah. This is these are the kind of really weird positions where White managed to actually stop Black from attacking the pawn on c7, but Black also covered all the important squares around the king and on the d file. So it looks very pretty for White, but I'm not sure if you can make any progress. And maybe Black is ready to play something like a five bishop c5 and start mm -hmm. going after the pawn. Could go either way. Let's yeah, talk. could go either way for sure. And uh, Elin played King H one, Rook G seven. Yeah, she's still, she's still winning. She she just needs to make sure none none of the random counterplay actually lands, but has to be very very good. Like even let's say Rook G one, just trade it off, put the bishop on G three, Knight on F one, and then start pushing. Yeah, about to create the upset of the day. Yeah, Elin and Dutch. also somebody somebody in chat mentioned that Irvin is actually her coach. I don't know if it's true or not, but I generally trust our chat with this yeah. with this type of information. So yeah, it's a. I think it's an additional kind of. Uh, Dharma. Yeah, would be would be particularly important for her. I remember the first game ever I won against my childhood coach. It was. Uh, I still remember that day. That was a good day. <laughs> okay. And that was a what, good day. What was his name again? Uh, you probably don't know him. Uh, it was somebody called Vyacheslav Stashkin. His daughter, you may have seen in junior tournaments. His daughter played in some world juniors. She is a, a decent player. Okay. No, I, I, if you spell it, then I can. <laughs> what, yeah. what, uh, okay. Okay. Later. Okay. Let's, yeah, let's no, look. not, yeah, not, not really, uh, that important. Yeah. Uh, 
And yeah, Ajiban actually found that that tactic that we were talking about, rook c7, bishop g7 is on the board. And unfortunately for Thomas Bertson, like you would like to play something like a6, but there is also this square. The knight is a very and he has he actually played a6. And uh, but Adiban is not going to miss such opportunities. Yeah, yeah. Adiban, sure. Adiban, Adiban knows about the, the knight yeah. jumps for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I he have lives, a feeling it, it, he's it might living be the only thing that wins, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it probably is the only thing that works. You will it, play it for it sure. It does work. It does work 100%. very efficiently. Hundred percent. And Taba mm. Taba against uh, Pehak, which was a game. <laughs> we thought it would be over after twenty moves, but yeah. And actually, I very much like what Taba Taba did after Bishop C one. This is very yeah, clever, yeah. and this is another one uh, of my like whole, uh, pet topics. Is that getting the rooks off the board here is incredibly, incredibly good for Black. So he actually spends a tempo here to go rook d5, rook a5, and to trade on a1. And this makes the passer is much more dangerous and just generally improves his situation a lot. And in the current position, uh, there is a very clever idea of playing yeah. bishop b5. This came over, no? Yeah, bishop b5. And if you have to play c3, you are... I mean, un unfortunately, rook c5 just wins on the spot as well. Like You would be very unhappy in general, but also rook c5 just collects material. And if you have to take on e5, I go rook e8, I pick up on e5, and then we have passers on the queen side, eventually passers on the king side. Has to be more or less completely lost. So Knight e8 is rook c6, by high. the way, which I completely missed, and white is losing. Ha, 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 ha. Is that the game? Oh my, such a drama. A5. And he's gone, he's gone a5, and we now lost. he is apparently just like bishop g4 or something. Such a trick. We all missed it. We all, yeah, like what was winning after a6? Because something was winning here. <laughs> why, why am I such a potser? Something was winning here. How about a5, knight d7, knight b7? Something like this, probably. Yeah, like a5, force black to take, go knight b7, and then take on rook d8, though. Ah, I guess I have a b6 in the end, right? I just go c d, I go d c, and I go a b. Ah, and this passer if rook b eight, rook b eight, rook d eight, yeah. And this passer actually because and he blundered was... again. Let's stick with that game till the, the end of the time control because apparently b a was a blunder. Yeah. So what was winning here? It's so easy to play b a and four. I guess looks very pretty, but maybe it's not the best. I don't know. Um. And and more Whoa. Yeah, but it's very difficult to play. Yeah, they're both so basically time. playing on increment. Yeah. Bo both of them are. So now I think rook d4, bishop g4 looks very, very nasty. Ah, no, bishop c6, sorry. Actually, he wants to take on c6 now, and the, the knight on c5 is hanging. That makes a lot of sense. But what if I just move the hook? Uh, I don't know. So B A rook D four. Let's let's um, show the current position rook D four ninety six. Yeah, ninety six, and uh, yeah, this is completely winning for Black because Black just unpinned everything and has two extra pawns on the A file. After B A, he should have just gone rook D. So he didn't reach the correct square by one square. He should just attack everything. H five is hanging. C six is now hanging because we will be protecting mm. our own rook and. Yeah, this is just fine for white. Okay. Instead of BA, uh, Bishop G4 wasn't that great, but instead of BA, uh, yeah, the engine makes a move, which I think is like very, very difficult to find because moving from one square where it's under attack to a different square where it's under attack is not at all obvious. Yeah, I yeah, once no, lost no, a game no. to Vichy where basically... A very, very large reason for my loss was I specifically went for style points to make a move like this. <laughs> and it turned out that the move is kind of crap. <laughs> so, so I, uh, yeah, I got style points, but no actual points in the, in the standings. Uh, but yeah, I, I just wanted to make a move like that and uh, couldn't stop myself. And okay. And yeah. And now, now you just go like FE. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's just completely winning. Okay. 
Yeah, you can you can still sort of fight after knight c7, but yeah, you should I, you should never save this. And in the masters, what do we have left before we take a break mm -hmm. and come back? Uh, so we are in, the, some in the masters. Of... Yeah, we have this ending, which yeah, is which not is very exciting. I assume it's just a draw. We have this ending, which the engine Good. says is better for white, but not nearly Let's... as much as oh, actually it's growing. Yeah, maybe it is winning. Maybe maybe it is winning as long as we. Magnus Carlsen, cleverly, yeah. who's sitting on winning probably is his who can game it. Looks. Yeah, Magnus has gone for this, which I assume, yeah, just the, the king comes over to the queen side and the game ends because you are never really going to be in time to create counterplay on the other side. Wesley is, yeah, black should hold this. Yeah, black is too active and you, you can never really get to this bishop on c8. You can never really mm -hmm. get any threats going on and... Uh, which apparently, is apparently Jordan is okay now. I wanted to That's... say I like this better than I like the previous position because there's now a second target. But the engine disagrees. The engine says this is manageable. And this is also move 41, so they will get they will get additional time here. While we had the draw uh, in Aronian Paganda and a brilliant win uh, by Anish Giri. Mm -hmm. Some nice prep followed up by uh, some very active and dynamic play will make a uh, short break. Thanks a lot mm -hmm. for watching. And stay tuned for the end of round two. He uh, played the Berlin. Which I sort of expected, but I didn't really know what to do against. Because in reality, very few people do. When we are playing a, an even game against someone of similar strength to us, usually we need to give something in order to obtain the initiative. Just how shrewd and cunning Ali Reza can be, even with uh, very little time. I want to show you a game just to prove that I play these lines that I played against former world number two and a bit of a superstar, Gata Kamsky.
Welcome back uh, to the final segment, I guess, of today's show. Today we are uh, covering the second round of Data Steel 2023 YKZ tournament. Uh, some results so far, more results in the challengers than uh, in the masters. In the masters, we have a, an absolutely fantastic victory by Anish Giri in his game against Gukesh, starting with really, really, you know, top-notch uh, opening idea in a line which I think was supposed to be quite stale and wasn't really supposed to give White much of anything, but not today. Today definitely gave White something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, very impressive, very impressive. By, uh, really very nice game. By, by Anish. And, and a couple of draws. Uh, Fabiano Corona drew against uh, Nodibek Abdusatorov and a draw in a somewhat uneventful game between Livon Aronian and uh, Pragnanda, where uh, the Indian youngster just played very, very solid in an open Spanish committed uh, as far as I could see, just no mistakes whatsoever, and just held uh, in a in a very solid fashion. Uh, so a solid start for him, a solid start for Levon, and we have four games running. Uh, I think the most exciting one and the, the sort of the most unusual one is this position in a game between Dingler and and Parham Maksudlu, where we have this kind of a weird material uh, disbalance or White having four. Currently, four uh, pawns for uh, the bishop, but the king is not entirely safe on h6. Well, black, black is tightening mate in one. Mate huh? in one, yeah. <laughs> That's and uh, and also this pawn on f2 is a bit sort of further back than everybody else. Like if it was closer connected to to the other two, yeah, I think it would be five, quite obviously. Yeah, if it's on f5, black resigns. But yeah, uh, because it's on f2, you definitely have some hopes and. We were discussing this with, with uh, Laurent and Satiris in the break. And I also, as is often the case, you can't avoid it. In the break, you check at least a little bit what the engine uh, said about the, speak, the moves. Speak, speak for yourself. Yeah, yeah about <laughs> the moves you already covered. And it actually likes this idea of King H5 and Rook takes F7. But it doesn't give White any kind of a decisive winning advantage in any. Which is weird. Yeah. yeah. So it, how? Wh what was the save? Show me. Uh, I'm not sure about yeah. the save, but like after Rook A7, it does some clever things here with Black and doesn't actually lose. Somehow, we don't really need to go too ah. much into details. I've switched it off already, but I assumed that there was some kind of a clever way here to to get an advantage, which uh, the engine would basically classify as a decisive advantage, but. Not that I could see, at least not on the sort of the onboard engine that I'm consulting. I'm not running any kind of a supercomputer on okay. this. Uh, and the current position, once again, yeah, the evaluation here is extremely inconclusive. Uh, I think because plus one could mean anything. It could mean yeah. F and H. You end up with mm -hmm. uh, F and H against. Uh, uh, in a hook and game, uh, which is a draw, depending where stands the king and so on. So, um, yeah, we will find out. Uh, it's a very interesting end game. Mm -hmm. uh, you're absolutely right. Magnus Carlsen, according to CC, is on uh, plus eight. Yeah. So, um, we not think, surprising. Yeah. Not we surprising. think uh, he just runs with the king to the, the queen side. And, well, I mean, you, you still have to. Like the, the question okay, is, what do you do? What do you do in in, in a situation like this, right? Yeah, this you don't has want to, to give be, this has to be the question. Immediately. You can postpone. You can postpone this decision for a while by playing rook five yourself. But the point is that you give and ah, asking no, okay. white, asking white to spend some time to even you know line up this attack on f seven. Like you'll have to play. I'm guessing yes. f three, king d six, king e three, king c six, king e four. Uh, now important not to blunder this. Yeah, this, this would be a go. bit of a problem. <laughs> But this rook g5 of, is so simple. Yeah, but we go we go rook g5, I guess, and white goes, I guess, back. And now we go king b5, rook f4. And yeah, we want so much time that I assume maybe even a4, rook f7, a3 is now winning. Yeah. Just planning to go rook b king b4, rook a5, and, and g2 is play. also yeah, g2 is also hanging as a kind of a, an additional safety measure for, for black. So yeah, I I assume he wins. I assume he, he wins. He did quite play hard. rook f five actually. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, we have uh, Richard Rapport against Jordan Forest. Richard was pressing basically the whole game, 
but it seems that uh, Jordan is pretty active by now. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come a, in and the, the point on H4 was worrying me a little bit, but I guess why just goes for some kind of rookie seven, yeah. rookie seven, rookie five uh counterplay if you come in with knight of three. I probably start with king g6 here, but Hope I guess we go rook d5, right? And then we oh, just five, yeah. we, we just try to move the bishop away somewhere and attack the pawn on b5. And yeah, white gets a little bit too active here to. I like rook d8 to be to be fair. Or rook d8, d8 yeah. Threatening rook b8, very simple. If you go knight c6, mm. uh... no, I want I want to go knight f3 in all of these positions. Yeah, my, my plan is to go knight f3 and pick up this one. Okay, and uh, rook b8, you take and you pretend you have a passer on it. Yeah, and I'm saying my passer is slightly to... more slightly yeah, yeah. more important than your. Bishop b3, yeah, bishop maybe is maybe the other square, maybe yeah, knight f5 yeah. or g2. But then, honestly, even even something like this, yeah, 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 we're not going to be we're not going to be losing very many of these with white, I guess. And there is also this position in the game between um, no, Wesley and Arjun Ergaisi, where white is uh, pressing, but white is still white is still pretending not in, bit, not but... not not enough material probably. Yes, yeah, four will fall. Shouldn't be enough. Yeah, and it I was briefly very... kind of worried about rook c four, but I think the point is. Yes, white is maybe getting to the h5 pawn, but the black will just like we have this counterplay. Yeah. And bishop after bishop f7, seven. yes, you can put the bishop on f7, but you can never really take on h5 without dropping the pawn on b3. So this is also, I think, a very comfortable draw uh, for black. And yeah, I, I don't know how to even, you know, generate a question. Like you can play something like this. Uh, creating a threat of rook d8, but then I, I think the simplest is just to play rook h3 takes on b3, and I don't even know if white can get rook and bishop, which is also a draw, but I don't even know if you can get rook and bishop. Uh, like, I don't know, king, king g2, rook b3, king. like rook d8. I mean, the bishop d7 I can take, and rook d8, the problem for white is like, we, we may Oof. have lost the game now. Yeah, rook d8, rook d5 check, yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, there might not be a draw available anymore <laughs> if you do something as stupid as this. So it looks like Arjun will, uh, in the end, defend uh, defend this this game and and hold it, which once again leaves us with this really really weird end game. And I wanted to say that uh, plus one, I think, translates into human language in this position as draw in a game between engine and engine, and probably white wins more than black draws. In games within humans, because I think it's just easier to play with white and white runs and zero risk and black still runs quite significant risks. And breaking news in the challenger, Aileen Roberts just mm. beat, just defeated uh, Erwin Lamy, one of the top players in the Netherlands for so long, for so many years. So this is really a breaking news for, for it is it is a chess. fantastic game by by Aileen, yeah. And just a brief moment once again, yeah. just to show how cruel chess is. In this position, the variation is like plus four, but King H1, for this one specific moment, if if Erwin realized he's supposed to play Rook F7 and not Rook G7, it becomes a bit tricky, weirdly, because I don't know why Rook F1 is bad. But the point is, if you play Bishop G3, which is like the most normal move in the world, yeah. machine goes Queen G5, uh -huh. you have to play Rook E1, machine goes H5. And suddenly, this counterplay with H4 and Rook F2 coming in is shockingly difficult to parry. And the evaluation just plummets to like plus one from plus four. It becomes very unclear if, if you're okay. winning at all, uh, which is so unfair because King H1 looks like such a normal move. And she won very comfortably after it as well. Like she played King H1. I assume Irvin also didn't have very much time. He played Rook G7. And from here, she gave him absolutely no hopes whatsoever. Like these, these are just queens, basically. They nice go game. forward and they cannot be stopped. But nice game, such decision by by Erwin Lamy to to close to mm -hmm. close down the, the, the queen side uh, in the early early middle game. Uh, generally, it's how you get counter play. But uh, yeah, maybe it was it was yeah, hoping in all that these positions. Like it's very very usual to actually play yeah. something like rookie b8 followed by yeah, bishop, bishop c8 6, and then b4. Yeah, yeah, and, and knight c5. This is like a very very normal thing to do because then white has to care a little bit about the queen side. And the way, I, yeah, he just he just went a five a four here, absolutely voluntarily closing everything down, and leaving basically a, a, a 
a, a one half of the board game. Yeah. Like the, the game yeah. is just going to be all of it will be here. Yeah, and and, and he which got was mated. Banias. Yeah, yeah, he just got mated. So very impressive achievement by by Elin. Um, what else in the in the challenges? Yeah, many different results, but uh, we still have this King's Gambit, which yeah, the King's Gambit is now is... yeah, it's 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 very very depressing for White yeah, now because yeah. uh, Bishop e five, he hasn't played Bishop e five immediately. He played Rook e eight, uh, and then Bishop e five. But White still took on e five, which honestly surprises me a little bit. Here, I think I would play c three. I would try to keep the bishops alive, but he, he took anyway. And yeah, we have this position which you can continue, you know, fighting, you know, finding moves not to resign for a while. But I think you know you're losing with White. Yeah. Like you know that this is not possible to save this. Like the king goes to d6, you never have any counterplay here. And then eventually things start getting pushed on the king's side. It's and terrible. the A-pawn continues being a huge problem. So yeah, I don't see I don't see how you ever save this with White. While in uh, Adiban uh, Bertson, it was we we noticed uh, we we were watching a very messy time scramble uh, mm -hmm. with uh, pieces uh, hanging for both sides and yeah, it, uh, very strange sequence there because uh, Adiban absolutely correctly uh, evaluated the position after Bishop D7 as winning for himself because of this tactic, specifically because of this very nice intermediate move Knight B5 followed by Rook takes D7 after Rook C8. Or even CD7, but Rook D7, I think, looks cleaner. And then uh, Thomas Berenson found this idea of A6. And both Adiban and myself very and confidently my, played Knight E8 here. Well. Yeah, blundering Rook takes E6. Now Black is basically winning. Adiban found a way to play A5 here. And the only move that wins here immediately is the move Rook C6, E6, which I think is extremely difficult to find. The okay. second best move is rook g6, which is also, I think, impossible to play. Like, who puts a rook here? <laughs> yeah. Like, how, how do you ever put a rook on such a horrible square? But it's just I... very important to create a threat of rook takes d7. And actually, this is the only square where it's not hanging. I mean, you have, you have a main yeah, choice, yeah. Main, main choice for your rook, but you can. Yeah. You may. Oh, it's very difficult, I agree. But uh, yeah, this is uh... the only square where it's not, where it's not hanging. So, uh, so instead, kind of instead, black played b takes a5, and now. A move I'm actually kind of surprised that Iban did not see. The move rook d5, because it, it's such an obvious, uh, like it should be very attractive to you to just attack everything on the board. You are also attacking the pawn with the bishop on h5. You are protecting your rook in case you have to take on c6. It's no longer hanging. And the best line, according to the engine here, is something like rook cc8. We take on c5, we take on c5, we take on h5. And after king f8, we can make a draw by simply taking on a5, taking on a6. Uh, so it's just a draw after rook d5, immediate zeros. Instead, he played rook d6. And finally, uh, Thomas Berenson found a way to unpin his pieces by playing knight e6. And Adiban will now try to save this endgame, but it's going to be a, you know, very much an uphill struggle because uh, one a pawn probably will get picked up, but the other one always survives here. And outside passer, bishop against knight on two flanks. Generally, these types of positions tend to be completely hopeless. And we have another game um, going on between Ivic and Sindarov. He collected the C pawn. Yeah, we, we yeah. left it here, and he did, he did play f5. Here he played queen d6. And it looks a bit scary to allow this, but the knight on d2 is just so far away from any kind of good squares that he, I think, correctly assessed that he will be able to get to the pawn. Knight b3, bishop f6. Obviously important to stop knight d4. But now he is threatening bishop b5. And also he is sort of threatening to play maybe a6 and b5. Or as happened in the game, a5, b5, and those got traded. And yeah, I'm guessing nobody is really better here. Um, you probably yeah. have to be a little bit careful with white not to uh, simplify into exactly this kind of an endgame with knight against bishop. But with the king on h6... Honestly, even yeah. that, even that doesn't look that scary. Like if the king was, if you imagine, let's just manufacture something. Yeah, like I don't know, h3, queen c1, queen f1, queen f1, king f1. If black in this position already plays king f7, I would honestly be a little bit worried with white, because those positions you can definitely lose uh, with the a pawn still on the board. The black king gets to d5, and then you start getting pushed around a little bit. 
But with the king on h6, it will take black so long to get it into yeah, some, yeah, yeah. some kind of good squares that even that probably is completely fine. Uh, queen d5 played. Yeah, with the king on h6, maybe you actually slightly prefer white. But I think I, I still... Would actually pick white, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I think draw is still favored. Of course. Of course. So let's have a look at... Uh, at uh, maybe Ding, Ding played the move or... In the Masters group, of course, the main the main event, even if the big group is gives one spot for the Masters group of next year and many of uh, young Ivic against Sindarov. Now the game we are just checking Sindarov is um is an Olympic champion, while Ivic uh beat some very, very strong player in the last World Cup. Very dangerous player. So both of them are up and coming uh strong players, simply. And yep. Sindarov already 26.54, I mean, on the eyes, clearly. Absolutely, yeah. Well, very, very interesting uh, generation uh, yeah. of uh, of uh, Uzbeki players uh, coming up. Dogo has returned from his walk. Very happy. It's been a short walk, Dogo. Why, why has your walk <laughs> been so short? I mean, I, I know why. It's really, really horrible outside, so yeah, I'm... This is not it's really a criticism. It's like minus. He's basically yeah. swimming outside. Everything. Two days ah. ago, it was like minus twenty and snow everywhere, and it just all of it just melted. So it's okay. It's it's like a combination river and a skating ring. So it's not a lot of fun to walk right. Now. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, that. Uh, so yeah, he's he's back and asking for food again. <laughs> anyway. Uh, a question in chat, which I think, you know, um, I don't know if uh, we should maybe mention uh, today might be, as I understand it, the last time we do this together, right? This is the last time we do it yeah, together. So we should, we should cover That's... a lot of topics. <laughs> we should cover a lot of topics which uh, people are interested in before we, we unfortunately part company. And there was a question in chat, which I think you probably covered uh, on the podcast, but not with me. Uh, do you think Magnus will play the candidates? Do you think ah, um, do you think he will uh, try to requalify and then see how he feels? I said in the podcast that I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be shocked because uh, he clearly likes the candidates. He thinks uh, it's a very interesting tournament because while well, you play seven of the best players and you play them twice, so um, what's not to like? Uh, there's Less preps than for match uh, mm -hmm. needed because you you will uh, change your 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 opponents uh, every day. So it's not impossible, but um, then it would be a bit funny, yeah, you know, to 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 win the candidates and then not to play the match. <laughs> but that yeah, might I be. I think uh, like it, it's it's sort of similar to how I felt about him playing the World Cup, and uh, yeah, I mean his participation in anything makes the tournament infinitely more interesting but also yeah. if he if he plays the candidates and then doesn't play the match it just creates this really weird dynamic which i don't think is honestly very enjoyable don't 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 blame the players blame the rules i mean this should prevent uh, someone who is already qualified in my opinion this should prevent someone who is already qualified to to participate in a qualifying uh, cycle. I, think so, I mean, yeah. that, that doesn't I think make so. any sense. Of course, on the other side, uh, you can say for the World Cup, it's great. And it's much easier to find sponsors when you have uh, Magnus Carlsen involved, as we uh, are learning um, from the experience we, have, uh, we are having now, where they are struggling, apparently, to, to find a, a city for the match and a sponsor. Because when you get Magnus, it's... When you get the best player in the world, it's uh, in the old days it was Kasparov. It's uh, it's easier to to find to find sponsors. So um, it's not impossible, and there is also I mean it's not impossible that he wins the candidates, plays the candidates, but I don't think it's likely, and that he wins them and then doesn't play so much. That would be really uh... yeah. I I don't I don't know how like I no longer really have any yeah. claim to any kind of an insight so I don't, I don't know how he feels uh i i think uh you know hot take of the day coming up i think if he plays he is a favorite to win <laughs> <laughs> uh 
<laughs> incredibly, <laughs> incredibly hot take right there. But whether he actually wants to play, because I think, I mean, even he must understand that this is, you, you know, it's a, it's a little bit damaging to, uh, you know, to the cycle to continue doing this. And, uh, you know, by a little bit, I mean a lot. <laughs> but it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not great for the cycle when, when this continues happening. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm talking for myself, but I, I think it doesn't, uh, it's not his problem. Uh, I, I don't think he thinks it's his problem. And if there's an interesting tournament for, uh, and if he's qualified for it, I'm sure he will consider it. Will no, of course he will. Of course he will consider it. Yeah. I mean, will he play or not? That I have no, no clue. So, and nobody, I mean, Maybe yeah, he has a crew, but uh, probably is the only one. Mm, yeah, uh, so probably, yeah. <laughs> so hard to say, but uh, we'll find out. It's a big comeback, well, you know. We'll, the, yeah, the, the yeah, we'll dance, find out soon enough. Yeah, you know, many many comes back. Yeah, in the history of sports, so not impossible. Mm. In the meantime, this game finished in a draw, as you can see. Uh, after uh, rook d4, uh, Wesley played rook c6, and after rook takes h4. I guess he realized here that after bishop a6, black can actually do this and just draw incredibly comfortably immediately. So he played bishop c4 instead. But this just does not very much. And black now is equal material, has an outside passer of his own, just a very, very safe uh, draw for everybody. So this game is over. Uh, this game is progressing very, very slowly. Uh, Richard, after some thought, actually quite a lot of thought, he left himself. 23 minutes from the 50 he started with. He played rook b2 check. I'm not sure what that does. Even king f1 looks okay to me. King e3 also probably just completely okay, which is what uh, uh, Jordan chose. And he goes king e6 very quickly. I guess he is trying to uh, just get the king to f5 and then maybe create some, some threats. But I don't know what those threats are. And people are saying Keimer is putting up a, a good fight. Yeah, I mean, I don't think much changed. I think... The good thing for Keimer here is that he managed to prevent Magnus from a kind of an easy conversion. Yeah. And he did it in a kind of a strange way. He played a three king d6, rook c4. And my I question is, is six, yeah. my question is, why are we not playing king d5 here? I guess king d3, right? Because otherwise, king d5, we are making progress. We are either. Yeah, okay, four king c6, yeah? Yeah, okay, four king c6 is exactly what we want. Yeah, we yeah. want the king on d5 with the rook still on f5. So. There has to be a reason. I guess it's king d3, and after rook g5, he didn't like something. Maybe rook f4. I don't know. So he played rook c5 to uh, prevent this, and now after rook f4, he is once again faced with a decision. f7 is hanging. Uh, you can abandon it and start pushing, but that is a very, very kind of an all-in try to convert, because if, if that doesn't work tempo, like move by move, you have thrown away all of your advantage. Uh, you can play a five, but then you're allowing this count to play. So what he's doing now, he gave a check on a five, which I think is a very useful thing in all of these kinds of end games where, yeah, to make yeah, it costs you nothing, and it gives it gives white a choice, which yeah. is not. I, I think here it's, it's pretty side, obvious. Yeah. yeah, I think here nobody ever goes king of yeah. two. I think king of yeah. two is a very strange move to choose, but in general, just giving a check like this yeah. is pretty much always going to be a good idea. Just to, you know, create some uncertainty in the defender's mind. King d3 and uh, Magnus played the move king e6, yeah. Yeah. Makes... And I guess maybe what he wants is now with the king on d3, maybe he wants to go rook g5. Exactly, exactly. And, on g2. and ask if you want to give up on g2. Which you certainly don't want. Well, uh, unless you take a5. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My, my question would be like, I play, um, like, rook my, my question is, what is the pass? Yeah, rook a4. Rook g5, king e3. Yeah, something yeah like, like something like this. Yeah. And I, I don't take on g2. Yeah, okay. we never take on g2, right? Take on g2 probably actually leads to a draw. So, how do we win this? At some point, I uh, my guess is that we'll have to give F, the f pawn, no? But. Mm. Let's yeah. say king d6. So you go hook f4. Yeah, this happened. So we are planning to go. Are we playing rook g5 here? I would think so. I guess so, right? King e3, I suppose. 
King D6, King D6. Rook F4. Um, are we going in now? Probably are, right? Let's try. Yeah, King, King C5, Rook F7, A4. Ah, you don't want to take G2. I think I will okay. always yeah, yeah, have, yeah, time have time for that. I think yeah. I will, because King, White never has time to play King of 2. Yeah, yeah. I cannot imagine White ever having time to play King of 2. But this becomes like this becomes a straight up. Yeah, I fall, I fall G two K five. Exactly. Yeah, I think we're winning. I think we're winning specifically because Rook G six is very strong, uh, and then Rook A six and A three. I think this probably wins. But if you if we play A three Rook H six, I wouldn't at all be shocked to find out. Ah, no, no, this loses. Yeah, this is lo ah. Ah, Rook G six. I mean, okay, yeah, so. it's it's an instructive thing to to yeah. realize yeah, that this wins. But we're getting very carried away. And Magnus just yeah. goes the other direction. Somewhat okay. surprisingly, it just goes this direction. What does very this quickly, do? very quickly? Yeah. Yeah, and as as is correctly pointed out to us by people smarter than us, what candidates? Fida doesn't even have a host for the match. <laughs> so the next candidate feels like a very <laughs> distant dream. Yeah. This is also a very good point. Yeah. If we you know, we obviously there is a very, very important person missing right now on air for this discussion. Uh, and uh, more shout outs <laughs> to our to our very, very good friends. Yeah. Uh, hello, PH. I miss you. We love you. And and so on. Well, so, to, to, I mean, please, I wish to decide <laughs> my, myself from what uh, PH is saying. I'm still dreaming of this uh, appeals committee job. So. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. If that match but, is happening, uh, I'm a candidate. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if if we wanted to fill some airtime, we could also, of course, discuss the fact that this is middle of January, and the match is supposed to be in April. And yeah, and so and far, so far, I, I'm sure there are some, you know, no, the rumors, are... the rumors are well, Mexico, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, it doesn't seem to materialize, so I don't know. Um, I thought that China would uh, would find. Yeah, some I, I also way. heard that like China is always some kind of a backup, ah, know, okay. backup solution which exists, but which feels. Um, I mean, I'm sure. Generally, sort of neutral territory is always best because mm -hmm. it feels that. You know, you're not giving a player in the match. I mean, I mean, I wanted to say advantage, but I, honestly, for me, I'm not sure if it would be an advantage. No. no. Uh, in fact, for me personally, I think it would be a problem more than more when than. When was the last else. time? The last time was Chennai 2013, I think, mm -hmm. and it was not really uh, any. Didn't help much, uh, Vichy. Um. So I don't know what we we should we should check the stats, but uh, okay. Before it was played only, uh, uh, I mean, mainly between uh, Soviet players. So yeah, I mean, obviously, if, if, yeah. if both players are from the same country, you don't have this issue. But yeah, uh, from two different countries, I don't know. I, we should check the stats, but I don't think it helps anyone. Topalov lost in Sofia against um, against Vichy. Mm -hmm. So um, recently, uh, it didn't help much. But mm. I understand. I understand your um, your issue. Uh, that's yeah. It creates something something uh, weird atmosphere, uh, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I'm not even sure a Dink personally would would you know love to have it in China because I think uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure on him as is, and that probably gets increased like tenfold if the match gets hosted in China. Uh, and for him, you know, playing the first ever title match of his career, I think it's going to be difficult already. So I'm, I'm not even sure he would necessarily, you know, privately be so happy about uh, this additional source of uh, source of pressure. Something weird. So, is so, so, so you think? So you mean for Nepo? Okay, last last question. So you mean for Nepo? Such. Uh... You, you think it's preferable that he had this experience of, of playing the match, even if it was a disaster, basically? I mean, I still go... I still think it gives you absolutely okay. uh, irreplaceable experience. Okay. 
Uh, okay, even if it's some even, negative, even if it's some even if it's negative su- su- such a traumatic experience as it was for him, yeah, okay. I still think it's probably uh, if you can sort of put it behind you, uh, it it does it does give you a tremendous amount of uh, experience which you can't get anywhere else. But it really uh-huh. is a very unique thing that. But if you can, you, you say something fantastic. If yeah, it's a, it's it a big deal. Yeah. It, <laughs> it is a very big deal. Of sure. course. At least uh, the good thing for Nepo is it's a different opponent, which yeah. is which mm-hmm. is I think quite good for him. But okay, uh, let's 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 get back to 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 chess maybe yeah. later. As for as for the chess, yeah, I wanted to say that I, I'm I'm a bit confused by this. I have a feeling. Let me let me try and uh, uh, click and unclick something because I'm sure there must be more moves in this game, right? Yeah, that's weird. Let's have a look at Ding. He's still thinking. Oh, it's amazing. It. Yeah, he's still thinking. He's still, he's still thinking in that position. Yeah. I mean, obviously, is still... obviously, he's on, not on zero minutes, but. Uh... So, what are the options? I mean, King H5 is the first. King H5 yeah. and Rook F5 check, I think. Rook C7 check also exists, but actually, yeah, this is. Yeah. The reason I so confidently said Rook F5 and King H5 is because they've had this position for so long that I actually had it on my screen during the break so i know what the engine says at least at, at kind of low depth so what what, what does it rook say five, the rook five is supposedly the best okay Fair but enough. why not rook c7 is actually very very interesting to me why not rook c7 where does the king go e6 i guess that's uh, <laughs> no but now you know yeah g8 uh g8 i think it's probably g8 actually okay uh but yeah, and now I need to find some kind of a quiet move because a six would be six check is not very attractive and we can't really push anything, but I want to find a way to, like maybe I go g6 and h5 and I want to provoke Bishop you. takes a5? Yeah, bishop a5 and I want to play, ah, rook is hanging, yeah. Uh, but I guess I give a check and I go that's, four. That's, do you believe in that? From which side? I mean, how can it be winning? I mean, the issue is, well, I mean, why why can't it be winning? <laughs> so what's your what's your what's your like? How how are you defending this? Are you defending it like this? Yeah, exactly. Maybe, Actually, yeah, yeah. I, I, I I didn't find out how to to get my 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 bishop to the long diagonal, but now if I can get uh, so, it, I'm but basically there. we are just doing this, and then we are chilling. Yeah. F6 bishop. F6, I can play h4 bishop. and we're still chilling and we're always ready to snap on f6. Yeah. yeah. And I think. Okay. But you can go king g4, of course, and h5, h6, king g4. But I will give some checks. No, I'm talking. Yeah. We, yeah. The moment it the moment it shows its head, you know, we we immediately starts. That's why I should probably check. keep uh, my my bishop on a1, b2, something far mm. away. Um, yeah, but it's still very very curious that. He thanks pay- for for this long because I think it's already been like. Let me what try and it? find out somewhere because it's uh, actually it's a minimum uh, thirty minutes. Yeah, I mean on on chess twenty four it says move time one hour eleven seconds, which if he had no. more than, I can't remember it's how possible, much time huh? he had after the move forty, but it's it's actually possible. It feels like that actually, yeah. Uh, because I think we went on a break. It was maybe eight of. It's not an hour, but uh, it's like I don't know, forty-five minutes at least. Uh, because I think we went on a break. It was eight or five or something. My time, six or five your time, and it's now more or less an hour later. Uh, and yeah, people are saying he has six minutes left. So yeah, like six minutes left. Yeah, leaving himself six minutes here is. I I do not endorse this. No. Even if you're not sure what the decision is, just pick something and play it. This will this will be a very very difficult endgame. And There's no way you can calculate it to the end. And he's annoyed. You're, you're leaving yourself no time for more difficult decisions. Yeah, I, I, this I don't really agree with. And Max Zulu is just chilling, waiting. Anyway, you can't do much. I mean, you have move forty, you just relax a bit. It's it's fair enough. Uh, while uh, Magnus Carlsen. Uh, he's on plus nine, according to Cece. Uh, that's what they say on the chat. So I guess 
Yes, now to find the evaluation is not changing, but it's not really improving actually. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, the good thing for him is that he can basically, you know, switch between plans forever because White never has. Uh, until he decides on something, White will be passing. White, if we talk about the Magnus endgame, like until Magnus decides what he is going to give up to start pushing the A-pawn, White has no active plan. So you can switch between running this direction, going rook g5. You can continue switching between those things for as long as you like. But eventually you have to pick a side, yeah. Is it completely stupid to go, let's say, I go h4? Okay. Rook e8. Ah. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, probably you don't have... Probably stupid. Um, just to get sure, my own behind. Yeah. And then I'm to come sure. with the king... I mean, actually, the rook behind the pawn is always uh, key, uh, obviously, in, in mm. rook and games. Yeah, this is, this but, is actually a... but h4 you can ignore as well. We can but also maybe, try and ignore, yeah. Maybe h3 will come. I don't know. Um, yeah, this is a good point. It's a good point. I don't know. I don't know. It's a move that comes to mind. Uh, I don't think it will be played, but uh, it's not impossible. Maybe I can prepare, let's say, rook b5 first. Sorry. Yeah, and maybe not. now it's four. And, and the like if or King G5 first, I could have played. Mm. King G5 if I H4. Yeah, I still don't know what the threat is if we continue ignoring it, but mm -hmm. no, me too. Yeah, he's going rook g5. I don't know what that signifies. Like we've sort of been there. To a degree, I assume Winston just blitzes out King E3. There's really not very much for Winston to. Uh... Mr. Ding, please play a move. You make yeah, me nervous. It really is time to 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 actually. King H5 um, played, move, yeah. which is not. So the... King H5 is fine. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I don't think there is a huge difference between the all. They're all pretty much the same evaluation. Let's look at this clock. That's crazy. Don't do that at home. You shouldn't spend one hour on one move. Unless you are... Uh, oh, is, is it time to say hi to Sasha? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sasha, don't do that ever again, please. I wonder how many times Sasha Getschuk did, did that. One hour on one move. In his mm. career. Probably a few times a year, no? Yeah. Apparently, you cannot actually let us take on G2. Yeah, I, I, chat was saying Rook A2 is the uh, only move. So this is just completely winning because it gets to H2. Mm -hmm. And then you can't, I assume you just can't touch it and you lose, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, that's That makes like sense. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So you okay, have so... to play Rook A2, but what does it change <sighs> from our viewpoint? Do we ever try this? <laughs> I guess I mean King E3, ah. right? Like doesn't really do very much if we don't want it to do anything. Are you sure I couldn't snap on A A5? I mean, of course you could. Okay, so okay, seven just a five, yeah. You yeah, I wanted to go F5, put the king on G3, and claim that okay. this is an improvement. I don't know if it's an improvement. I just want to. I think I think I think you're right. I think it's a very good point. Uh, yeah. Okay. Surprising. Um, yeah, but the thing is. You you have King E three, which basically drops everything back. Like mm -hmm. we can, we can get here, but we've been here. Yes, okay. Let's come with the king. Now you have you, you, your hook stuck on A two. How do you create this hook F four counterplay? Ah, yeah. No, but maybe with the king on E six, this tactic no longer works. Right? You have to maybe have the king on G six because now, if you right. do the same, it doesn't get to H two uh, anymore. Ah, uh, you could you could as well play a hook A six check. Oh yeah, all that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, this course. is this is just like I would like to talk about something else because I feel like such an idiot discussing this rook endings. It's just like <laughs> it's so embarrassing. No, but rook a2, it's nice to know that rook a2 is the only move, which mm -hmm. probably Vincent. Uh, yeah, I mean it's still losing according to according to the the super. Yeah, I mean, it's the only move to, 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 to continue a bit, yeah. Mm. Um yeah, um and Ding played some move. Played a couple of moves. Yeah, there were some moves there. 
So he's back for food, yeah? Yeah, of course he is. But just for food, like you see, he he immediately yeah. immediately abandons me. With Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eating yeah. any more food? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are giving him a lot, actually. In my non-expert opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay. Uh, so this is what we got to in 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 Ding's game. He obviously would like for Black to take on a five with the bishop because it misplaces the bishop quite a great deal. And now I guess we can. We can I'm not do. Your... Sure, what we do here? We can do your take. Okay, seven. No. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. We of course we do. Yeah, but is this winning? Maybe it is. Yeah, we go king g six. Yeah. Should before we take take and we go king h seven, and this is very easily winning actually, because we get the the pawns like with the king on h yeah, seven yeah, we always yeah, win. Uh, yeah. So you cannot. Maybe you can. You cannot at all take on, take on a five with the bishop. If I ah, take okay, on G... first of all, we have to mention that this. Exists. Yeah, yeah, that, I wanted to mention that. It's a door. Is it with the king yeah. cut off on the back rank? Yeah. Uh... I mean, you, if, you... The if, if the pawns were already on f5 and h5, I'm pretty sure this is winning, but they're not. So, like, once again, I feel you should I... know. You studied. You are supposed to to have studied that when you were ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Supposed to is is a very good way to describe it. Let me just. <laughs> I mean. We live, in, Vaz, yeah? Yeah, yeah. We, we live in the we live in the enlightened age, so I can actually just ask. Uh, yeah, this is winning, yeah. Okay. Well, I this know. is this is winning. Uh you you can't very easily uh simplify when, when the king is cut off on the background. Okay. I was kind of yeah, suspicious because my my very, very light knowledge of this endgame does include the warning not to do it when your king is not. Yeah, I active mean. at all. So, uh, uh, chat, so chat says can... bishop e one. Chat says bishop e one is the only. Move. I was thinking, ah, okay, bishop, but it makes a lot of sense actually. You cannot go f four. That's the world point of that. Can I go? No, I cannot even go a six because takes king uh, six maybe for now. And bishop f two, rook f seven. Yeah, this is what I was kind of hoping. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's this too was, cheap. That's not yeah, fair. That's was, not fair. After this five was hours, my, my one is... big hope. Yeah. No, this is not fair. No, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this is really too cheap. I mean, please behave. I, I want to fall into some traps, but should be a bit more sophisticated. So, um, what do I do here? Okay, five f four. I don't think like eight maybe for now. Think... Yeah, and try to ah, take on the next move. Uh -huh. And if I play rook f7, my pieces are kind of weirdly placed, right? I can take on a5, a4, F4? and then something. I don't know. Yeah, if you can name Check. It. Is this lost? This might be a draw, actually, because the king doesn't get to h7. This might be a draw. Like, I just go king f8, put it on g8, and chill. Some position. Are you sure? Some position five, like this. I go yeah. to f6. Ah, you... H h4, h5, h6, f6. Is that winning? Is it? I don't know. Uh... Why are they asking? f6, king f5? It's nothing, huh? No, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure this is winning. I have 7, now I'm winning. Are you? Why? King e6? Ah, King F. Ah, King G six. Oh boy, so I'm not sure you are. I'm not sure you no, are. No, King F six. Yeah? yeah, King F six. Bishop F eight. Yeah, I just put the bishop on F eight and and we chill. Yeah, sort of chill. I mean, it's not very beautiful, but <laughs> we are kind of chilling. <laughs> Honestly, even something like Bishop A three might okay, be a draw because okay, you okay. have no threats. Uh -huh. G six, King F six, G seven. Yeah, I, just yeah, check, I, have, yeah. I have Bishop B two check in the end there. Yeah. Maybe you're right. What can I say? Um, yeah, maybe it's a draw. I don't know. I, I never studied such... Uh, uh, see, I, I always thought I would figure it out. Yeah, uh, you, you feel like you'll figure it out. Yeah, because but... it's not too difficult and, uh, well... So Bishop E1, yeah? Yeah, and we... Yeah, yeah, uh, four minutes, yeah, four things. Uh, oh... Our longtime viewer, uh, Nick, says three pawns versus bishop here is a table draw. I still remember it from other Bach books. Uh, yeah, so see, there are some people who actually read endgame books. I am not one of them. I did, but I forgot everything. <laughs> yeah. 
So, I mean, you should do it like every couple of years, I guess. You really should, yeah, but very few because people it's do. Because it's so, it's so easy to forget everything. Mm. Yeah. In the meantime, uh, we have, we've been sort of ignoring this end game and but yeah, we, what we, 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 said, got, yeah? we got the, exactly the structure what change that we were discussing. Now, rook b5, I guess he goes king g4 and we go rook b8. <laughs> This should be okay, right? There is no way this is. By the way, how stupid is Bishop D4 instead of Rook B5 just to? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. just to just to take know, this one and then to, take to make sure I'm yeah, just yeah. cleaning the wall board. But takes King. Yeah, maybe it's stupid. Yeah, yeah. Rook B4 is annoying, right? Yeah, yeah After Bishop F6, stupid. like Knight G2 and Knight F4. Yeah, no, okay, okay. I this might be that. regrettable. Yeah. Okay. Let's not overthink uh, things. Yeah, bishop b seven maybe, with the same idea. And actually, now you don't have knight g six, right? Mm -hmm. Bishop b seven might might actually be a very good move. Yeah, just pick this one up and go from there. No, because actually Jordan is thinking now, so mm -hmm. uh, that's yeah. why. Uh, uh, question is how, bishop, how easy bishop is for Magnus to convert. I don't think it's very easy. He played f6, which is a kind of a small change of structure. I don't know what that does necessarily, but um, does it make it easier for him to run? Why do I like, know? like, I mean, I'm making bad moves. I just want to, like, as a, as a kind of a proof of concept. Um, I want to go, you know, I want to go King D7 because after Rook F4, I will play Rook E6. I want yeah, my yeah. This is exactly what I was going to ask. Yeah, if this is yeah. like Rook F5. Now Rook E6. Now Rook E6. Yeah, but like how easy is this? A4, King C3, A4, King C1, yeah? King C2 oh. and King B1, yeah. Maybe it's a draw. I know, draw, this is, yeah. it's a draw, yeah. I mean, it's just a draw now. No, so, I, yeah, it's a, I think the answer is it's very, very easily winning if you're a computer. But if you're not yeah. a computer, even for Magnus, I think it's quite clear he is not entirely sure you think how to win this i think he will win this because uh as is often the case in like every position like this it's just much easier to ask questions than to answer them so eventually just you know vincent just makes a mistake somewhere and and then the conversion becomes very technical but i think from the time magnus is spending and also from the moves he is making i think he is not entirely sure he's not spending so much time though not so much time but still like for a rook ending with two two extra pawns, I think if he knew exactly how he's going to win mm -hmm. it, he would have won it already. That's tough. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like he is not a hundred percent sure. I still think he will win because, as I said, uh, defending is always going to be a lot trickier than uh, than attacking. And uh, in the meantime, Max Udlu blundered according to Twitch chat because they said Bishop E one only move. Bishop C three is on the board. Yeah, I have no idea why it's bad, but yeah, the engine like severely disagrees with this. I guess ah, I guess the point is now after king g6, he wants to take on a5, but we go maybe f4, rook a6, king h7, and we get this set up with the pawn on g7, and we can push, yeah. Oh no, 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 no. We could we can hang on. King g6, rook a5. I don't know. Why is um, this so horrible? Yeah, I don't understand. F four. Well, what's what's wrong with F four? Yeah, I mean check, and you, you want to put it on H seven or? Yeah, sure. Some busy winning to me. Rook A four. Huh. I don't know. Like, yes, it looks very attractive, but I don't no. understand. Like, the, the the problem with this position is that it's so difficult for me to tell them apart. Like, maybe this is winning after like. Mm. Can this be winning? No, right? Bishop takes f6 is a draw. Is it? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure takes... it is, yeah? Because it's a, it's a wrong side. Yeah, this is losing, yeah. We're losing this because rook d8 happens always. We have to give a check for yeah, 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 yeah. So maybe this wins. Yeah, maybe, maybe you just give up the h3 pawn. You play f6. This is a mating threat. After king e8, I'm guessing something like Rook c7 or rook b7, maybe to have f7, rook b8. E e e even f7 was. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, f7 was winning. Yeah, of course. f7 is quite simply winning. Yeah, of course. Yeah, takes and queen and. 
No, this will not. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it it might be a bit tricky if the rook is already on e seven, but it it's never going to get to f seven. You you you're just going to lose material. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. queen on a completely open board will never allow. Yeah, and, and he's what played, did he, play? he played h four, and the variation just dropped. Dropped. Also, why? <laughs> like this is just such a confusing endgame. H four. Yeah, it looks yeah, very I, nice I can one, see. Actually. I can well, see. Yes. I can see the engine hated it, but. No, but he has no time. This is a pity. Yeah, but he left it like yeah. Come on, he left himself I mean, three minutes here. That's so impractical. Yeah. And now the engine says we we hold like this. We go rook a six, rook h four, h five. We go king e eight, and then we start going after the pawns, I suppose. But like once again, why why is this a draw? Like it looks like we will play g six, h six, g seven, and win. But the evaluation is 0, 070, so I assume it's a draw. <laughs> but why? Yeah, actually, I would think I'm just. Yeah, I, I, I think it's very easy. Like, in particular, if you have this. To stop here. To stop here. Simply. Yeah, yeah. You, you, just... you, you think you've lost. Yeah. You just go C7 and you go for another first move after H4. Yeah. Um... This is just so mystifying watching this with an engine because. Yeah. Yeah. The engine just calls very, very normal decisions blunders. And even after like looking at the first line, I still don't understand why it was a blunder. So so what what was the first line? Let's let's, four, let's four was much stronger. Yeah. Four was yeah, no, but H4 engine. now, H4, how do you how do you Yeah, this is yeah, this this is this part of the first line up to here, and it doesn't keep the rook on the seventh, which is extremely mystifying to me. Like, how do you not keep the rook on the seventh here? It, it plays rook d6 here or something. I have no okay. idea why. Is it that we can play like rook f4, g6, no, but why rook f2, h6, rook h2 or something? Maybe, and but this why is not rook c7 to attack the, the, the bishop? To yeah, example. rook c7, we put the bishop on maybe like d5 or something. Ah, uh, now you mean that uh, if you go rook c5, then you will have rook a7 check, yeah? Yeah, and then I start check. I start giving checks, I suppose. And maybe, maybe this is the point that like we, we we have to be ready to give up the bishop in a way where H D seven is illegal, mm -hmm. and this is a draw. Mm -hmm. Which it honestly, is. even this kind of I have questions, right? No, no, King H seven, King F eight. No, no, not King H seven, but I I get this position, right? Isn't check, this check check check? Yes. Ah. Yeah. No, that's easy. A check. Ah, yeah, we just yeah, like we yeah, you just go. I go at some point. Who gets two? Yeah, king f eight. Yeah, exactly. And then we uh, like the king never gets there because we have checks yeah, from behind. Yeah, yeah this yeah, is not okay. difficult. Yeah, this yeah, is just, this is just a draw. Yeah. Okay, so we've established at least some idea of why this wouldn't be winning, right? So basically, this is the dream for black. Some kind of a setup like this is the dream where we. Box the king in on h7, and we are in time to put rook a, put the rook on h2 here, and always take on g7 with the bishop. Okay, mm -hmm. at least this gives me, you know, some kind of a yeah, framework but... to, to to good, to go from. Good luck to Max Lou for. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's still <laughs> it's still uh, for very, finding very... out all, all the details. Uh, so, but fascinating end games actually on both both oh, yeah. boards. Oh, uh, yeah. While I think Jordan is saving the day. Uh, the question in chat: What about some rook b six, uh, rook b six g seven idea? I think after rook b six we just go king f eight. I think we uh -huh. just don't allow that to happen. Uh, yeah. Because um, I mean, it's a very yeah. valid question. Like, if if we chill here for one move, I, th I guess we've lost, right? Because there is there's going to be rook g six here, ah, which will okay. which will win the game for white. But it's pretty it's pretty easy not to allow it just by playing king of eight and forcing you to move the rook away from the good square. Uh, let's briefly check in with the with the challengers. Let me check Sissy. I would I would be lazy now. Uh, I would check Sissy and see how Magnus wins. Uh, mm -hmm. Because could be instructive. Yeah. And by the way, something that I was suspecting uh, actually happened, it's also quite instructive there, in that King's Gambit game, uh, in this position, uh, after King e6, uh, mm -hmm. 
Pehaj played King C3, and after some thought, Tabata Bai just took on D5. And yeah, it's just the cleanest way to win this because the, the king, king just goes so, in this yeah. direction, and then you have an additional passer here. So if if the king goes all the way to a4 to pick up the pawn on a5, this will queen. And if you keep the king here, the, the pawn gets to a3, and then black wins like in, in any number of ways. The simplest, I guess, is to just go to the a pawn, pick up the bishop, and two against three against one always wins on the on the king's side. Uh, yeah, sad, and, sad way to lose. I mean, one of the saddest way to, to lose. Oh yeah, I mean, and, and once again, for those of, of you, for those of you who who were not here at the beginning of the broadcast, this was the position by move nine in this game. Playing King's Gambit, which sometimes yeah. works. Yeah, uh, strangely enough, look at that. Yeah, and here after Queen e two, d five is actually very playable, but you can also just take on e five. It gets sharp, but apparently the engines like it for black. Instead. Tabata Bai just played bishop 7 and this is a whole knight that got picked up on h5. <laughs> it's amazing. And somehow from here, black ended up winning. Yeah. Against the player who is a very strong player, Peter Hack. Yeah. yeah. Winnie the Pooh says, Peter at move 6. We resign, no? Peter after 5 hours. Oh, and Tabata yeah. Bai won. Yeah, this is, this is very true, yeah. Yeah, this is exactly what happened today. I was very much advocating. I almost asked you, but I didn't want to put you in a position. Let's say you play, <laughs> you play against Magnus, you play Bishop B7, it takes on D6 in Vike. No, resign? no, I think I think I make these moves. But I think okay. like I think if I if I see this position, you may resign. somewhere around here, maybe I do resign. <laughs> because it looks like like once the king gets to C1, why am I continuing? No, that's true. Uh, so, like, machine goes f3 here, trying to at least give some checks, and it goes like castles, I think, bishop g4, queen d5. And yeah, like, somewhere around here, I think it's perfectly okay to just say, Yeah, I, I understand. Goodbye. Takes, <laughs> takes bishop d6. We are fighting here. Yeah, we're Come on. fighting. Yeah, that's what we <laughs> that's what we're doing, fighting. Yeah, maybe, yeah, we maybe we are sort of fighting actually. Yeah. No, okay, maybe one, we are. Yeah. Okay, one f2. Oh. Who knows? Anyway, but yeah, it's yeah, it, it, yeah. it has to be absolutely heartbreaking for for Pehaj because yeah, no, no, he yeah, lost we, that he lost that beautiful beautiful game yesterday, and yeah. today to be I mean I'm sure he knows he was winning here, so to 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 actually lose this game and then he made it unclear and then he was better again, and uh, yeah he made some weird decisions somewhere on this part and never recovered. So, so in, in in the challengers, the only two running games I think are this end game where uh -huh, okay. White will play something like this, and then White will try to win the pawn on e four without. The problem is knight c five is an immediate draw after e three bishop b six, so I don't know if you actually even win the pawn on e four, which is a bit of a problem for White. You can go knight e six, but then. Oh no, no, you cannot go knight e6. Yeah. I, I actually played knight a6, e6 here, and I became a bit excited, but <laughs> the problem is yeah, you, you can't play knight c5, and if you can't play knight c5, black will play bishop b6, and then black will play king g7, king f6, king f5 should be a draw. And yeah, Ajiban is yeah, just absolutely. completely, completely lost here. Yeah. Yeah, it's all uh yeah. See, chess games, you play for six hours, but it was decided in two minutes. Is yeah, it was decided. Yeah, neither of them had very much time yeah, somewhere around here, and that's how sad it is uh, when you play. Um, and when it's going the, the, the wrong direction, in search to amount you, you can play for six, seven hours, but then at the end of the day, you realize it was played in just two minutes, uh, mm. one decision. So this is how cool it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so let's let's uh, let, let me play. He played G three. Yeah, G three is a a kind of a strange decision. So what, but what maybe do it doesn't really change very much. I don't know. Chat also became very excited about this, but I don't no, know. No, now it's, it's very easy. According to Cese, it's very easy. Rook G five, Rook G three. Uh, against anything, yeah. Yeah. No. No. I take. Yeah. I take. Okay. Push. King F two, Rook G five. I guess. Yeah, but is this so? Like you just go H three, Rook H five, or yeah, I guess you do. Yeah. 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 Yeah, actually. I mean, even this, like I understand it's winning. You have to go first, too, no? Yeah. I understand it's winning, but even here, like you, you still have to show some. King, uh, okay, King G5. Mm -hmm. 
King F5. Oh. I mean, maybe we're still winning, but I think you have to ask a question, right? Like, how easy is this? Like, maybe this is a draw. I don't know. It's not that. No. Know. No, I have to. Yeah, this is a problem, right? Because I. Oh, okay. Rookie two. Yeah, rookie two. No, but two, rookie two. Yeah, I want to do it. No, okay. I misplayed it. Let, let yeah, me, of let, course. But like, let even, me even here, my, you sort of continue. Let me switch on my, my Bozo CC. Um, <laughs> okay, rook G3. So you said rook A5. Correct? And now I go G five. H four. And in the meantime, Parham apparently blundered something horrible and is now losing. Okay. This yeah, is such after a, such okay a one game. in the line we saw move mm -hmm. sixty two, okay one king h five, and rook h one rook b five. Ah yeah okay. Ah, I guess the point is. Three against zero is actually very easily winning, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it provides cover from the checks from behind. I think the difference is like we, we get some kind of a normal F and H, but That's... eventually there will be no checks from the H file. Exactly. So the king can hide on H4 or something, yeah. And so let's move on. To, uh, he played rook g5, so this is completely winning. And um, let's have a look at Parham. How, how yeah, Parham didn't play king e8. And now somehow, if if uh, uh, Ding realizes he should win a tempo with rook c7, because like g6 rook takes f2 is a draw again. Yeah, that's the line we saw before. Yeah. And, and the move he made he is also a draw again. Oh, yeah. Rook c7 was somehow winning, because I guess black is... For some reason, not in time to. I still don't understand. I like why. Rook c7. Let's say I go bishop b2. Ah, it goes. It goes rook c8 check, and then it goes rook c2, and it kind of wins this important tempo, and the f2 pawn survives. And then we go like g6 h6, and we win. But Ding, I'm I'm really annoyed that he, he spent so much time on this stupid move. And now so many things to calculate, so many decisions to take, and he has no time. That's uh, as stupid as that. Okay, fog this way. So how do we? Yeah, how do you do? do? How After do you make three, it rook f seven check is apparently the cleanest draw. King g six. Yeah, and as somebody in chat also said, incredibly weirdly, this Bishop loses, six. this loses, and this doesn't lose. Okay, which I think just means that we should watch. I think we should just continue to like stop providing expert opinions and just. Watch no, but to, because... I mean, let's say rook f7. It looks so natural to me. Rook f7, king g6. It gives I'm a check. Diving, on it it yeah. gives a check and goes rook c7 and says this is now stable enough for some reason. Once again, like why are you supposed to be convinced you are not losing here? I have no idea. Yeah. But yeah, this is this is I think quite clearly from the evaluation of the engine, this is quite clearly a draw. And deciding what the difference is between bishop b2 and bishop a1, I think is kind of impossible for a human being. I have no idea why bishop a1. I, I think the point is machine somehow wins this tempo again with rook a3 uh -huh. check. Rook a3 and then check and then some kind of rook a2 or something. But yeah, this is just unplayable for, for humans. Uh, the Rappert game just ended. They, I'm guessing, a agreed to draw. Yeah, agreed to draw in this position because... It's yeah. a petition, yeah? No, I mean, the H pawn is just gone, so there's no... No, I think so. They so, so, pitted. I insist. Are they, they're, yeah. Yeah, King E4. Okay, six. No, they were they were repeating for a bit, and then he didn't go back to uh, e4. He went to e5, and then after no. h6, no, uh, I, Jorgen I... just offered a draw because the h pawn is getting picked up. And okay, if if there's no h pawn, what are we what are we playing for? So let's okay. go back to uh, to this after yeah, after bishop right, a1. Yeah. I think yeah, the winning line after bishop a1 is we go rook a3. 
And then once again, let's say if bishop b2 here, I think the point is we give a check and we go rook a2, maybe. Actually, I don't think so. yeah, this is just so weird. I think it's this. The point being that if you take your sort of forever pin, then you will not be able to. It's too difficult. I, th I think Max will yeah. lose anyway. Yeah. Because I think it's a little time, though. So I don't know. But um, yeah, it's hard to believe to 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 believe in it. I, you mm -hmm. would think you are lost here as as black somewhere. And uh, in Magnus Carlsen, so they played the line uh, we were showing. Now only one winning move for Magnus Carlsen in that position, which is h4, and which and he, is played, played. Yeah, he played. He played h4. Yeah, yeah, this is very logical. King f2 will come, and now rook g5. I'm not sure that after okay one king h5 is the only uh, winning move we'll find well, here out. i think maybe h3 wins as well because i i will let be in me... time to play king h5 king h4 let me check with my new bother okay one h3 yeah this is winning yeah i think i think after okay one we have choices after king f2 we probably don't have choices I think yeah. here, if you give white a tempo, it might be a draw. But like everybody plays rook g5 here, it's impossible not to play rook g5 here. There are no other logical moves. That's perfectly true. You want to, there's a king to come in simply mm -hmm. to participate. In the meantime, yeah, Parham so far found the, the perfect defense. Yeah, but uh, check, check after king h6. I, I suspect rook c7 might be the only move, but also really is the only move you can make. Difficult to play anything else. Yeah, and then somehow it just says, we held it, relax, no more problems. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is just kind of shocking, to be honest. See you tomorrow. Like, yeah, yeah, like just <laughs> relax, game over, goodbye, no worries. So I still answer close in, in, in <laughs> bike, but it's stop luck for you. <laughs> yeah. Extremely confusing. Yeah, winning the pool says would be funny if Ding ends up holding rook and bishop versus rook. No, you're not. <laughs> it's very difficult to lose all of these pawns, even if you have a minute here. No, it's uh Pretty much impossible to lose all of these pawns. King h6 played. Somewhat shockingly, probably bishop a5 is also a draw, judging by the numbers on my screen. But I, I don't think it's possible to make a move like that. And it's definitely I, I weaker I, than rook c7. I don't even understand the idea of bishop a5. I mean, except protecting the bishop. Yeah, we need to stop rook d8 mm. check. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, of course. Yeah. yeah. No, Rook C7 played, and yeah, basically it says after F4, F4. it says F4 is played. Start. Yeah, we can it's start played. coming in with the with the king. Yeah. It just says we now have enough count to play. We want this. The king basically is stuck here. You can never really move it forward. So G6 is getting... king is six, yeah? G6? Yeah, I think king is six, and then we start giving checks. I think this is actually kind of a comfortable draw now. Because bishop g7 is a massive threat and king wants to come to f5 anyway. Okay, so I don't go g6. You convinced me. Yeah. But where do I go? I think he might actually hold this. I think by this point, yeah, no, no, I it becomes go. yeah, it becomes a favorite, yeah. It be sort of becomes understandable for a human how we're holding this. The and mechanism, if I go... the mechanism yeah. becomes okay. Okay, you, you want to, to attack, so I go d6. Yeah. It just goes king e7. Rook a6. Yeah, and now we can attack from, from this direction. We just start generating counterplay. What can I say? I'm not going to... to, to, to no, but but also, I, I think... what All I'm arguing is that it actually becomes sort of understandable what yeah. we're doing. We're trying to provoke a5, and then I think we're just aiming for the corner. Because this, like, as long as the bishop is on, on, on this diagonal, you, you can't move anything. You just can't create a threat. Because rook f6, king g8, king g6 yeah. is rook g7 check. Yeah, right? I just, go, I just go into the corner and I stay in the corner. Yeah. He played rook and... c6 check, which apparently is okay. Okay. 
King H7. King H7. Now you absolutely have to give a check, but also like, why would you not give a check? Nothing else makes any sense. Yeah, of course. Eight. Of course. So King G6 will come. Of course, you still. Oh, maybe we'll play just was just one repetition to go G6. Yeah, no, he played King G6. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Check uh, again. Check again, yeah. Will he go King F5, maybe, no? But King F5, well, Bishop you have to because we've done we've done everything else, yeah. But yeah, but King F5, yeah, the machine just goes Bishop G7 and says, hey, now I'm never, very, you... very ready to start sacrificing stuff. Yeah, no, that's for sure. Okay. Very good defense, what can I say? I mean, Ding definitely missed uh, chances, but... Mm -hmm. Well, it's not, it was not easy. In, uh, no, it was, it, was, it, was, it was never easy, but <laughs> it was you, have to come back, you have to come back to this decision to burn all of his time yeah. and move 42. And for Max Udo, he was under severe pressure, uh, mm -hmm. pressure after, uh, after, I mean, the world game, basically. So, kudos to him. Yeah, I think oh. if, if Parham saves this, he will be extremely happy with today's effort because he yeah somehow out of the opening he got put under this tremendous pressure and he kept on solving and solving and solving and yes at some point he was probably lost but uh this is such a complicated end game that i don't think you can actually blame him for yeah, some the, mistakes the, yeah there are those which feels like a loss at times but there are mm -hmm. also those which feels like a victory uh, yeah it's definitely and one the, of them yeah yeah and that one Okay, he plays King H6. Okay, and now he's planning to, after OC6, to, to go G6. My mm -hmm. Yes. Apparently still a draw, but the engine likes King F7 much more. I think it feels that King F7 is a lot cleaner. But we already had that position, no? Uh, after I found, he, played, he didn't play King F7, he played OC6 on move 52. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we, um, we were always yeah, yeah. So he's playing Rook C six again. Yeah, he, and now of course he plays G six because King H seven will be just a repetition. Yeah. And now, yeah, I don't know. It becomes tricky. Like it still gives you it, variations, which I think translate into a draw. But yeah, it's become it's become losable again. I feel. Are you so sure it's a draw? No, we were. I think I was very sure uh, this was a draw. Uh, Michelangelo. Uh, I'm I'm less sure this ends up being a draw. Because uh, Ding will, in three moves, Ding will get an additional 15 minutes, so he will be able to kind of take a breath and uh, reevaluate. And the position definitely became trickier to hold. Sure. I suspect Machine still holds it, but I'm, I'm no longer 100% sure. But I, 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 do, I do think the Machine still holds it, yeah. Oh, well, move 16, the, the Kamer uh, Carlsen game. C can you have a look at the board of Kamer Carlsen? Because after H4, according to CC uh, and to the live, ah, Kamer just falls. He got, he got his 15 minutes extra. So mm -hmm. he, you, you can lose on time. That's the last time he gets extra time, except the 30 seconds mm -hmm. in Kamer, which he will get till the end of his life. He's are playing nonstop. Uh, so, but 15 minutes is, is the last time. You get extra time. And he's thinking because it could be the last chance. Okay, he doesn't know he's lost. He might. He's probably suspecting it. But um, you always try to find a chance. And this is a good uh, attitude. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's doing the right thing in, in spending a lot of time here. Because, yeah, even if you suspect it's not holdable, it's still like this is enough you know, close enough that yeah. you it's... absolutely have to uh, have to try to play as precisely as possible to try and force mm -hmm. a mistake because yeah, all of these F and H uh, end games are uh, tricky and it's definitely possible for Black to uh, to misplay it and let you back into the game. Um, thanks very much for for the prime sub, uh, Ida Kun. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to the channel. Um. Okay. 
So Maxud Lu is is thinking, do we have something in the changer? Or it's, it's not really. It's no, it's gone. Uh, Adiban is still fighting in that very very poor end game. He is not dead. He's he still found a way to to continue uh, asking some questions. And but yeah, it's not very attractive. It was more lost earlier. There was there was a point like somewhere around here, the engine was giving uh, black after. Yeah, for some reason the engine actually kind of likes having all of your A-pawns. Like it, it goes rook A2 first and then it starts pushing and it says this is completely winning somehow. I'm not entirely sure why this is so much stronger than what he did because he played A4, uh, rook A5, rook A2, which, yeah, I guess the, the, the difference is the king now escaped the back rank because uh, the, the line I was showing, I assume the king never actually gets gets time to leave the back rank and with the king on the back rank your conversion becomes uh, a lot simpler i guess that would be the explanation i don't really see very much difference but even in the current position uh, like the pawn is almost on a2 you're also losing your king side so yeah hard to imagine why it's saving this yeah for you again i i come back in in two minutes sure uh, yeah we, we can I, I guess we we don't take a bike now no i can i can i can so close. This. Yeah, yeah yeah just two minutes two minutes thank you uh, yeah, P people are saying in the Magnus position, if you remove the h6 pawn, it's a draw. Yeah, absolutely. This is the this is the point. Yeah, it looks like Black is just winning because the king is cut off along the g file and there is a passer on the h file. But it's tremendously important that White cannot establish some kind of a defense from behind here. Uh, so yeah, this is close enough for Vincent to continue caring a great deal about the quality of his decisions. Uh, so he's doing the right thing in uh, very much continuing to think and continuing to calculate. But I don't think he saves this. I don't think Magnus makes a mistake here. If we remove h6 and f3, let's actually ask. This is a, 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 cute, enough, uh, a cute enough question that we can ask. Hang on. So king on g6, the white king on e3. Uh, black rook on g3, white rook on a5, black pawns on f6 and h4. Yeah, that would be a draw after king f2. King f2 would be the only move, but that is a theoretical draw. How is Joyce doing? I think he actually gave up and left me. I, I don't see him. I think he realized I'm becoming a bit annoyed with the constant begging for food and uh, decided to Go sleep somewhere else. Hey, Miro, how are you doing? Uh, in the meantime, in uh, Ding's game, uh, yeah, now we are entering this the phase of the game where you have to make only moves, but also your only moves look like they are the only moves. Because allowing Rook A check here looks like it's very, very suicidal. So you have to play rook c8. It's never fun to assume this kind of extremely passive defense, but that's what you should be doing. Like rook a7, you go king g8, and you uh, you keep this shape. And there's a very cute way for white here to actually maybe uh, realize that dream that one of our commenters on, on, on Twitch mentioned. You can play g7 here. And then suddenly, after rook c6, you realize that your winning move rook a8 actually allows mate in one, <laughs> which I thought was, I didn't realize at first, and it's kind of comical. Uh, and uh, g7 rook c6, you will have to, actually, now you will have to resign because after king g6, I we, we lose the, the rook. Yeah? <laughs> uh, so there is still a way for white to lose this position, uh, finally enough. Uh, I assume if the rook is on the b on 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 the light square, this is still a draw because we will go king g five and we will escape. But this probably does end up three hours later being rook and bishop against rook. Uh, so not really expecting it to happen. Uh, I don't know if you heard this, Laurent, but I found a no. way to lose this for white in okay. in King's game. In this position, if you play g seven. I think you actually straight up lose to rook c6. <laughs> um,
Ah, okay, Bishop D8 mate. Yeah, this wow. is this is very cute. Yeah, this is a kind of an unusual diagram where yeah, this this, okay. this actually has no squares. Obviously, not going to happen. Uh, Parham hasn't played rook c8 yet. Rook c8 is the only move here that doesn't lose. But okay. as I as I mentioned, I also don't think you can play any other move. Like, what else will you play? Something like this, and then rook a8, king e7, and I guess we go like rook g7, rook a7 and g7. Yeah, like no, but nobody nobody ever does that. Yeah. Like, why would you? Why would you ever Agreed. do that to yourself? Uh, also, I'm not sure if this is not winning. Like this might also be winning. Like rook a7 check here, and then king g6 might also be winning. Yeah. That's so. Yeah, so, 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 so king. Yeah. So obviously, like wrong side. It, yeah, because it's a it's a mistake you cannot make because like it just makes your position worse very very clearly. So why would you ever even and try it, to calculate? In the meantime. Magnus Carlsen played some moves. I mean, Kamer played the move. Mm. Played hook a8, king h5, king f2, g6. Everything is uh, going according to the plan, according to cc. H3 is next. Yeah, this is this is going to be even simpler because uh, the one we were discussing earlier where the winning plan was to play rook b5 here in this position. Yeah. Uh, this no longer applies because the pawn gets to h3. And once the pawn gets to h3, we just win by queening that pawn. Like we play h3, we play rook g2 check, we play king h4, king g3, h2, and so on. And this cannot be stopped. So I think now the win is just extremely straightforward. Rook a5, we play rook g5. Rook goes like anywhere we play h3. Uh, yeah, it, it really is no longer uh, yeah, rook a3, but we can still play h3, f4, rook g2 check. It doesn't change anything. King h4 next. Yeah, this I is just a queen. It. Basically, this is just a queen. black mates in 35, 30 moves. Mm, yeah, going to six. So I think we'll we'll switch to the other game because we know yeah. how this ends. We'll switch to the other game, which is still very much uh, in balance. Okay, f4, h3, f4. Maybe I think now Kamo is blitzing out the last moves. So uh, for actually, can, oh, you know, okay, I was about to blunder. We can cool. stay. We can stay with mm -hmm. uh, with Magnus for. For yeah, a little Rukia while, check. I think he will just resign. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's not a mistake here to just call it quits because <laughs> obviously I think that like everybody knows I think that. <laughs> and and he did resign. Uh, great game by uh, mm -hmm. as our champion Magnus Carlsen. With yeah, very Aus nicely done by Magnus, starting yeah. from the from the decision to play c six here to not enter any of the theoretical lines. Uh, you know, avoid all of the discussion of the kind of a very, very safe, kind of boring ish end games, which you never ever win with black. And uh, yeah, here after bishop g5, the decision to play b5, bishop b2, rook e8, very calmly. Also, uh, an important kind of teachable moment for people who may have not seen this structure before. Playing e5 looks like it's an active move, you know, it's you're doing something with your life. But it's actually very, very beneficial to white because it makes it much harder for black to uh, play on the queen side because it gives white a hook in the center. So he goes rook e8, calmly protects c7, then goes knight b6, bishop b6, gets a comfortable position, and and wins it basically from there. Yeah, nicely was, done by Magnus. Yeah, and he's now showing the lead uh, unless unless uh, Ding Ding is winning that. Mm -hmm. And this is move 59. Uh, so in one more move, uh, he will get an additional 15 minutes. So there is still some way to go for us in this game. This is going to take a while. Let's see if Sissi now is following uh, Ding. No, not yet. Not yet. They might. Yeah, they. they, they yeah, I think it's, it's, it's what they do. Yeah, yeah they, they often switch. Yeah. And in the meantime, Black decided to not pick up the pawn on g3 in this game. And apparently and... this is now a draw. Wow. Because after something like a 4, a 5, you have this setup where you have a passer on a2, but this bishop in on, is on such a weird square that you, you, you cannot actually create a threat. And white probably has actual counterplay with like rook a7, knight e6. Okay. That's instructive uh, because like, there's a pawn like A2. In, in this position, he could have just taken on G3 
And yes, I understand you want more. You want maybe to win by force. You want this to be a queen, but this is an important pawn. It gives you an additional outside passer. It's, it's a useful pawn to pick up. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. You, you can still actually, like, I, I, I'm not going to call this as a draw. I, I think it's still possible to misplay with white, but yeah, a questionable decision by, by Thomas, who... I mean, he's a he's a good player, but he is a very good player. Uh, these are, you know, Adiban is not easy to beat, and Adiban continues fighting, continues creating problems. It's been a very tough game in general, and mistakes are understandable. Ding played something. I oh, know Max Udl played something. Bishop C3, mm -hmm. and they are making the time control. One more move to go for Ding Liren. Um F five is risky. Huh? Bishop D two. Do, did I lose it? No, no, probably not. No, I think you're also. I, I think you're still okay. Yeah, f five. I think we maybe go king g eight, right? Okay, because no, this is a bit of a a bit of a threat now. And then we start giving checks. King g five. Yeah, like check. King g four. Check. King f. King g three. And now, and now I'm wondering if I can even do this, you know? F6 check? No, 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 yeah, hang on, hang on. No, 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 not like this, hang on. Uh, hmm. Is it too late already? <laughs> so is it too loose? <laughs> That's amazing. You play the most natural moves in the world. And yeah, I'm not sure if they're the most natural, but yeah, it looked like I didn't make too many mistakes, but suddenly I'm completely lost. Yeah. This is showing plus one here, King G5. Um, yeah, for some reason, yeah, I don't know. Ah, no, f five, f five, we lose. Yeah, well, I mean, not lose, but maybe we actually lose, right? Oh, f five, no, f five is losing. Uh, no, f five is the dog. F five, king g eight, king g five, bishop d two. Yeah, king g four. Let me move the pieces. So maybe f5. now king g seven actually with the rook on the back rank. Oh, no, 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 this is also stupid. King G4. Um, People are saying G4, check and then bishop G5. Yeah. Yeah. Check, check exactly. and bishop G5. Why is this not losing is still a mystery, but <laughs> like I have, like, this is all way, way above my pay grade. <laughs> F6, Rook C3, King G4. What is it talking about? Is there some kind of stalemate trick or like what the, what is this? This has to be lost, right? Yeah. Even CC is getting confused. Yeah, I think everybody's getting confused. I uh, know now F5 is the main. Oh, uh, I cannot. I don't get it at all. Thank you, guys. I, I think I managed to mute it in time. So very proud of my multitasking. He played, uh, and he played OK7. OK. Only move not to lose is king g8, but once again, what else do you play? Allowing king h7 seems strange. <laughs> yeah. So be difficult to make any other decision. So king g8 will be played, and we'll have the same kind of scenario where uh, I can't push. I have to play king g5 then. So king g8, king g5. Yeah. And yeah, the machine suggests this is now a very easy draw. And I think, you know, many of us, very much myself included, still lose this. At least some of the time, maybe most of the time, even. Yeah. Because I want to play like h6, f5, put the king on h5, play g7 in some fashion, and then. So you have to go rook c5 after um, king g5. Oh, at least this is the simplest. King g4. Uh, rook c king g4. Oxy six. Ah, yeah, this this kind of a setup. And if f five, we go. I guess we could. Do we go? I'm still confused. Bishop d two, maybe or something. I don't know. Yeah, maybe bishop d two. <laughs> Just put it on h six, and chill. Yeah, this I can yeah. believe because, like, how do you make any progress if I if I have this setup? You can play rook f7, and I think I can put the bishop on h6. And if you play f6, now I start giving checks from, from the side. 
forever and ever. Why forever? I, I, ah, you mean, do you take my H5 pawn? No, I think I'm just no. giving okay. checks. Okay, so I, I come to E6. <clears throat> uh, check. Okay, King D ah, King D five. Just do okay, this. seven. F seven mate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we are getting tired. Yeah, we, we are getting, getting we are getting yeah, a little bit tired. <laughs> yeah. I actually did, I thought I lost to G seven. I was very unhappy about blundering G seven. <laughs> but F seven is a bit stronger, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's let's. Uh, uh, I, I can get the, the dinner maybe. <laughs> I'm in time yeah, for dinner. No, I'm not. Yeah, it's too late for dinner. Yeah. Um, how does that work? Uh, who can send? I don't ba know. It's busted. Yeah, already. I don't know. <laughs> no, but King G8 played. King G5 uh, will, will come. This is the only way to continue the game. G7, Rook C6 check is very simple at least. So King G5, and you are threatening H6. And I think you better do something about it. Yeah. Um, because it looks scary, so you have to give a check. Uh let's let's make Okay, my... let's discuss this in, in like really, really sort of <laughs> conceptual terms. If I do absolutely nothing here, do I lose? Like if I do this, do I lose or not? Of course, F5. Uh yes. F6. Ah, you you unpleasant person. <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a mate. Yeah, I thought yeah, I was. There's a mate. Yeah. Yeah, I thought but, I was being yeah. clever, but I'm not really being all that clever. Yeah. But it's not. You can still, you know, you can play F6, Rook C8, like something <laughs> is happening. But I don't think it's very good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This this I don't really believe will will save the game somehow. Yeah. That, that looks a bit, you know, I don't know. I a little bit, a bit too nervous. much. Yeah. This this looks a bit too much. <laughs> but I I don't see it. I mean, like. Yeah, okay. Uh, no, 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 that, that is a bit too much. No, can you trade? Ah, oof, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've completely, I've completely lost my mind by this point. Yeah, <laughs> I cannot calculate anything. I thought I, you like, know, I, I played with a check in this position <laughs> in my head, you know, obviously. Yeah, but how do we win with the three points? I mean, it should be winning. <laughs> I mean, we must be winning somehow. <laughs> like, there's no way this is not winning, but. That's Maybe, yeah, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> like, so is check, help, help, and please. then put it here. <laughs> ah, King G8, you want H7 and... Oh, well, that, there's always Bishop D2. It's not working. I don't know. Wait, H7, no, okay, this, this is winning. Yeah, this is winning. Yeah. This is winning. So okay, we have okay. a threat now. Yeah. No, Actually, no, we're, is... we're already this... threatening Rook F8. This is over. I think this has Let's to be face over. It. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Oxy Five was played because uh, Max Uzu is not planning to to sit and wait, which is correct. Yeah. F five, I guess. Oh, so is also left. He's mm, not, yeah, where it's, it's just us. Yeah, and uh, yeah, maybe nobody is. Uh, yeah, is seeing the strength of charts. Joyce, Joyce relocated himself closer to me, but is not. He is kind of asleep. Yeah, he kind of gave up on begging for food and is just now oh. drowsing, napping. What, what, what's his name? Okay. Joyce. Joyce. Oh, okay. Mm. Nice. So this is the current position. And now so F5. How, F5 yeah, has I was to playing come. a five here. Yeah. I was playing playing I mean, a five here, and we couldn't we couldn't figure out how to actually stop the things from happening, you know, which is extremely weird. Uh, maybe check? Check, check. King of, King of, King of yeah, three, I thought. Or maybe just rook h4 or something, yeah? And maybe now we're finally chilling. Uh-huh. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. No, yeah. that's the only way yeah but generally let's just uh, chat uh, please ask us something because I would like to you know converse about anything else like I, I think I've done <laughs> enough incredibly stupid things in the last three minutes of this broadcast to to be excused from having to think about chess 
let's discuss, I don't know, movies. Have you seen any good movies recently? Um, I'm mainly into series these days. So the last one, ah, let me try to find, because it's always a name in French, one I really liked um, in French, but I don't know if that's the same name in, uh, in English. Tell me. Uh, uh, but probably it's the same name. I don't know. Succession? I mean. Oh, yeah. Succession is supposedly very good. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw that recently. It was very good. <laughs> Le Thing Stranger. Yeah. <laughs> Le Thing Stranger is a, is a, is a good show. Yeah. Um, somebody asked in chat if, if the glass onion is any good. Uh, I thought it was fine. I thought I actually sort of, uh, I have a thought out opinion on this topic. I don't know if you've seen the movie or if you've heard of the movie. It's the, the name again, the glass onion. No, I don't it's a, so. it's a second, uh, installment in the knives out series with like, it's a very, very nice cast with, uh, Daniel Craig playing the main character. Uh -huh. and, okay, okay. I see. And uh, I think uh, as a pure, you know, detective, as a whodunit, it's much weaker than the first one. But as a kind of a satire, I, I enjoyed it a great deal. And I think it's also very enjoyable to watch people uh, who did not like the the satirical parts of it uh now try to say that it's a horrible movie because quite clearly they didn't like you know some of the people being ridiculed in the movie they didn't like them being ridiculed uh so uh and this is very enjoyable because i think in general the types of people i see who really really didn't like the movie are not my favorite people <laughs> so but uh, you're still yeah so it's kind of it, it's kind of enjoyable to watch okay. them to okay, watch okay. them no. squeal about good, how bad it is you are, it was a good teaser so i may i would watch it uh -huh. yeah ah, okay 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 i see now the script in in, in french yeah okay uh, and yeah, this is actually a good a, a, a good thing that I didn't really consider by by mild things in Twitch chat. He says, "I think they got very lucky with the timing. It it looks like a clearer satire in December 2022 than when it was written, presumably in 2021." Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in December 2022, the timing was just absolutely fantastic because, like, it it looked like the entire world was, you know, doing trailers for them. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to spoil the movie for you, but like a lot yeah. of the very, very topical current events, they look like they're basically doing promotion for the movie. <laughs> okay. Uh, which is uh, obviously, a, you know, a lucky thing for the movie to, <laughs> to have, you know, like for sure. when, when real life just does your job for you. Yeah. And uh, it was a door in Adiban Bertson. Mm. Great let's, opportunity let's missed by look, yeah. Batson, but yeah, what can you do? Uh, so he, hang on, let me let me just find it. Ah, yeah. So he ended up actually losing the pawn on a2. We left it here, and after a five, yeah, as I said, Y just generates this setup as kind of counterplay, and it's incredibly difficult for Black to even move anything because Bishop e6 fe is going to be a pretty clear draw? Question mark, question mark. Why is this such a clear draw? Why aren't we at least trying this? I mean, I understand it probably is a draw, but why aren't we? I guess we go king e5, king d6, and we have so yeah, much yeah, activity. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and rook g3, okay, too, and yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he really played, yeah, he played rook takes g3, time. but then. Uh, you, this pawn is gone, and the rook is about to return to a very active square. So, and yeah, just... Adiban saved. Adiban saved a completely lost position, but he was also completely winning earlier. So, yeah. in a way, but... it's a kind of a fair result, with which I think neither of them will be happy. Um, yeah, oh. there's some reasons to 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 be happy and uh, unhappy, mm -hmm. which is uh, very often the case after a chess game. Um.
Yeah. Yeah, PP Chandler, premium member, go premium. Uh, earlier, mm. you discussed the possibility of Magnus playing the, in the candidates. Peter, you suggested that it would be bad for Chess if Magnus wants the candidates and refused. But um, wouldn't it be likely that he would then play the World Championship match if they change the format of the World Championship match? But doesn't seem to be the... Um, well, well, what's your opinion on that? Uh, uh, what exactly is the question? If Magnus returns, specifically, yeah. if they change the format? Yeah, but if the format, but if the format of the uh, World Championship match were changed, as Magnus suggested, uh, of course it would be likely that he would play the, the match. But will they change the format? This is very unlikely, actually. Yeah, I think in particular now that he is gone. Yeah, uh, sort of like you know, if they were still in negotiations, which are, I mean would be also incredibly unfair. And I think you know the way he's done it. I understand, you know, it attracted a lot of criticism, and I understand the criticism because, you know, it. Oh, he, he absolutely does not owe anybody anything. He has proven everything a hundred times over, and it was his decision, and he made it. But uh, it, it's also, you know, important to point out that for for the chess world in general, that decision was not great, uh, and we're, you know, at least in part. The difficulty they have with finding the sponsors for the World Championship match is to do with the fact that Magnus isn't playing. Oh, that's for sure. I yeah. mean, there were like, uh, even a slight problem for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, he, he, you you have to sort of spell these things out. Of course, he had the right to decide what to do with his life. Yeah. Of course, it doesn't take away from his legacy or anything. He is a five-time world champion. He has won, you know, everything many, many times over. But still. Yeah. For 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 us as yeah. as a sport, this is a blow. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, probably have a point. So, what do you think about the the, the format of the World Championship match? Would you, let's say, Peter, some some Peter be becoming FIDE president? Oh dear! Please no! Please <laughs> would no! You, why, would you why, why, why do you, why do you hate me so much? Uh, <laughs> would you change the? Um, the 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 format do you think it's good do you think it's bad i don't know i i'm i'm honestly i've been a you know a chess professional for for so long that uh i will like for me the the the, the, the classical format in particular now that you know i am entirely removed from the conversation as somebody who might one day play one of them you know mm -hmm. uh th there was a time in my career when you know I, sure. I i i played yeah. like a number of candidates in a row so i was you know somewhere in that conversation. how many did you play at the end of the day three four i played three and also you can maybe count san luis as a candidate yeah, but okay. not exactly right but still yeah. uh but but yeah three in the 2010s um so for me as a viewer because these days, like, I'm not a competitor. I'm somebody who watches them. I'm somebody who maybe commentates on them, but I'm not a participant. I find tremendously exciting things to talk about with the current format. It's really not a problem for me. Uh, I I understand that, the, you know, the, the matches before Dubai were incredibly dry. No. For, uh, I mean... For for people who don't really you know want to or perhaps don't really have the understanding uh, of the intricacies of the game enough to you know you know enjoy the no no I understand but it's also I mean like the Kawana uh, Magnus match was twelve draws but you know the first game was so winning for Magnus yeah, yeah. I, I yeah know. Fabi missed a lot of uh, yes uh, chances as well they both missed. Some chances, of course, some games were really boring. Actually, you cannot, uh, one third of the game will be incredibly boring. That's a problem, exactly. But uh, once least. again, like you remember that, and I remember that, and we, we can, you know, discuss all of these things. But yeah, for the general public, they played 12 draws. There were some yeah. talking points, like there was this very, uh, kind of a weird situation in game 12, which doesn't really exist in other sports where. You know, somebody with a large advantage decides to just call it a day, and and play the tie breaks. And once again, it's it's something which I think promoted very uh, interesting conversations uh, in the chess world. But for people who are 
relative outsiders to our game. It wasn't really all that great, right? It seemed like on the surface of it, not very much was happening. But I think we just got slightly unlucky with the results, both in, in the Fabi match and also in, in Karekin's match, because mm -hmm. if Magnus wins game three or game four, yeah, or both of them, as he would, I think if he was playing well, he would very likely win both of them against really anybody in the world. It's not even Karekin specifically. Uh, positions he had uh, during yeah. that phase of the match. Like if he wins one game against Sergei somewhere, and Sergei has to switch to trying to actively win a game somewhere because he was yeah. he was playing a very defensive strategy, he's saying basically to Magnus, I will continue not losing to you, and eventually it will start driving you crazy. And he almost That's became how it world... happened. I, I yeah, yeah. He, he almost became world strategy. champion on this strategy. He was very close. You think it he was really a strategy? Maybe he did not formulate it, you know. Uh, vocally at any point, but I think subconsciously yeah. this is what they were yeah. doing. Okay, I think this is what they were doing. Yeah, I think they were they were basically playing as solid as they could, trying not to lose, and banking on the fact that for Magnus, inability to win the game will become progressively unbearable psychologically. Like he will, he is not used to not winning games of chess for you know weeks on end. So I think they, they they thought, and I mean you you, you know you, you you were there. Uh, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Yeah, and uh, you know if he, oh, if he finds that force draw in game ten, yeah, like around, somewhere around move twenty, he basically had a force draw. Yeah, even before. Which okay. which I think Magnus would have to allow because like you, you can't yeah. really run the risk of losing that game as well. So you if if Sergei finds it, Magnus has to allow it, and and then he has two games to uh, to win one, one of them with black. And he's also probably by that point quite mad about things. No, of course. I mean, I was to be to be fair. Of course, I was I was in the team of Magnus, and I was much more worried during Game Nine, uh, where he was close to to being lost. But fantastic defense. I, actually, in Game Ten, okay, if the guy finds the doors, there's still two games to go, you know. But minus yeah. two and three games to go. Yeah, that I probably thought, is just over. okay. That yeah, is this is over. just uh, so close to being over. So uh, actually, if there's two games to go and minus one, I can, of course, you can always imagine things. But uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of oh, course, of course, that was the worst match of of mm, minus five. But but, but but still, for for us, because you know, we can still, you know, six years on, uh, I can still recall. Not as well as you did, because obviously from the inside it's all much more vivid. But I did commentary, yeah. and I still remember most of the games of that match. Uh, there was plenty to talk about. Yeah. For sure. But for the outsiders, you know, two decisive games out of twelve. Then the next one we have zero decisive games out of twelve. Uh, but I, I think those were kind of outliers. But. Actually, you, you don't think so. You don't agree, maybe. Um, I mean, what, what's, the, what's the purpose of the World Championship match? If the purpose is to uh, is to find out who is the best player, I, I, I actually agree with Magnus that if you play four rapids game a day, let's say 14 days, you know, mm -hmm. or with, you, you will find out with... You have more chances to find out who is the best it. player I don't than if you play 14 classical games. Yeah. No, like I, I don't hate it at all. It's just that uh, I don't necessarily think the current format is like entirely broken and absolutely needs fixing. Okay. Okay. My argument isn't that I hate the proposed changes. I don't, and I like I, I very much understand the argument that you know rapid is generally a lot closer to you know allowing us to define who is the best player in the world because there is less uh less weight being assigned to you know home prep uh, and, and your your pure skill i think and you can play more games as well yeah and you can and, and also yeah, just I mean, the volume just the volume yeah, yeah the volume just, the volume is very important yeah yeah but like for me personally the format isn't broken okay but i wouldn't i wouldn't hate uh like if they if they chose to try at least to try uh, the new one. I wouldn't hate it at all, and I don't think it's bad. I just like some people think that it has to be changed because it's broken. Maybe it has to be changed just because we want to try something else. 
or because something else is better. I just don't think it's broken. I understand. Uh, I understand. I, I, it's a very good point. Uh, very valid point. Yeah. Uh, An interesting topic, actually. Mm. Um, and it's a long tradition. I mean, there are also it's a tradition for, for more than 100 years. So, for mm -hmm. more, more than one century. So, okay. Yeah. It's did not it's a tough decision to change it. Um, yeah. And in the I meantime, we've been sort of completely ignoring yeah. the events. Not much was going on, but Ding left himself a minute and a half <laughs> again. And now he won't get any extra time. Um, I mean, except the 30 seconds per move, which he gets mm -hmm. till the end. He can, of yeah, course, and, make a door whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. But that's not... Yeah, and there so was a question in chat, which new format we're discussing. I think the proposal was, just as Laurent said, it's very simple. You just play, you know, a number of four-game sets uh, per day. Uh, yeah. you can you can decide how many you want to play like maybe 14 maybe 12 it doesn't really matter like you can you can pick a number but you just play a lot more games of chess with uh, a shorter time control we're not talking about blitz we're talking about i'm guessing like the standard 15 plus 10 yeah or 20 plus 10 or whatever or 20 like. plus 10 or whatever yeah and yeah. and you just uh, you just play over the same amount of actual physical time you get a much much bigger volume yeah uh, of games in and more, more chances to, to, to come back and mm -hmm. uh, you can take more risk as well because you know you have uh you will get more chances to come back so um, yeah uh that's that's yeah, a bit of a way to, to, uh, to, to define was saying rook c5 might be the only move here because once again allowing h6 seems played. strange but he played it instantly if king yeah. h6 i guess we just go all the way back to c8 and when the king is here you just cannot make any progress yeah, also bishop f6 is a draw somehow, but yeah, like here the decision becomes very simple. Mate in one is threatened. You don't want to be allowing mate in one, so you do something not to allow mate in one. Um, yeah, only rook f5, preventing the mate in one would be losing. Yeah, that would be that would Maybe. be unfortunate, but I don't think anybody does that. Yeah, no, no. No, and if you want, yeah, it's was my point. Okay, oh, then it's not a classical watch. I mean, it's it's very complicated topic. Yeah. And but if you want to define the best player, I think I think uh, it makes a lot of a lot of sense to play more games simply. Mm. Um, and we'll see. Yeah. And uh, Cesse, as we as we mentioned, it does pick up other games, and eventually yeah, it did, and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just just a draw. We kind of knew it was a draw for a while. Uh, the only question is whether you know Ding can find positions where the solution might be only one move, and it might be a tricky move. Because here, yes, the solution is actually the fact that Bishop Six is also a draw kind of spoils my point. But uh, uh, actually, do we prefer Bishop F Six? Because then White can never actually come back out. Because the rook is specifically on d7 and not, let's say, a7, where you would have to play rook c8, do we actually play bishop f6 for just preference? The game, yeah? yeah, because we, we say, okay, now you're just gone. Like, you, you can't shift. Because as we've discovered, like, if we get somewhere here, you just cannot play g7 because you're always, always running into rook c6. Ah, and it's famous. You even lose now. Yeah. I mean, with the rook on b7, you don't lose. But with the rook on a7, because ah, yeah. bishop d4 check, bishop takes a7, yeah? So I think we actually prefer bishop f6 here so that the game ends. And it's thinking. Mm -hmm. So it definitely considered bishop f6. Yeah. So bishop f6. And if you go rook b7, I think now we can very safely just go rook c8 and, uh, and, and defend this way. Rook f7, we go rook c6. And if the rook goes somewhere, we go back to the 8th and... Yeah, I think it's just very, very solid, and it makes it almost it's impossible. Easiest, it, yeah. it, it makes it almost impossible to go wrong from this point yeah. onwards, right? It's just how do you make this, a mistake? Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, rook f seven, you just go rook c six all the time. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we're nice. just not moving from f six. We're never allowing you to get out via g five ever again. I think it makes a lot of sense. If if he realizes he has time for it, I think you should do it. Mm -hmm. I think he will. 
yeah. he looks like a guy who who is going to play bishop f6. I don't know how to, yeah. to explain, yeah, I, but I, I think if he because once he hasn't played rook c8 instantly, I think the chances of him playing bishop f6 have increased very, very much because uh, is Ding winning? No, he's not winning anymore. He was winning very briefly. There was a very dramatic moment where I can probably find it. Uh, yeah, here. Uh, King e8 apparently is a draw. And after rook f4, if he found the idea of playing rook c7 here, the engine suggests this is winning. Uh, explaining why would be uh, the trick here. I don't know if I can successfully uh, explain why, but I think the like the human way of explaining would be that you run out of good squares on the long diagonal. I think it goes like rook c7, and if you play bishop b2, it goes check, and then it goes rook c2. And this hits the bishop and also protects f2 for this very brief moment where we want to be playing g6, h6, and uh, the pawn f2 uh, survives long enough for us to achieve all of our objectives on, yeah, uh, on the king side. That's a, that's a good explanation. Yeah, and... Uh, uh, but once again, like you look at this position, and yes, maybe you can tell yourself King E8 is slightly more precise than Rook F4, but Rook F4 also looks like a perfectly logical move. And in fact, one makes a draw and one just loses instantly against best play. Uh, until then, I think it was basically more or less always a draw, just a difficult one. No, no, maybe, oh, no, no. And, he missed uh, a four, a four was winning here. Yeah. F4 also, this, this point, yeah, that. Somehow, instead of h4 in this position, a very simple plan of just pushing the f-pawn all the way up to f6 was supposedly also winning. I think specifically, at least my guess is specifically because in this position, you can actually give up on h3 yeah, and play f6. Is... And the pieces are so poorly placed that... It's easy to miss, actually. Hang on. I'm, I'm still not sure about it. Like, Why? is this winning? I guess this is just winning. Yeah, we just take, take, we play king g7, king g8. Is this winning? Guess it is, yeah, because yeah, King why, D7 yeah, and King F7. Yeah, yeah. And... No, you can go King G8 even. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Can I? Yeah, probably yeah, I can. Yeah. I would think so. King E6, yeah. F7, G6. Yeah, G6, G7, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there were two points where Ding was w probably winning with best play. We, I mean, by this point, I'm convinced like of only one thing that I've lost my mind and don't trust me, but, <laughs> but I think so. Uh, <laughs> But mostly it was no, a draw. No, no, it F4, definitely F4 is a draw was now. Winning, yeah, F4 was yeah. winning. No, 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 it's a draw. And he played okay, bishop f6. You were high, rook f7 came. But rook c6. Yeah, but now, we, yeah, we just go rook c6. Yeah. And now there is no more. more. Yeah, even rook f5 is a draw. But I think this kind of demonstrates he played, he the setup he, even, even cleaner. Yeah. I saw rook c6 on the board. Mm. Uh, yeah. Very quickly. And yeah, Ding is about to play. He will play some move with the rook. Yeah, he actually put it on a dark square. So now after rook c8, let's hope he doesn't play g7 here. Because with the rook on a dark square, this is actually a full point. But why to put it on a dark square? I mean, yeah, I, would, I, don't know. Uh, I would play rook b7. 100%. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, probably it doesn't matter unless you play g7. Yeah. But he won't. Yeah, he won't play g7, of course. But he actually gave himself a chance to, <laughs> to lose this game, which would be an, an unbelievable travesty. So what can do, I mean, Param, does he have any choice here? Rook C8 is... Rook D6 is also okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is now also completely fine. Um, yeah, and uh, Rook D6 check, Rook D8. Rook, just Rook D8, yeah. Rook A6, you just go Rook... Rook F8, F8, I guess, yeah. And what's your next move, actually? Rook E6? Huh. Yeah. I don't... Yeah, yes, I, I, I will get my king to G5, but doesn't matter. Yeah, I, 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 I don't like that we've allowed this. I don't like that... Maybe you don't actually get the, 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 the king to, 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 to G5, but... Yeah, I, I don't know why we've allowed this. Ah, G7, Rook F6, yeah? And it's a door. Yeah, okay. Oh, no, I guess after rook c8, rook a6, what happens? This, yeah, it's it's the same anyway. Yeah, it's the same position. And yeah, what happened? Rook a8, rook d8. Yeah, check rook d8, and yeah, he'll he'll play rook a6, and uh, Parham will probably play rook f8, and so 
So yeah, maybe Rook E6 is a bit of a better try, but I, I think I can actually just stay on this diagonal. I don't have to care because G7, I always have Rook E6 check. Exactly. I don't I don't have to care. Yeah, and uh, yeah, no, so there's some questions in the chat. No, he, mm -hmm. he cannot he, he cannot be flagged, uh, Ding. <laughs> some people said Paham should, should flag Ding. No, uh, he not, gets his, not, his, not with half a minute. In, yeah, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. 30 seconds in command, you don't flag anyone. Uh, well, uh, oh, yeah, actually, actually, it's much simpler if, if you do something like this, as yeah, uh, Nick correctly points out after Rook of Eight King, yeah, we, we can just go King H8. Ah, that's cute. And this is a like a setup you cannot touch, it's just uh, by, by far the, the cleanest. I have a funny idea, you know, like to play f5 and rook takes f6. Yeah, it's still a draw, though, right? Yeah, do I make a draw this as well? Yeah, but this, this is really. Oh, yeah, of course you do. Yeah, of course. Yeah, f6. Yeah, but we just chill. We do. I, like, I don't care. I don't think I care. Hang on. Maybe I, maybe I should actually care a little bit. Yeah. Maybe Why? I lost. Can you check? Uh, I don't know. Rook b5, rook h5. Oh, ah, we can take. Yeah, we can take. Yeah. yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm losing my mind again. Um, yeah, okay, so this is a funny three points against Rook, which is normally ends up in the door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you could flag me, says Dudafan. No, with 30 seconds, ah, you no, really I have to. So. I don't think so. You was the only one not to, 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 ah, when we play, in you, this play if you play Rook F8. Oh, this is this is very beautiful. Look at this. Rook h7, rook somewhere, g7. I mean, the fact that king f7 exists kind of spoils my point. Mm -hmm. But I can do this, right? Beautiful. <laughs> I mean, it's not very difficult, but still, I'm. you have to find some enjoyment in, <laughs> in this. In you know, <laughs> at this point, you have to find some enjoyment in what's going no. on. <laughs> yeah. No, it is dodgy tournament, the most pre prestigious tournament ever. I was flagged so many times, but not by you. <laughs> you, beat, you beat me like I know uh, this. No, I actually didn't in, flag in, you, in a normal yeah. way. No, no, no. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you are uh, one uh, of the very few. <laughs> uh, maybe the only one not to not to flag me, uh, which yeah. uh, did upset me uh, <laughs> quite quite a, quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, so so Parham is actually <laughs> defending on these two squares. He he chose that this is how he will make his stand. Just go from d8 to d6 and back. And, and he's right. Mm, yeah, it's fine. It's completely fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Satirius doesn't understand why. No, 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 yet, no, no. I was, I, I was, I mean, I was not happy to lose the game. <laughs> no, I, I, <laughs> not, I, I, not that I cared so much, but uh, yeah. let's say that I was uh, happy to lose a normal game. You know, like yeah. I mean, not not getting flags is really, it's really very annoying. Mm. Yeah, I don't like it much either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, for me, that tournament actually kind of had real world repercussions because I it actually like severely influenced my decision to play the World Lapid and Blitz. Okay. I was I was planning to play. Okay. And then I played in the most prestigious event, and I thought, you know, <laughs> if if, if yeah. this is how I do in 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 the round robin of the most prestigious event, <laughs> then maybe it's not a very good idea for me to be. To be playing high level. But why? Yes. Why? Because you go to the. I mean, World Up in is a piece of cake. To, <laughs> compare, after, compare, after, compare to the most. After the most prestigious. Event. Event. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe it was a mistake. But yeah. too late now. <laughs> Next year. Too late now. Yeah, you didn't. Yeah, you didn't go there. Yeah? So that's really because of that. Not only. Uh, not, Not only, only, but it, it, it was definitely... It came, it came into your yeah. mind, yeah? It, it definitely yeah. played a part, yeah. It, didn't, it wasn't the only reason. I'm not going to pretend it's the only reason, but... Yeah, okay, interesting. Mm. Um, so he played a five. Yeah, he oh, played a five, oh. and the, the rook went back to... You no, know, it was slightly different, yeah. Rook b7, rook 
rook d8 to five. He's he's trying to continue playing, but there is no plan. Another soul broken by the dodgy invitational, says <laughs> Victor Osaurus. Yeah. Yeah, dodgy is a a well known widow maker. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, I, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Peter Zwidler, chicken of the week, top 10 rapid player and not play <laughs> World Rapid and Blitz. Good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good point. I, I'm, actually <laughs> still, I'm actually still in the top 10 even after the tournament. <laughs> Somehow people didn't knock me out. I'm still hanging in at, at number 10. Some, <laughs> somehow by, by an inexplicable twist of fate. So, um, yeah, just hook d6 is not fair. I mean, yeah, I mean, we just chill. Like, any actually, any move along the back rank apart from rook b8, rook b8 would be a mistake, but anything else you can do. I think this is kind of a weird position where, apart from rook d7, rook b8, and maybe some bishop moves, but even the bishop moves, I think, maybe are playable that don't blunder the bishop. Pretty much everything is a draw. It's... I think king h8 is a draw. Although king h8, rook f7, maybe we don't want to test this, yeah. Yeah, the first losing move is rook d3. Rook king d3 h8. is losing? Yeah, rook d3 is losing. Rook king h8 is losing. Ah, rook d3, rook, rook d3, b6, I, I go rook b6, yeah, exactly. Rook b6, rook b5, and somehow, king g5. I, guess, yeah. I guess the point is we run rook out of checks no? too, too soon, yeah? If we no, could no, continue but now checking, I have, uh, yeah? I have, yeah, I have rook b8 now. Mm -hmm. So, like, I guess... Rook d1 is a draw, right? Because in the same position, I will have a lot more checks. Yeah. Rook d1 is a draw, yeah. Yeah, so like, as long as this rook is not hanging on g3, I will king have time. King h8 is losing. Like, king h8 is... is losing to rook f7, because, I guess. Yeah. But once again, like, who plays king h8 here? Nobody plays king h8 here. It yeah, doesn't yeah, matter. So first, uh, it doesn't matter. Even, even, even bishop h8 is showing 0, 88. <laughs> yeah, another king move G4. that... Happens yeah. a lot <laughs> in practical chess. <laughs> Who does this? Yeah, I wonder what he feels is a problem. Maybe he's actually checking out this this rook exchange sacrifice. Yeah. Maybe this is what he is double and triple checking. Eventually, he goes rook d six, which he's doing for the last. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> the last five moves. Yeah, uh, so rook d6, rook d8. Check, check and rook b6. Yeah, and uh, the only thing that uh, Ding hasn't tried yet is this exchange sack. No, but why? and I think he's running zero risks there as well. So I think eventually he will actually take on no. a six and and check. I don't think so. I mean, it, like even if you don't like, just put the pawn on h7. It's just a draw. In very many cases, even this would be a draw. I remember, I my. Main coach Andre Lukin once made ah, these end games. That's, yeah. that's the name I was rook. looking for. Three against rook is very tricky, but I think in many many cases even a four g five h six will be a draw. A five g six h seven is always a draw. Mm -hmm. So like you, you you run you run zero risk doing that. And he played rook a seven. I think he's is... trying to gain some time at least, but. I don't think it matters very much. Has Parham even tried to offer a draw? It's not his place. No, it's yeah. It, it's not his and place. And it, no. it, it will sound it will sound would... harsh, but there is definitely a very clear understanding among top professionals about who offers a draw in a game yeah. like this, and it's yeah. never Parham. No. Uh, no, unless like if they continue shuffling here for like fifty moves, maybe then, but. In general, if you've been the side defending all game and also in this position still, like only black can lose. White, apart from this stupid trick of g6, rook, g7, rook, c6, like white cannot lose. It's it's always the quote unquote stronger side that offers a draw. Yeah. It's not even that Ding will say no, it's although he probably will. It's just that there is like a very clear <laughs> understanding that. You are breaking a kind of an unspoken rule. Yeah, that's true. You offer a draw here, and some people are doing that. Actually. Yeah, I mean, of course, it it happens occasionally, but 
uh, I've also seen, you know, reasonably high profile people just offer draws in completely lost positions. And, uh, <laughs> names, names. We want names. Yeah. Let's say it now. Nah, nah. <laughs> no, but sometimes I don't want to mean... instigate. You mean uh, in uh, in top level games, yeah? Because you do yeah, that yeah. in you know in a Bundesliga game. Let's say you have three three hundred points. I rated. I mean, it's fair to I think sort it's of fair. Even though I, th for me, you there's always that? sort of there's always been a kind of a, a kind of a line. Like if I think I'm actually straight up lost, I probably don't offer a draw there. If I feel like I'm worse, yeah. Yeah, like you, you, and you're like 350 points ahead or something. You yeah. you do you do offer just to see where you stand, but if you feel that you've misplayed it so badly that it's like straight up resignable, I think at that point you shouldn't. People still do, and people people actually get draws that way. Well, we cannot agree, maybe because we we pro we probably don't have the same definition of straight up uh, resignable. Yeah, yeah, so, well, that, that, <laughs> that as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So, so I don't know what you mean. Sir. I mean, yeah. I know what you mean, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but I, I I saw. I remember I had a conversation with you know with somebody like we were playing on next bo on like a, a, a adjacent <laughs> boards in the European individual in uh ex the ban mm -hmm. and basically that player he he made a move which basically lost immediately like a very straightforward blunder which his opponent was extremely unlikely to miss as well and as is always always happens to strong players like you you release the piece yeah. you press the clock you immediately realize what you've done and you so he on. so he instantly realized what he's done and he offered a draw and got up and because I, you know, I've, throughout my career, I always completely ignored the fact that you're not supposed to talk to people during games. <laughs> so we, we walked out of the playing hall and I said to him, like, what are you doing? And he said, well, I mean, yeah, but also, like, what the hell is this blunder? I, I like, I hate blundering like this. So, you know, I'm trying <laughs> to save the game. What do you think? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like people are enjoying blundering generally. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> that was his point. <laughs> yeah, and no, 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 he wasn't. No, he he lost. Yeah, I lost. D okay. Did not, did not good. happen. Good, good. <laughs> um, I mean, good. I don't know, but yeah, it's a bit. It depends. Yeah, so it just he he did. Uh... Uh, he did uh, offer a draw, um, uh, but after just when he released the piece, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Also, maybe he actually thought for like half, for half a minute because you, uh -huh. you, you, you have to adjust, like you, you, you have to process what happened yeah. and come to the conclusion that offering a draw here maybe is your best chance now. So maybe it wasn't even instantaneous; it was like maybe a small pause, mm -hmm. uh, and then and then he offered a draw. Yeah. Um. Yeah, which is actually uh, forbidden uh, by the rules. You should make your move and on your time. Yeah, you should have heard actually. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty yeah, much. yeah. I've had some really weird draw offers in that respect. Like people, yeah, me too. A draw me too. like ten minutes after the move is made. Like you've been yeah. thinking, you've been thinking for ten minutes, and then the guy returns to the board and just randomly says, "I offer a draw." Yeah, Shh, don't do that. to guys, me. Yeah. Ah, I was, I was very unhappy about that. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, so Rook A6 no, on board, yeah. Was, but this guy, uh, this uh, Iranian guys, uh, Max Udlu and Tabata, they are very friendly and they don't do we played against them in the Olympiad and um, they don't do such. I mean, he understands Max Udlu, of uh, course, yeah. he's very no. correct, mm -hmm. very correct uh, player, and he understands he's under uh, <laughs> severe pressure against world number two. Is not going to 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 a third row for sure. Yeah, and there was also a mention of whether it has anything to do with the fact that he is lower rated. Not at this point. And also, like, yes, he is a hundred point points behind, but he is also a twenty seven nineteen player. So, yeah. uh, when we're talking about people of that strength, the the rating difference kind of stops playing any role. I think more more or less zero zero relevance because. Like these are both elite players. Yes, one of them is maybe stronger than the other, but we're not talking about you know an amateur playing against a grandmaster. 
Yeah, I think, yeah, basically they both realize that after rook f8, the only thing to do is rook takes f6. So they're both checking if it's winning or not, but it's not, yeah. It's not at all, and it's not complicated. It's not even difficult, yeah. No. It's not even difficult. Okay. <clears throat> Wait a second. Let me construct a scenario. Like, we, we do this. Yeah, we wait for the king on h8. We take, take. We go, let's say, f6 here. King g8. We go... Is it possible to lose this position? Check, 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 check. And then? Rook h1. No, it's a draw. It's a draw, I think, no? No, like, when, when once the king gets here, we just go rook h1 and we just... Rook h3, yeah. Or rook h3, yeah. And it's just... Yeah, of course, yeah. Just to show, just to show to the viewers, yeah, we get here, and I guess even rook a seven is a draw. But the simplest is just to do this, and then f seven. Yeah, but I think this is f seven, and you just go. But you cannot take. Yeah, it's funny position. Yeah, I, I, I don't <laughs> think white loses, but white also doesn't win because we stay on the h file and we give checks, and then we return to the h file. Yeah, like you can bring the king over here. I'll I'll play rook h1, and I will just continue giving checks or staying on the h file. Sim. Uh, yeah, Ding hasn't taken on f6 yet. He, I guess, yeah, he wants to. You know, like maybe see the move king h8 before he realizes this is not a setup that can be broken. Yeah, not not much to say here. <laughs> Please yeah. ask ask some something. Yeah, well, give uh, us give us a topic. Yeah. Give us a topic, and we'll happily discuss it. Bishop d8 chosen by Parham. I mean, also completely fine. Not not a mistake. I guess it's time. Hello, boyo. Sorry, I didn't hear you. My my battery is low now. Come over. Ah, it's time for. Come over here. Touch. Okay. Bye, bye. Touch. Touch. You 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 have some food. Yeah. Ah. Just... Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sure. And he played bishop d8, which is a change actually. The mm. first time we are not watching the game, it does something different. This is amazing. <laughs> what are we talking about? He played bishop Bro. d8, which we didn't expect. Sorry, he 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 knocked my. Uh, Earpiece out. So if you were saying something important, can you please repeat it? No, no, no. He played bishop d8, which was yeah. He played small... bishop d8 for. I mean, this is fine. Rookie six. We we put it back on f6, which is a small novelty. But okay, now, okay, bingo, <laughs> ah, bingo, small Mr. Mark. Mr. Bingo. I'm a big fan, and is a make a do. Finally, uh, after how many hours of play? Six and a half hour of play. Such a great fight. And Matthew mm. makes it all. So let's make a short recap of the result of today. Sure. My Anish Gay won a brilliant game against Gukesh. Opening pipe was great. And then he just played a, a great attacking game. Mm -hmm. While Magnus Carlsen uh, outplayed uh, the young uh, Vincent Kamer in a, in a green field. So they both win. And they are both joining the leaders, Ding Liren and Nordi Beck, Abdus Satov with... One and a half out of two, of course, all to play for Absolutely. eleven hearts to go. Still, still a very, very long tournament. I mean, the remaining rounds are longer than most tournaments you will watch. You know, most tournaments these days are like nine rounds long. I think most round robins are ten people. So, yeah, it's it's a very, very uh, long, very uh, grueling event, but a lot of fun to watch because of how how sure. how exciting the field is. Plenty of very, very strong youngsters. Uh, playing against the absolute best in the world, and it's been an absolute pleasure to to to, to do this with you, uh, Laurent. And uh, and there will be a change of personnel 
uh, starting from uh, from Norwegian boy is coming tomorrow. Hmm? David, Norwegian boy. Yeah, Norve- Norwegian no, boy. Yeah, yeah. No, he's spending his life in in Norway. He lives there, I think. Mm. David Howell, uh, the nicest, one of the nicest gunmaster. Yeah, around. and uh, I'm actually very excited because uh, I don't believe I've ever done any uh-huh. uh, any commentary with him at all. So it will be it will be a new experience for me. I'm sure it will be fine, more than fine. He's he's is very knowledgeable, very very nice, friendly, and uh, uh, you know enjoyable guy to be around. But for uh, sure. Yeah, just uh, you know, a new experience is always, always good. But yeah, very, very uh, grateful to have done this uh, with you. Always, Me too. always Me great too. It fun. Was a pleasure. And yeah, tune in tomorrow for round three. Uh, same time, same, uh, same place. Uh, really, very, very good tournament to watch. I, I, I do feel that very sincerely. So, uh, hope you will continue watching us. And uh, yeah, see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Bye. Uh, play to Berlin which I sort of expected but I didn't really know what to do against because in reality very few people do when we are playing uh, an even game against someone of similar strength to us usually we need to give something in order to obtain the initiative just how shrewd and cunning Ali Reza can be even with a uh, very little time. I want to show you a game just to prove that I play these lines. I played against former world number two and a bit of a superstar, Gata Kamsky. that confidence uh, plays a few uh, good events stops looking inwards into his own insecurities i like the no expectation part so like that's something that has gotten better because sure it's like not my full-time job it's definitely good for chess in india and now there is olympiad also so there'll be more people following and Mm -hmm. taking up chess as professional sport yeah and it's surprisingly Concrete still, no? Like, yeah. he takes d4, good move. This d takes d4, this d takes d5. This line was essential and forced, but uh, also not uh, rocket science to map out. First of all, I think white goes queen f4. Here, the move is still queen f5, right? You are following my games, you will see. I play a lot of games. Finally, guys, so much work for just one point. It's so much happiness.